Bismillah, Alhamdulillah, Salatu wa Salam ala Rasulullah. Assalamu alaikum, brothers and sisters. Welcome to another edition of Dawah Wise. Uh, thank you so much for waiting and being patient. I know we're a few minutes later than advertised. Uh, we just needed to um, address a few things behind the scenes. Anyway, um, today's session is special as we will have not only our special guest, Sister Swati, joining us, but also uh, Brother Sam Stallone will be joining us. Uh, later as well in the program, as well as Brother Mansour. Uh, did so, you want to say anything? Brother Muhammad, uh, yes. as alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to all of you and to uh, uh, Brother Muhammad and Swati as well. Uh, just to inform you, we got uh, information just a few minutes before uh, joining the stream that uh, Brother Sam unfortunately had to attend some family emergency. So unfortunately, oh, okay. he won't be able to join us. But inshallah, Mansour will join us uh, once he's back from work. Inshallah. So they, there you go. This is how live this is. Even I don't know the news. Uh, so alhamdulillah, uh, this happened literally as we were coming on, on air. Anyway, um, so to, in today's session, um, we will share with you, first of all, the amazing journey from Hinduism to Islam by uh, Sister Swati. And this came about actually after the last session that we had where Sister Swati phoned in. And immediately, I think the audience here uh, said we want to learn more we want to hear more from sister and really um, her journey so let me start by positioning that and let me just sort of give you a little bit of preamble so sister Swathi has been on a journey of searching for the truth and in that journey the majestic Quran became a source of guidance for her her journey is actually inspirational we've heard a little bit or a bit of it already in the background but, and it's also very heartwarming and a reminder indeed that Allah guides who he wills and that our role is, is the best we can is deliver the message. Um, also, we, as per sort of standard Dawah-wise rules, uh, we won't be entertaining any political or partisan topics on, on the program. Uh, any insulting, unruly behavior, whether here or in the chat, you will be kicked out, you'll be removed or timed out. And please do maintain a respectful, cordial approach to the discussion. Again, we want to be respectful of all of our guests, uh, Muslim or otherwise, and we want to make sure that our behavior um, is not something that is held against us on the Day of Judgment, but actually for us on the Day of Judgment, inshallah. So let me just say, assalamu alaikum, Brother Hashim, how are you doing? Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'm very good, thank you. Alhamdulillah. It's um, another lovely day here in England, in, in London. Oh, uh, raining again today. then. <laughs> <laughs> Alhamdulillah, yes. Alhamdulillah, yeah. yes. So okay. we, we are used to, you know, the late streams like after after Maghrib or after Isha. Uh, the reason we do uh, start a bit early uh, is because of our, of our friends, our brothers and sisters, uh, in India, Pakistan, mm. Bangladesh, you know, in Southeast Asia, because also in Indonesia, Malaysia, I think uh, it's just easier for them if we start early. Otherwise, it's like midnight and not really easy to keep awake, you know. And also by well, the time and, and we finish, it's not that late. <laughs> exactly. And we really do appreciate all of their support, by the way. We, we get re requests and emails, as you know, almost every week from uh, the brothers and sisters down there. That's and right. uh, Assalamu alaikum, Sister Swati. Thank you for joining us. How are you? Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, I'm very fine and very honored to be here with you all. It's, no, the, the honor is ours to have you join us. And thank you for joining us, actually making the time. Um, so before I, before I sort of get to the main topic, um, any interesting news, Brother Hashim? Any interesting developments maybe you had at Speaker's Corner this week that... We could share with the audience very quickly interesting discussions they may have missed. Uh, yeah, alhamdulillah, we had a few good discussions. So, so we we've been putting our videos up, you know, uploading them gradually uh, mm -hmm. as we get time. Uh, so we have already put a few. I think there's also a few remaining. So inshallah, by the weekend we will have them uploaded too. But yeah, the usual um, uh, brother Muhammad Hijab was there. Um, Mansoor, as usual, myself mm -hmm. and some other brothers, but Ali Dawa was there as well. So the usual brothers who come there. Oh, alhamdulillah. Uh, we had a lovely meal after the after speakers' corner, as we usually do. Um, that's another thing we look forward to. You know, create a brotherhood and the bond, exactly. make it stronger. Alhamdulillah. So we 
we you know we are hungry after a long days uh, that way at the park <laughs> well it takes a lot of energy i think I, I mean people forget actually that that, that that most of the time you're standing around of course i mean there's very very few places to sit down i guess other than unless you go over to the the grassy area um yeah. so for most of the discussions you're standing up oh, you're yeah, walking absolutely. around yeah. And that's how many, I mean, what, three, four, five hours at a time? Typically? Yeah, at least, at least. At and least, yeah. yeah, yeah. The thing is, we do that in Ramadan as well, but we feel more energetic in Ramadan by the mercy of Allah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. So, Sister Swati, how has your week been so far since you last spoke to us? <laughs> it's been uh, quite topsy-turvy to say, but like, yeah, things just happen in my life very unplanned in that sense. In fact, I had been thinking that probably uh, it's been just two to three months that I've joined YouTube. So, uh, and I wasn't very familiar with the streams, etc. So I was just thinking I'll take a break and maybe, you know, just get back and study Quran, learn on my own, uh, you know, get into the zikr, etc., which I had been doing. But uh, as, as it goes, you know, we humans are nobody to plan anything. And as Allah says in Surah Imran that, you know, and they plan. Uh, but Allah also plans and Allah is the best planner so here I am <laughs> it was so unplanned that I, I didn't I didn't thought I didn't think that I would be like you know here giving my like sharing my journey here like that yeah and I look forward to and again this is actually the reason we're here so I mean it, it is topsy-turvy and the world actually outside of our little bubble is also a little bit topsy-turvy but just for the audience those that are starting um how long is it now that you've been Muslim? And, and when and when did the journey actually start? Yeah, I'm still like, you know, when we talk about um, it's just this journey, it's been like, I think it's been one, one and a half to two years that I had been uh, like off and on, uh, like start maybe just getting myself familiar with Islam, but I wasn't very steady. It was just from mm. this year's February, that I just sort of, you know, got into it to be able to, to to have a serious understanding of what exactly it is all about and what this deen is all about. So I would say I'm, I'm like an infant right now. It's been just eight months or so in this. But but it's once you start reading, understanding and with Allah's hikmat, you know, even uh, at that infancy stage, uh, the conviction becomes uh, as if you are you've you've reached uh, to that uh, you know the last bag of your life in that sense. Alhamdulillah. 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 So l let me start by asking, I think, the obvious question of um, what was it? What was life like before Islam for you? What was it like growing up? Life was pretty good for me. I must say that, you know, uh, I, uh, you know, I, as the very key word which I've learned from Islam, you know, just in one phrase, which is that to Allah we belong and to him shall we return. And all these tests which are there, be it pain, be it pleasure, these are like the tests which we, which we are given. And the purpose of that is just to turn back to Allah. So for me personally, you know, in my life before Islam had come, uh, I had a very comfortable life, uh, Alhamdulillah, uh, you know, my family had been very, very, very supporting, very nurturing, you know, uh, very loving. So it it was not, and, and that's the part where, you know, when things are too comfortable for you, things are going for, you know, in a, in a very, uh, it's like you have that blessing, then we become very placid to a certain extent. And we would probably not want to, you know, uh, venture out to see something which could be beyond that. So that becomes a little dangerous too. Because when you're in pain, probably you start seeking refuge. You start looking for ways out. But for me, Alhamdulillah, it was all so comfortable that I could have, maybe I would have not come out from that. So uh, <laughs> the only thing which... And that's why probably that comfort could make somebody really placid. But for me, that one point which would always coax me would be the very first testimony that we give, the first of the five pillars, which is that of Tawheed, the, that there is only one God, Allah, and uh, Prophet Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam being the last messenger and uh, his slave. So with... You know, with, with my family, with, with where I was before Islam, this one thing would always hit me. That why so many deities are there? Why do we worship so many deities? And, you know, particular days would be assigned 
to particular deity and i always had and i was very very religious in that sense right from my childhood and i would see everybody in my family you know very courteous very gentle very compassionate and and they would all be involved in the rituals so i would also just follow that the way we do the way it's written in quran that we just follow the ancestors so that's how i would just do i would just follow them i would also you know uh, take part in the rituals i would pray in the morning in the evenings uh, seeing my family members but uh, and and you know the fast sex sekra would be there we'll go to the pilgrimages uh, you know even bare barefoot uh to to a lot of pilgrimages which are there at a at a very high uh you know mountain place so uh so all of that was there and i just wanted that somehow let me please that supreme creator in a way where i could become dear to to that one and you know i mm-hmm. could just figure out why why have i come what is the purpose of my life so oh, much so thank you i think the most important thing which you mentioned was the support of the family because that is the biggest hurdle for i think most people who want to come to islam you know they might find even though they might it might resonate with them internally and they see that everything is a truth and everything so this this hurdle you know to see the reaction of the family and even friends you know and acquaintances how they will react when they hear of my conversion and whether i will be able to practice openly or not So you know the Muslims in the early um, era, you know, when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam started preaching, those Muslims who became Muslims at a very early, the first few Muslims, I think, they kept it to themselves, most of them, you know, because of the same danger of the society as to what they will think and how they will react to us, because it was pretty hostile. And I can imagine the same thing for Hindus coming to Islam, you know, because uh, India is not exactly Uh, Muslim friendly, as you know from the recent events and uh, even from the past, yeah. So I think that is the biggest uh, blessing, I would say, Sister Swati. That uh, in addition to Allah giving you the blessing of the Deen, He has also blessed you with a family which is supporting, and Alhamdulillah allows you to not only um, you know go online and stream, you mm-hmm. know, openly. And this is beautiful, isn't it? from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah keep it as such and may Allah give them hidayah to come to the deen as well. And to, with his mercy, you know, it's it's absolutely possible. So keep making dua for them. And the listeners also, please make dua that Allah gives hidayah to uh, Swati's family and all our brothers and sisters who would wish to come to Islam and make the journey easy for them. So my um, question to you, Sister Swati, is um, what was... What was it like taking the shahada and when did you take the shahada with whom and how did that day go and tell us something prior to that what made you take that bold step of declaring the shahada Yeah brother Hashim yes uh alhamdulillah yes definitely definitely I think uh, I just feel it's like a mojza you know a miracle of of having such a supportive family and and as I told you that you know this thing would constantly hit me of of this very fact of why so many deities are there why so many days assigned why so many you know and also the festivities and the rituals lot of it would uh, would I wanted to know the meaning behind it which I was not able to figure out you know we were doing things but why why would it be so a lot of things would not make sense but uh, you know as sometimes it's said that you know when 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 it's a question of faith then just keep your logic aside that that was sometimes you know being told to me that it's okay you know everything cannot be questioned or argued about so uh, and in a very uh, like uh, in a very in 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 sense of a well being and not in terms of rebuking so but uh you know that was and and later i also had read how prophet uh, ibrahim alayhi salam you know he used to ask and he used to wonder you know why stars sun etc why do we worship you know how can we worship them are they the creator same thing without even knowing anything about prophet <laughs> ibrahim alayhi salam used to happen with me where you know i would see like we would worship you know in the morning we would we would offer water to sun um uh, 
also tulsi which is like a pl plant which is revered in hindu religion would be watered so all of those rituals would be performed uh, but since i was not getting any answers to that i started reading a lot uh, within hinduism a uh, lot of books and texts which have been there and it's a vast vast pretty vast you know literature which is there so many uh, you know four vedas you have 18 puranas you have 13 upanishads it's like a, it's it's so much of it is there and lot of it is philosophical which is good you know just to sort of uh, have little brainstorming but when it comes to implementation you just it boils down to zero because you don't know now how do i bring it out in my real life how do i how mm -hmm. do i implement what i am reading so uh, uh, yeah so i would yeah, i just yeah well i was going to ask you actually there are many types of hinduism yeah right and and you're mentioning obviously the the key books there but for your particular group how how would you classify yourself what type of hindu were you if somebody was to ask you how would you have responded yeah i was from i am like i'm still staying with with my family so i mm -hmm. i i am been born in a hindu brahmin family Mm -hmm. and uh, uh, as per the varnashram system system which is there so uh, you know in that sense of course there is lot written about it uh, in terms of the exploitative behavior which this particular caste would indulge in but alhamdulillah personally speaking my personal experience had been such where i i would not see any exploitation taking place in my family as such or by my family as such mm -hmm. so it was it was pretty decent in that sense and uh, uh, you know because my family was very uh, into it so all these texts which are there which i was talking about vedas upanishads and you know puranas etc they are they were there at my place they are still there at my home so uh, so i would try to read try to understand certain things would make sense a lot of it would not i would ask about it whatever would you know my family could help me clarify they would but they too would not know everything about it so and yeah. well, sorry and what language were you reading these books in i mean did you learn sanskrit or were they in hindi or were they in english i mean yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I I knew Sanskrit in my school. I had Sanskrit, and Alhamdulillah, mm -hmm. I scored ninety nine point uh you know six or nine something in Sanskrit. Yes. I didn't know that it would be <laughs> useful later, but okay. yeah, it was <laughs> it was just an option which we had between Sanskrit, French, and one other language. So I had chosen that because it was very high scoring. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, so because of that, I was able to uh you know make sense of what was written in most of the texts, and of course, you always have translations also with that. along in hindi mm -hmm. in english the translations are also mentioned in the text so we would and most of them are like you know the puranas are like the stories which are there uh, mm -hmm. so you would read those stories you will try to make sense out of them vedas are mostly the hymns the mantras which are there the upanishads are basically trying to you know preach you of 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 the meaning of it but that becomes too very very philosophical in that sense so it's mm -hmm. good it's a good read that's what i'm saying it's a very good read if you just read it like that theoretically but when it comes to empirical practice of it you just get very lost so so that's why i was not able to figure out where do i really stand with this religion i am doing everything i am following the rituals but i if somebody asked me okay please in, in very simple terms tell me who's god i would not have an answer to it i would just say okay you know there are very there are many deities who are there and there is one supreme brahma who has the manifestation in terms of you know brahma vishnu and and mahesh the creator the nurturer and the destroyer uh, and then you have the families which are then you know assigned to all of them so uh, so i mean it wasn't making sense like that because it was like families and families and like a tree of families and then you know daughters of them and like so there's so many deities which were there and you could you could worship and 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 everything in you know i i'd seen uh, right from as we as we all know cow plants trees uh, you know uh, stars sun everything was worshiped so yeah. I, i'm no i mean it's a good thing where you revere them where we mm -hmm. respect it but my problem was that uh worshiping is different from reverence so why <laughs> would we start worshiping everything to the extent that uh, right now for example navratri festival had just passed here 
in India, and we had the Shera yesterday. So, uh, you know, we would have those, uh, you know, small, young, very small girls who would be called, uh, who would be taken to be uh, like the uh, uh, roop or the manifestation of Shakti Durga. And, you know, they, they, you know, we would ask them to come sit and they would be given prashad and then like, you know, and their feet would be touched and they would eat and whatever and they leave. So, yeah, it was it was pretty decent in that sense. And but I would not get why are we worshipping humans? Why are we worshipping nature like that? So these were the things which I was not finding you know, answers to, but I was just following. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. Sister, so so these, yeah. yeah, these festivals you just mentioned, you know, Dasera and Navratri, um, what are they like? How are they significant? Yeah, the the Navratri is basically, in my understanding was, since we have these sects within Hinduism, uh, the Vaishnav tradition, Shaiv tradition, Shakti tradition, and also Smriti. So uh, these nine days were assigned to uh, you know, that female power, whatever female empowerment, so sh Durga, Shakti. So the nine manifestations of that would be worshipped in each day. Uh, the, those deities would be worshipped each day. And also somewhere it was tied with, uh, with the manifestation or the avatar of Lord Ram. So, okay. uh, so, so, sorry, so, the you nine know, manifestations yeah. of Durga, is it? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So and Durga is of one of the goddess, right? Yes, yes. And there you would have Durga, Kali, Lakshmi, you know, a lot of, uh, so they, they will, they'll, they'll be assigned the day. Durga Saptashi, Saptashati would be read, uh, you know, the parts, etc. would be done. And uh, we had Pandal, etc. where they would be, you know, they would be worshipped. Aarti would be done. Aartis would be done. Yeah. So, so Durga Puja, basically. Yeah, yeah exactly. Okay. <laughs> yes. So in terms of the Dashera, is that a separate festival or what is that? Yeah. What is the significance <laughs> of that? The Shera would be, uh, now let, that's the thing. Now, here we are talking about the, like, uh, you know, we are talking about Shakti and the Roop of, the Swaroop of Shakti being, the deities being worshipped. And then you have the Shera, which would be basically where it's been celebrated how Lord Ram had killed uh, Ravana and celebration of good over evil. So in that sense, it, it is celebrated as a major, major, you know, festival of celebration of good over uh, truth over, you know, uh, falsehood like that. Okay. But, uh, but yeah, there are there are a lot of things which are there. If you read Ramayan, so you would yeah. have, you know, in that sense, yeah. They, they burn the effigy of Ravan on that day, isn't it? Exactly. Yes. The yes. Had it, uh, demon or something. Yes. And is that, the, is that the word where the Dashera, you know, the 10... Yeah, the ten, ten heads, heads exactly. Okay. Ten heads of Ravana. <laughs> yes. So, is significant? What's the significance of the burning, brother? Why, 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 it's why like the burning? Good over evil kind of thing. Yes. Isn't it? So, so yes. are the ten heads the evil then? The, is that seen as evil? Yeah. So, Ravan had ten heads. Right. Yeah, and he's the one that Ram. He, he's the one who kidnapped Sita. Yes. Yeah. And then Ram went to rescue her with his uh, army of monkeys or the Hanuman and all that. Right. Yes. And then, um, so. Eventually, um, he, he's defeated and he's killed by Ram, Ravan. Yeah, and I think right. burning the effigy kind of portrays that is the end of the evil. So let in the good. And I think Diwali follows very soon, isn't it? In a few yes, days. Yes, yes. So this is like Ram when he comes back to his kingdom victorious and they celebrate oh, with um, lamps of, you know, like just to show that the, you brought brightness into our life kind of thing. You know, like However... Darkness. Uh, yeah. Brother Hashim, Go sorry to interrupt you. Go However, ahead. like that's what I'm saying. That see now here, as I told you, within Navratri, you would have uh, you know Lord Ram coming into it uh, in terms of Navmi and the Shera. Though it's been like where you are talking about the uh, manifestations of 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 Devi. Now mm -hmm. we have Lord Ram in Navmi and and sort of in the Shera. Similarly, when we talk about Diwali and it it it's seemingly to be something where we are celebrating his coming back from Vanvas. Uh, we also, uh, because I had seen it and it happens, there would also be uh, worshipping of uh, Lord Ganesha and Lakshmi. And that would be for uh, for prosperity, wealth, you know, Lakshmi, deity Lakshmi and Lord Ganesh would be also worshipped for uh, material wealth. And then you would have, uh, like at my family, it, would, it used to be an elaborate sort of worshipping which was done where you would also have, uh, you know, a Kubair and a lot of deities, you know, you would have small uh, idols of them and all of that would be worshipped. 
so so as brother hashim had said that you know Ra- it's like lord ram's coming back home now here mm-hmm. it's not lord ram if you are somebody that uh, you know on the occasion of diwali do you worship lord ram it's mostly what comes out is we worship uh, ganesha and lakshmi ganesh you would even mm-hmm. find in you know markets lakshmi ganesh's coins would be there the idols would be there they'll take it and it's basically to get wealth material prosperity so that oh, becomes again confusing yeah <laughs> that <laughs> so they don't actually they... worship ram on diwali they worship the the gods that give them money <laughs> some way yeah, that 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 becomes again confusing because where did lord ram now you know he 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 gets backstage and lord uh, and and you know deity G- ganesh and lakshmi takes precedence so they right. they are then worshiped and you know for the material prosperity oh, you know where the priorities lie yeah. okay yeah and, and again uh, just for the audience look we this is there's some people that are mocking this nobody's mocking this okay that please, please don't go into mockery on this um this is a sister sharing her story from her life that she used to live yeah. before Islam. Um so this is fascinating by the way because some of this I mean again you know we, we don't we don't get to hear this yeah. side of of life again it is especially as a muslim um it's like many people who you know maybe grew up hindu they don't really hear about islam even though they have muslim neighbors so as you were growing up it sounds like you were a very um, inquisitive child Um yes. did you ever get into trouble for being so inquisitive because you clearly <laughs> were asking a lot of questions Not at all in fact I I must say I was a very reserved very introvert very quiet Ooh, child Oh really okay very, uh, Yeah <laughs> yeah very very obedient very abiding it's just with my parents you know I would just ask them about these things I would it was not in in sense of being rebellious about it No of course but, of course Yeah but just wanting to know and they would appreciate that it was very it was such a blessing that they would appreciate they would say okay you read more maybe you know because they also would not have that in a Uh, understanding or knowledge about that so they'd say okay you know you just ventured read more and there would be so many books which would be there and i would try to figure out maybe there's some hidden meaning maybe this is just very literal like lot of people would say this is very literal you know puranas etc literal and don't take it uh, 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 don't take it like that because uh, it, there there's a deeper meaning which is associated with it so yeah. this is just a metaphor for example but what would uh, you know and i read those i i have i have seen you know how it would be written in vedanta because there are six schools of thoughts of hinduism nyay sankhya yog and vaisheshika and uh, you have mimamsa vedanta so when you go into that and when you read uh, yeah there are metaphors which are there associated with it uh, some of them would not make sense to me but the problem was that majority people is they are not going by the metaphor that mm. literal thing which is there is what is what is being celebrated temples are of that literal aspect that metaphor gets lost somewhere and my question was why to make it so confusing you know in that sense uh, if if there is some deeper meaning associated with it why you know in terms of literal understanding why would we why would we make it in such a way where it could confuse people more or you know there is right. a there is a chance where they may go astray so why not make it simple that that was the thing yes this yeah. is interesting so so this this inquisitiveness by the way um i mean we hear about this quite often with many people who revert they go through a similar process which is they start asking the question of i want to worship but i want to worship something that makes sense Right. So so I'm guessing in a way that's what you were looking for is is this intuitively does not make sense to me is that right is that's perfectly right i was somehow absolutely in love with god but i didn't know mm. who that god is and i was just worshiping anything which was told to me that this is a manifestation of god this will take you in terms of the deities which have been there the fast which i would keep you know the way we have in ramazan i mm-hmm. you know my like with in my family also i'll keep i used to keep fasts of mondays fridays you know just so that anyhow whatever way possible for me in my human capacity i could just appeal and appease that god to come closer to that god so oh. so that's that's, 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 that's amazing yeah. that's amazing yeah. <laughs> how, how is uh, fasting in hinduism compared to 
in Islam? <laughs> It's very flexible, <laughs> first of all, in terms of like the way we had Navratris here. Uh, it depends. Somebody wants to keep it in a very stringent, strict manner. You you can the way uh, I, we would do in my family all nine, like eight days, uh, you know, would be where we would not eat anything right from morning to evening. And then uh, after sunset, we would. However, that's not the way. So that's very flexible. Somebody would, but others may not. You can eat, you know, for example, you would even have in restaurants Navratri Thali that would be served where uh, so it would be that okay you can't eat un in terms of the uh, the floor but uh, and rice you would have separate rice for it you would have separate kutukata for it and uh, you know you could have fruits and you could eat uh, you could you could have uh, fruits you could have potato you can drink uh, you know in that sense so it was more of a party than yeah feasting. i'm wondering where's the fasting yeah yeah it was oh, more i'm of sorry so i'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> that's interesting so uh, sorry i misunderstood so you can eat x y and z items maybe you can leave out a few but you can eat all this other stuff. Oh, you know, like, okay, okay. So, right. so, so it's more like so, rather than fasting, isn't it? So right. you, you so, diet away certain items. Interesting. So you you only eat certain items and. Um, the rest you call also, kind of, also yeah. interestingly you know they would be you know in hinduism they would say there there is sattvic rajasic and tamasic you know uh, in terms of the uh, you know attributes which are there so uh, you know and and in terms of if we see sattvic would be all good wisdom etc uh, rajasic where you have passion violence desires and tamasic in terms of ignorance and darkness so they would associate that with food items also so uh, you know in that sense uh, 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 items for example uh, onion, garlic, you know, uh, uh, non-vegetarian, alcohol, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. all of that would be considered in Hinduism, as I would see around, to be, especially in the Brahmin family where I, I belonged to, that would be considered um, tamasic. And especially during these nine days, I would see across, you know, no matter which varna you belong to, people would refrain from having that. You would have restaurants not, you know, in, uh, you know, including onion, garlic, etc. in the meals. Mm. So everybody would know that, okay, these are the nine days, so you'll have sattvic food. But I would wonder why just for nine days? What happens after that? So mm. af after that, is it okay for you? And what is the reason for certain items to become, you know, sattvic or rajasic or tamasic? So to that extent, in my, you know, I, I haven't had, we in our home, in the meals that would be prepared, we would not have onion and garlic right from my childhood. In any of the items, there would not be onion, garlic, etc. In the, in, the, in, the, in the meals that would be made. Right. However, they, they did taste very, very good and delicious. But that's how, you know, that's what I'm saying. That's, that's how it used to be. Uh, so yeah, it was feasting more than so inside, which is why it's like a celebration. You know, you'll see people around like that. They would be celebrating and and that's what appealed then people. It's more of a culture than religion, I would say. You know, yeah, it's, a it's lot a festival, of yeah. isn't it? Like yeah, the they, they got so many festivals in a year. Um, <laughs> I wonder when the school children study. You know, like holidays <laughs> every other month. Exactly. And, uh, it's, it's just crazy. I think if you look at the. <laughs> Red, what do you say? The red dates when they have holidays, it's like every page, you know, like. <laughs> okay, so this is interesting actually because there's another religion that does this, which is Catholicism. Mm. Uh, Catholicism actually has saint days, and they have so many saint days. Uh, and, and, and I see this because I work quite a lot with um, colleagues in Latin mm. America, um, and they is will it a have public a holiday there. Yeah, yeah, yeah yes, yes. Is so it? every other week. You will hear them saying, oh, "I'm only working what, uh, four days this week, or or three <laughs> days this week, or or so because it's the saint this day or the saint the other day," and and again, it's a similar kind of thing in Catholicism. They've almost deified the saints now because because they will pray through some of these saints for certain things. They will actually ask these saints to save them, you know, when they're on a journey, when they're traveling, you know, if they're if they are going through hardship and things like this. So. So this is quite it's fascinating that the you know these these things seem to occur with religions that that somehow have lost the meaning of oneness of God. You know, what does yeah. it really mean to, to be Sick. one? SubhanAllah. So anyway, that was just a side comment. It sounds like, I mean, certainly from what you're saying, sister, that you really were in a very religious way. You were clearly well informed. I mean, you knew what you were doing. You were, you were, you were encouraged 
to educate yourself, to learn about your customs, your traditions, you know, really the ways in which you were you were born into. Now, it, obviously, that was the st the things that you were doing. But were you were you yourself actually involved in preparing, doing these rituals as, as a young, uh, you know, young person growing up, or did you watch your mother and father just do them and you really sort of went along? H how involved were you in the process? Yeah, I would see them uh, basically taking the initiative and mm -hmm. I would just follow the suit. So they would be the ones who would be uh, sort of involved into it uh, through and through. And I would just sort of follow that. So that's why I'm saying that I was a very, very obedient, you know, very obedient mm -hmm. uh, daughter that I would just follow what would be told to me. I would follow it. And especially because you look up to the parents and, you know, they would never want uh, ill for you and they would right. be guiding you in the best way possible. So I would also just, you know, follow whatever would be. But the questions would always be there and I would it would sometimes not make sense. But I thought that maybe this is how it is and you know that's the way maybe that's that's the way it so, is so, so the question is why am i doing it is that the question that was in your mind yeah and also mm -hmm. and also not getting sense of the meaning of it you know right. uh, the way i just told you that you know we are we were there on the on 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 manifestations of uh, of of shakti swarup then how did Ram would come into picture suddenly, you know, uh, suddenly the Shera. Then again, if you are saying that we are celebrating uh, the, we are celebrating that he has come from Banwas, 14 year exile, then how, why would suddenly Ganesh and Lakshmi would come in, the deities Ganesha and Lakshmi would come in. So it would not make sense to me. A lot of things would not make sense. Similarly, you know, so so many stories, for instance, about of, of, uh, uh, of Shiva, the Lord of Destruction, you know, killing his own son, Ganesha, not recognizing. That was another story which was there in Puranas. And you have Ganesha. Now, if somebody says, okay, that's don't take it literally. That's just, mm -hmm. a, that's just a story. But then you have an entire festival of Ganesh Chaturthi being celebrated. So that would, you know, if there is a, there's another deeper meaning associated with it, why would that deeper meaning not come to forefront? was my problem. Mm -hmm. why, yeah. is, why is that literal one, which is maybe the periphery, why would that, you know, be, uh, 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 why would that be celebrated and known by the majority, 99% of the Hindus? So, yes. so, so, I mean, I, I'm Brother Hashim, I know you come across this quite often, and, and I just want to, let me just ask the question. Um, these, I mean, these are, these are questions that are quite deep. So how old were you when you started having these questions? What right you, from... What, what, when was the first, yeah first memory that you have i think maybe you know when i was just whatever three or four year old my grandmother used to uh, you know give me she would feed me uh, uh, food and she would narrate to me the story of krishna and sudama and that used to be my favorite story every day while having the meal she would recite that story to me of all the cousins etc we were there my other cousin sisters so everybody would have their own stories so i would love this story a lot and every day i would hear that story right from say when i was just a toddler of four year old so and and that story was was very fascinating to me it appealed me a lot because of the you know lesson that every story comes up with so that story's lesson was in terms of you know sudama being from a very uh, a low you know mis a family which was very poor and how krishna would uh, you know have friendship with him and then he would go to the palace he would not have anything so he would just take grains of rice with him in in his hand and you know krishna would say okay but show me what have you got for me and he would feel very embarrassed and then you know he and when he would uh, open the uh, his palm so uh, you know he would say show me show me and when he'll open uh, it'll not be that just one or two grain it'll just change into something else in terms of mm -hmm. you know making him when he'll get back home the the uh, the hut would turn into a palace his wife sudama's wife would have you know very she would have she would be adorned with jewelry and very well cladded so so for me uh, more than the miracle which was associated with the story was the friendship between the two that how right. you know that that was what my grandmother would say that you know irrespective of whichever you know uh, whatever is your monetary economic status that is what is being uh, reflected here to be humble 
to be good with others and not not get all these aspects into my, in, into your friendships into your relation with other people so that was my favorite story and you know listening to that i would say oh wow that's how it is so mm -hmm. so in terms of my memory it goes from 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 that because i had that religious family so even stories were like that from these puranas and from the yes. texts <laughs> that, i mean i find that amazing that, that a 3 4 year old would even think to ask what is the you know why am i listening to this you know what is the meaning of this and but the fact that again look stories and again listening to stories is actually something very human right right um you know all societies all i mean all tribes all nations have stories and no matter where you go they will build a narrative around you know maybe their past maybe their history etc and we know this even from Islamic history where the Quraysh would essentially they would venerate their elders you know and okay. one of the things that held them back accepting Islam is that you know what would our family think what would the tradition think what would you know these people who've passed away who think and um, yeah it's just it is just fascinating how many times this theme comes up repeatedly across the world uh, Brother Hashim, you're going to come in here with a question, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. so uh, I think um, I asked this question earlier. Perhaps it got lost in the discussion. Um, and this Swati Ben ne mera sawal ko nazar andaz kar diya. Not at all. <laughs> I wouldn't do that. So I, was, I was asking I about the way you know, Hindi. <laughs> <I'm> sorry. Alhamdulillah, <laughs> I know a bit. Yeah, so I was asking about the day of Shahada and just to elaborate on the experience that you had on that day, maybe something before that, after that, how it went, inshallah. Yeah, it was uh, it was not a very smooth transition from Hinduism right to Islam. I, I must of course, say that. Of course, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so, uh, so Shahada probably didn't come as early <laughs> as you had thought it would come in that way. Uh, as I was telling you, uh, and of course, yes, I had not. Uh, I hadn't been to any masjid as such. Uh, to be taking that I, I don't know where is where would it be uh, yeah so but yeah of course when I would I would start I when I started doing namaz the five times namaz uh, that's when when you sit for namaz and you do uh, uh, there I would I would speak the shahada but not so that that's how I would do it five times a day but not officially like that in any masjid that I have taken it uh, it's just that when I began with it uh, because I didn't even know what's shahada like that, I right. just would read the namaz, um, you know, and there. Yes, yeah, so, so let's yeah. actually get there later because there's a, so, so yeah. I think this is because we'll, we'll sort of find this interesting. Um, so, so again, alhamdulillah. So, from what I've seen, you had a very loving family, a uh, very supportive family, um, clearly very well educated, very well read sister. Um, what was so in in terms of your schooling now i mean you've clearly read a lot but what would you say is some of the texts that influenced you uh, before we get to the question of did you have any muslims around you as you were growing up maybe you sort of Not, asked those yeah. two together so 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 maybe some so in addition to your religious texts that, that you were reading what books were you reading that maybe influenced you and then did you have any muslims around you at all no, I did not have any Muslims around me. Mm -hmm. I did not have any Muslim friends around me. Uh, I did not have any clue of Islam as such, of this being, a, you know, in terms of like, of course, we are familiar with it, but I didn't mm -hmm. know what Islam is all about. So that was never on my mind. I was mm -hmm. just trying to look for answers within Hinduism earlier. Right. Okay. Uh, and the texts which I would read would be, again, as I was telling you, I, I was just trying to, you know, somewhere... Uh, sort out this entanglement of why so many deities and what is it all about, why so many texts. So even the books that I would read were more of, um, uh, say, you know, trying to understand the meaning of it or maybe uh, uh, trying to understand it in simpler words, simpler terms, uh, uh, like... Um, for instance, I would say I I didn't I didn't there was there was Dev that Patnayak who had who had his book he was he would try to you know sort of uh, 
try to make it in easier terms try to help you understand about these uh, so in that sense you know i was reading i wanted to make sense of it where i could apply it and it all could fit into one one comprehensive whole that was something which was not happening and which is why when i was not finding my answer because that's what my family said that okay you read you know we'll not mm-hmm. stop you you read as much as possible and i would but i would not get answers from within the text because as i'm telling you upanishads as people would say read upanishads they, mm-hmm. they the 13 upanishads which are there they they are, it becomes so philosophical and sometimes it becomes so abstract in nature the way philosophy is that you know you it's good it's a, it's a good read for a while but you are not able to empirically practice it 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 becomes too too in air kind of a thing i mm-hmm. wanted something to hold ground something which could help me understand everything which is going around me in terms of my day to day practices so uh, so you know that that's why i shifted then from hinduism and i started reading books from a uh, new age philosophy new age religion mm-hmm. okay. so there yeah there uh, because i as i was telling you i wanted to figure out who that creator is and since i was not getting the answer within hinduism so i started looking outside and and you know lot of books there's so many books right from you know as i was telling lewis hay wayne dyer marian williamson uh, keith wapnick helen shuckner so mm-hmm. many of them i would have read and uh, and they i thought okay now i'll get probably hinduism is just about rituals etc and, and uh, now i'll figure out who that creator is so mm-hmm. i i would read that uh, you know listen to the seminars etc which uh, and if you the way we are talking here in streams you know there those streams many of them not like these youtubes but if you go in for seminars etc they would be very high charging ones even if they are online ones so mm-hmm. uh, so and the books also used to be quite expensive in that sense uh, the audio so so be- you ending you were spending a lot of money as well in this lot service. of it lot of it i must wow. tell you like okay. you know my pe- in, in on these books which i would buy uh, we would have uh, you know the uh, kind of a book festival etc which would <laughs> take <laughs> place so i would uh, would have stock full of books of all this you know get <laughs> getting and my my family would just you know poor poor people they would just think okay it's good if it's if it's taking you somewhere and if the you know because books are considered to be man's best friend so they would say okay whatever it is she's on the right track she's with books rather than with guys outside there partying and you know whatever <laughs> alhamdulillah so, alhamdulillah yeah yeah, yeah. So, that's so interesting that's, yesterday yeah she's with books <laughs> rather than guys yeah that's that's actually very yeah. Thing, so that know. was my family was pretty happy with me that okay you know just just be with the books and understand and and increase your knowledge and sort of so so but these books which i would read you know i as i was telling that these would you know the first of all they would uh, they would discard the rituals altogether they would say so this who, doesn't make who, who who would discard them uh, uh the 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 most of the thing uh, the authors who would be there They oh would, i see the the new yeah. age authors okay okay yeah okay, yeah, okay, yeah. Okay. and which is why they would use not the term religion but spirituality and they would uh-huh. associate it yes. with you know you being the spirit so you know let let these uh, rituals not define you so you, you know transcend them go beyond them these rituals are basically for you know people who don't have that kind of intellect so they need like alarm clock they need something as an idol or something you know there but let's move beyond that so therefore uh, you know let's get into that real spirituality and therefore they would talk about things like this entire universe which is there is uh, you know uh, is like it's 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 um, we are part of it every being whom we see has divinity in them so you know it seems very fluffy those ideas seems to be very fluffy very nice you know in terms of saying yeah we see that divinity in you you see that in me so have respect uh, reverence etc but uh, but they were somewhere they were shifting and tilting more towards uh, you know the idea of again material prosperity or your desires your wishes to get satisfied so in terms of you know manifestation of this or that or your dreams and trying to give you power by saying that you know you would have you know sort of i am i am this particular phrase would come often with lot of these um, uh, these authors so saying that you are that creator there is no difference between that you have that empowerment you are the spark of it 
so you can create you don't need to worship any you know any creator as such you have that spark within you and you just need to affirm uh, certain statements just believe in yourself things like that the way we see the ted talks etc so you know believe in yourself think positive you know uh, don't don't uh, whatever negative or things like that which are there just just put it in on back front focus on what is good around you which is all very nice but what about the questions which i had how do i get answers to that so again it was like making you again placid again you know uh, very complacent with that that okay you focus on good focus on good in others and you know uh, and whatever you desire can be manifested so wow. you are the creator yeah. you are the creator of your own reality things like that was they were very much in and you know sort of like in the trend so, which is exactly wow. what the quran says you know you make your whims and your desires your gods you absolutely know, this, is, this is what they, it's, it's all at the end of the day it's all materialistic kind of way because it's well, either yourself is, who, who gave them authority, authority? Who gave yeah, them exactly. authority to say this? Exactly. Who and and you know who would give them authority? I would say a lot of you know the way people question today uh, for Prophet uh, for our Rasul Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mm -hmm. that you know maybe it's not that Angel Jibril had come and uh, given him that wahi. They would say who knows whether it's whether it's shayati or not. Mm. But but with when you see the New Age you know authors, lot of them would channel. they would say that we are channelizing and you know there are spirits holy spirits who are giving us this message and this is not coming from us as you are asking about authorization so they would say this is not from us we uh, we are able to be in touch with those uh, angels those higher spirits and they are you know telling us and we are conveying to you that human beings can also be you know as a race you can be lifted up and you can be raised so lot of that neil donald walsh's conversation with god would have mm -hmm. so many series where he would say that you know these are the conversations which have been given to me by that who's god and i had read all of those you know all of the series of first second third volume friendship with god etc communion with god and and well, maybe the, maybe they having yeah. conversations with the jinn you know and thinking exactly. they're, they're gods or they're angels True, in fact, true. it's the opposite. You know, you know what's fascinating here. As I'm listening to this, what what's interesting is there is this innate need for them to appeal to a supernatural power. True. That's the first Correct. thing, right? Correct. So, so they know intuitively. They know that if they say it's from them, you won't believe it. So they have to appeal to a supernatural power, and then, of course, what they do is. Is they they create their following, so essentially they become, you know, the prophet or, or whatever it is for their own little cult. Yeah. Now the interesting thing is I'm listening to it as as you're reading this. You know, you you read you read their books, you listen to their lectures, and yes, some of it is very motivational. But you can have that motivation by removing all of that spirituality. You can just say be nice to people. You can Absolutely. just say, look, respect each other, right? You don't need the spirituality. So, isn't that the exactly question... what the atheists say? Isn't it? They say, why do you need? I, I'm good without God. I'm good without a holy book. That's right. exactly what the atheists say, and which is totally they are right in a way, isn't it? Because if these spiritualist guys who don't believe in a God and they think they can uh, manifest as whatever they want um, in whatever and have this all sorts of good life and everything, that's no different to an atheist, isn't it? Exactly, but but this leaves the question open. I think, yeah. Sister Swathi, which is, as you realized listening to these people, what was it that made you say, "This is not right"? What? Because something must have clicked. So, at what point was it that you were sort of when you know, you know, I've read the books, listened to the series, I've attended the motivational lectures, something isn't isn't happening. What what was that that sort of missing component? yeah that missing component was the same that i am not getting to understand and know who is that one creator the question hmm. which i was searching within hinduism where there are so many deities which are present and here you are making universe other people as the manifestation of that divinity so again to be able to pinpoint who and in fact yourself your own self they would say you are the creator of the reality you can do it oh, in that actually way. just what, let me ask yeah. one question there yeah. so who gave you the idea where did you get the idea that god had to be one where did that come from when did when did you when did you arrive at that conclusion i can't say consciously 
I was looking for a for one God, but I was not comfortable with the ideas which were presented to me. So many right. deities which were there was something I I I I thought that this is not making sense to me. It, uh, again, you know, with this kind of a thing where they would be saying universe, which is in in itself a creation, we humans who are creations, we being the creator, this would again not resonate with me. So uh, I don't know whether consciously I was seeking for that one God, but I just I just felt that this is not the not the true or the real understanding of that creator of of the one who is the supreme it was just not making sense to me uh, but uh, consciously i don't know when or or whether i was looking for just one or not but I one made yeah. sense one but as you were reading the spirituality books yes. one god made sense to you somehow it did because that's what i'm saying that's which is what it said no it's there in your fitrat so yeah somewhere i was seeking it maybe unconsciously maybe not realizing mm-hmm. it mm-hmm. but i wanted to get an answer in terms which could take me towards that one god take me towards that that supreme who could be there the creator who had created us and you know here i would say brother mohammed that uh, like i as i was telling you there are so many mm. books seminars lectures which take place like that most of which of course i had i had taken online because they would be outside you know they would be uh, in in other countries where i would not be able to visit so uh, so but one of them being a course in miracle which was which is which has been there and i see a lot of people you know involved in that they they uh, they would say and they would relate christianity with it they would relate jesus with it and there they so so that's where i also got in touch with this idea okay okay christianity could also maybe one of the mm. where you know maybe i could get answer here would it be like that so there you know the way we now understand how allah had created the entire the the nature the create the universe they would say that everything that you see in this universe uh is is a creation not of god but of your ego self and which is why you see everything destroying everything else everything eating away everything else so that idea you know when i would go out and i would see the birds etc or the tree it would seem to be such terrifying idea because that the beauty got lost from that idea where they mm-hmm. would say it is everything that you're seeing is your ego self your ego self had created this world god has not created this world and god in fact is waiting for you but they would not define if god is cre- waiting for you how do you reach that god what is god doing what is god proactively doing for you to be able to reach that god so those ideas were not there but yeah a very very twisted version of christianity uh, this is interesting because, this is interesting because what comes to mind here is this is very much a, a, a gnostic buddhist kind of approach right to to their interpretation and and this is a different discussion and we won't have it today but um schopenhauer who was a right. a, a philosopher you know a very sort of deep philosopher way back in the history of philosophy he was influenced significantly by the buddhist tradition Correct. and so what schopenhauer did was he incorporated a lot of that nihilistic thinking into his uh, thought process now why is that fascinating so from my perspective fascinating because schopenhauer is actually one of those philosophers who is like the bedrock of Western philosophy. Right. And therefore, it is not therefore surprising that all the thinking that came subsequent to that has incorporated this idea of, you know, the world is evil, the world is, you know, there is no meaning, you know, or, and so on and so forth. It seems to just sort of float in and out of Western thinking. And so I think there are streams of, these Christian thinking, who have in, who have imbibed this idea of original sin, mixed it with this philosophical thing, they arrive at the conclusion you arrive at, which is, if everything is born in sin, and there is no meaning to any of this, or there is no um, no, uh, it's all suffering. Then naturally, what you say is makes sense, right? But what I'm saying, what I'm saying is actually it comes from a distorted view of reality. So as as you're going through this journey, then 
at what point did spirit or this spirituality not make any sense to you? And what was the next step in that journey? What, what happened after trade, that? Trade, trade. Because, yeah, so that's that's how. And the way you had said, yes, definitely a lot of Western, Western philosophy, literature, especially I would. And maybe that's why Protestant Reformation, which was there within uh, mm. you know Christianity, separation of church and state. And for people to be able to read themselves, you know, let church be outside, let the uh, Pope be outside of it. A lot of that secular element which was built into it probably did come out from here, maybe to a, to a large extent. Now here, when I was trying to and trying to make sense of these, um, you know, authors, uh, again that question because that question was not getting resolved for me, and because I was just seeing everything, just talking again, taking it to the material realm. So mm. that vacuum or that void was not getting filled because as I was telling you again, within Hinduism, we had seen, you know, a lot of worshipping uh, rituals were associated with fulfillment of your particular desire. Therefore, different deities fulfilling a diff particular desire. Now you have another sophisticated version of it, calling it not religion, but spirituality, saying, OK, let's not have rituals associated. But in a way, you have now new rituals associated in terms of manifestation of a car, maybe, or mm -hmm. a house, maybe. So it's again <laughs> yes. the same thing. It's like old wine in new bottle. So that was what was taking place again here. And I just wondered that this is the same thing I have landed up again in. And this is again not taking me to what this my question initial was. <laughs> yeah. This is fascinating. So, Brother Hashim, you had this discussion recently, didn't you, where where these so-called, um, they will worship anything except for the one they need to worship. Uh, you have this discussion regularly at Speaker's Corner. I mean, yeah, I think they will... atheist, agnostic, you know, whatever label they want to give themselves. Uh, it's, yes. it's quite common in the West, you know, because liberalism and secularism is kind of so... So much, so uh, it's you know everywhere it's portrayed. It's kind of advocated everywhere in schools, colleges. You know, directly, indirectly, it's um, yeah, like God is out of the equation. Yeah. So even though they we live in a country, exactly, exactly, yeah, we live in a country which is supposedly Christian, but barely anyone talks about Christianity. You know, in your <laughs> <day -to> -day <laughs> life. very Seriously. true, very true. It's like how was your coffee or how was your day or something like that. It's kind of become a taboo to talk about God in this society. Yes. And this is supposed to be a Christian country, you know? Exactly. And Alhamdulillah, you go to any Muslim countries, you know, even in the greetings that uh, they give you, you know, um, they they say Alhamdulillah, even the Christians, the Arab Jews, the Arab Christians, and obviously the Muslims, they all use this term Alhamdulillah in, on a daily, day-to-day -day basis, you know? It's, it's, I think it's this, um, they have like, I don't know whether it's deliberate. I'm, I'm pretty sure it is, you know, like by design that they have removed God from their daily life in every form that they can perceive. And you spoke about the Reformation. I think that was the starting point when Same. they separated the two. But they had a they had a reason of that separation because of the oppression of the church on the people. And when you, uh, you know, if you if you know the story of the Anglican Church, which is the 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 the, the past queen and the present king, they are actually the head of the church here. Mm -hmm. that's, right. the, that's the title they've been given. And this is the Church of England or the okay. Anglican Church. So the way it started was for the reason because Henry VIII was unable to get a divorce from his present wife in order to get married to another woman, you know. So when the, when he when the Pope refused, you know, he said he'll start his own church. So obviously I'm I'm trying to make it short as possible. Right. Yeah, but <laughs> this is exactly what, what is the key reason how it started. So can you imagine a king decides what to do and then it becomes a new religion. Similarly, if you look at the very beginning, you know, Constantine decided to, you know, join all these feuding Christians together. And he said, let's, let, let's do something to unite them. And again, that was a political reason. So some of these Christians, their, their very basis, their very foundation was kind of shaky. So it's very easy to topple that, you know, as time goes by. So even though they might have Christian names like David and Solomon and so on, you know, but there, if you see the daily life, how many times you go to church, you ask them and right. they, will, they will look at you like, why is this guy asking me this question? It's mm -hmm. a private thing, you know, that kind mm -hmm. of reaction you get. So most of them, they probably go once during during a year maybe you know just on christmas day yeah, 
and that if two that, families which yeah. are practicing. If, if that, yeah, if the that, others, they, probably, they probably turn up for the cake rather than <laughs> rather than for the worship. But yeah, no, it's, and you're it's, right, it's sister. Yeah. Yeah, you know, the thing is, is, is in the absence of of spirituality, then they begin deifying material things, as you say, they worship like cars and money and a career and maybe even other people, you know, people they admire. I mean, it, it is for no reason, I think, that, you know, famous celebrities are called idols. Absolutely. You know, you know we hear this regularly. We don't think, but, you know, why do you idolize so-and-so? And, -so? and so when you actually understand what it means, you, it's, actually, it's actually quite a, um, a scary behavior especially with with the youth because they end up idolizing people who eventually will and we see this regularly with superstars and celebrities what happens it's like a i liken it to like a firework yeah so they spark and they burn for maybe a couple of years or a few years and then they burn out very quickly and when they burn out it's actually terrible their situation their life the what they you know all of this wealth all of this glitter they had yeah. And when you see them at the end of that, you know, like the firework when it burns out, it's just this ash of Absolutely. nothing. Yeah. That's the reason yeah. many of these celebrities, they commit suicide. So Absolutely. despite all the material wealth and all the luxuries they have, they have this big gaping hole in themselves, you know, yes, which they have never filled. Because all this luxury, you know, the, they start abusing uh, drugs and alcohol then. That's what it becomes. They thought that who, was that guy who, did the, who was that guy who did the mask? Remember his name? Um Sorry, who did the that the actor who did you know the one with the green face? I forget his name now. If somebody in the audience can tell oh, I me, see. yeah, I know, I know who it was. You remember who it was? Oh, I've forgotten his name. And the chat will tell you. Yeah, if somebody in the chat can tell us, but I forget <laughs> his name. But what he said, and uh, this is quite interesting. A few years ago, Jim Kerry, yeah, Jim right. Kerry. There we go. Thank you very much. Thanks, young guys. Zim. Wonderful. So Jim Kerry actually is on record. He says, "Look, I wish everybody had what I have and what I've done." just can realize that this is not happiness and this is from somebody who was a very very successful celebrity he made tens if not hundreds of millions of dollars in wealth and at the end of this road he says this didn't make me happy yeah, and if you ever happy. want evidence that pursuing you know material materiality and, and just exist you know this sort of idea of Everything that exists is material, and they thought that's all I need to be. It is meaningless. So, alhamdulillah. So, um, so you arrived at this conclusion, Sister Swati, that, that this spirituality, this sort of I am in you and you are in me and I, we are everything, that really wasn't speaking to you at all. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's, it's quite uh, fascinating, the fact that you didn't have any Muslim friends. I mean, how did you keep the resilience, you know, being a Muslim, you know, it's, it's amazing. Yeah. Like, yeah. Normally That's what I'm saying. It's, a, it's, it's completely a mojza. That's what I'm saying. It's a miracle. It is a, mir it is a miracle. It is. It is. <laughs> And, and I would like to also add to it, you know, Brother Muhammad, you had said that, you know, the, the, this very fascination with materialism, mm. we also somewhere, you know, that's that was also something where we uh, usually uh, say that the West uh, has indulged into that materialism, etc., whereas the East would be revered as very spiritual. You know, the, mm -hmm. the East, especially India, for example, they would say, yeah, and which is why people feel very fascinated, Hare Krishna, etc. When people say, they would feel very fascinated. They'll say, okay, yeah, here we'll get spirituality and that's what is materialism. But that's not the case, which is what I'm, I'm trying to say, that yes. when you come to this side to seek that spirituality, you again find another different version of... Uh, you know, very subtle version in which material wealth, etc., and matter is being worshipped, or, or you know, it becomes so abstract in terms of philosophy that you are just not able to understand it. And no wonder the way, like for example, Marx would say, you know, religion is like an opium for people, mm -hmm. and which is why you be, you know, you just stray away from it. So that is how it was happening here in East. That because people would not understand the meaning of it, why they are doing or performing a particular ritual, a lot of times they would start astray. They would start getting drifted from it, withdrawing from it. And that's one of the reasons why you would find so many people saying that we are agnostics within Hinduism. Yes. 
because they would not understand they would not they would they would not be able to relate they would not be able to you know or they would just practice it because the family is doing it but they would not understand the hidden meaning i mean how many how many from hinduism would really tell you that they have read all 13 upanishads they have read all four vedas they have read all 18 puranas and understand the metaphor also behind that and are actually inculcating that into their day to day practices you would hardly find anybody it's good to have as scholars you know philosophical discussions the way we would have brothers or mm-hmm. sisters from hinduism doing it but i just feel that's just for those fraction of minutes if you ask okay in your real life how is it coming out how how are you implementing that Uh, they that you know it's like they would not have an answer to it so so that's what i'm saying it would not be a personification of it it's just a good read maybe if you really want philosophy abstract ideas go there but it's a different version of materialism which you see in west is, that takes yes. place in the east in name of spirituality yeah this is this is actually a very interesting point and i think one that that is missed quite often by by many of the seekers that go to seek this because uh, i mean again uh, you know there's this trend in the west for many people to take a year out you know between their studies so usually it usually happens around 16 17 18 um you know before they go to university and and or maybe after they go to university they take what's called a gap year and they go searching and and what happens is many of them come back adopt what they think of it as a spiritual lifestyle right and i i've seen many of these now and what i find with quite a lot of them is very very quickly it it degrades down to you know what am i wearing what am i eating what am i how do i look it, everything is very superficial absolutely because because you know so they adopt they adopt the rituals they adopt the rituals of of this so-called spirituality but then you say well is there any deeper meaning to it and when you ask them they say yes but you know in secret what they will say is it's not doing anything for me it's you know, not I, doing that i that's felt what, it yeah. while i was there i felt while i was there and i and they try and reproduce it when they come back over here and they don't get it of course they don't get it correct absolutely you know i was brother mohammed i would say i was also because a lot of times when people say you know g- uh, sort of go beyond transcend these rituals there's mm. there's a deeper meaning to hinduism we say sanatan dharm eternal mm-hmm. one it has those you know it has it has layers of such philosophical deep understanding and meaning of life atman parmatman you know the brahman so when so when you know i i would i wanted to go there to understand okay let me let me get into that real meaning so when when i would uh, when i was uh, you know because as i told you with new age again it was a different thing altogether again i would sort of go back and try to make sense of it that and uh, what i uh, sort of noticed was for example uh, you know when when there's a lot of uh, uh, sort of uh, um, controversial arguments with regard to for example shivlingam and we would say and people would say no don't take it literally in terms of so how would vedanta define it vedant would say that okay you take it like this where it's a purush and a prakriti purush meaning the consciousness prakriti mm-hmm. meaning the nature and what that particular shivlinga is a this is it's like a symbol of a union of prakriti and purush uh, uh, where you are saying it's a union of consciousness your chetna with the prakriti the nature and in that union you are still trying to be up, you know uh, out of it not getting attached to it now so be in the world but do not you know be in the world but be out of it the kind of way which we way we call about we talk about akhirat keep the akhirat mm-hmm. in your mind so there <laughs> they are trying to say in vedanta they would say this is the me-. but now tell me how many people are literally going to shiv temple with that in their mind it's not like that and even yes. if you want to maybe propagate this very deep philosophical very valuable idea there could be so many other ways to have symbolized it why to have done it in that particular way also again you know yeah uh, uh, similarly with one more uh, aspect which becomes mm-hmm. you know people would become little offensive and i understand why because yes of course i have been here in a hindu community with a hindu family the emotional connect which is there 
of people with it you know they would even if they don't understand they would not want anybody else to question it or you know sort of uh, put it in, in in a manner which may feel demeaning to them so so even though they would not have answer they would try they would be hell bent to justify it now again with this thing which comes with krishna and you know why would he steal for example the clothes of gopis so they would come mm-hmm. up with this you know idea that you you again taking it very literally take it as a playful act as a leela right. and then you know the the kind of arguments which would come up would be where they say that see krishna is like uh, of course a manifestation of vishnu again they would you know have so many versions so manifestation of vishnu vaishnavites would believe in that shaivites shaivites would not uh, the the shaktiites would not so that's again a different thing now here they would say it's not stealing of clothes it's basically your ego which has to you know you in human conscious has to be bereft of that ego and the parmatma mm-hmm. is taking away that ego from you and trying to you know sort of making you naked in terms of telling you that you know lose leave aside your ego self and connect with the with the supreme so then i wonder could there not be any other way to depict this idea this so called deeper philosophical idea had it to be symbolized in this manner and again it's not just mythology you have historicity to it so you know there would be so these these metaphors when you because that comes as a rescue quite often that they have deeper yes. meaning so these this, you know i had yeah. read those deeper meaning they don't they don't they don't make sense it's it's also uh, you know, strange that the ego was only with the women for what, what yeah, were the men exactly did they not have ego <laughs> exactly exactly it's crazy yeah, so uh, but, but, but this, is, this is this is this is interesting because it raises actually quite a couple of interesting topics in my mind which is first of all this sounds a lot because when you go back to the oldest text or the oldest you know discussions on this some of these analogies are not there from from what i've heard right from what, right, what i've seen right and it seems that some of these analogies only developed with later Um, absolutely very um, contemporary thinkers later thinkers right exactly um so it's, it's a, i mean again i'm not you know I, you know i'm not an expert in hinduism but it, some of it is sounds like sort of post hoc justification to try and validate right. uh, which are obviously contentious now as you're looking and i i agree i think you know these these sentiments that you've expressed are also in islam right so there are this idea of you need to sort of keep the akhira in mind this world is only a you know temporary we're only here it's a journey you know your pursuit should be for the pursuit of the af- for, for this life but also the next life so the thing exactly. with islam islam doesn't say you know forfeit this life in pursuit of the afterlife what it says is allah has given you a life here and you should live it according to islam and if you do this then there is a reward for you Absolutely. in the hereafter Right, so Absolutely. both are important to us. I just wanted to ask you a question about. Um, I think Dr. Zakir Naik is pretty popular. Was pretty popular in India and still is. I think. Um, did you come across any of his material while oh, yes. researching his work? <laughs> That was the <laughs> which you were constantly asking me about. What was the key point? Where did you actually move into it? Yeah, we're was saving that... the best for the last. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah that was that was the that was it that you know because you don't get answers to it and reincarnation again another you know it's like another in, entire thing which is there in hinduism so yeah i was i was just uh, you know when I, because i was searching reading books listening to um, thinkers authors so there when i had i came across it was again a coincidence for me uh, where i came across dr zakir naik and the way that dialogue was taking place the questions which were being asked i it i just felt that these are the kind of questions which i also had in mind and the way in which he was you know discussing answering resolving it was making complete sense to me that this is very very logical and the way in, in which he was using references etc that definitely appealed and from there i thought that maybe maybe here i could get my you know answer which i had been searching and looking for so definitely i would say that was the that was the striking point which which led me to you know search here so, so this. You know, before Dr. this inshallah he's um, he's motivated a lot of people to come to yeah. islam a lot of haters in particular i would say uh, because um, i think it was this kind of this gaping there was a gap you know like people 
never really talked about this in public. And I think he was probably the first one to go and speak not only directly to the Hindus, but he would go, if I remember correctly, he would go like to the most populated Hindu area and speak right in the middle of that. Alhamdulillah, you know, absolutely. That is the kind of um, lion, I would say he was, mashallah, who would go right in the middle of them and then speak Gosh. to them openly and invite them openly, you know, to the deen. He didn't put pressure on anyone. He didn't mm-hmm. force anyone. Never. But, you know, the politicians had a different idea, I suppose. So <laughs> we, we know, you know, Alhamdulillah, by the grace of Allah, he's still doing his dawah in, uh, from Malaysia, where, where he's currently residing, I think. And with um, with the advent of YouTube, mashallah, you don't need to be geographically fixed at one place. You know, you can Absolutely. be anywhere in the world and give your dawah still. And that's Absolutely. the beauty of this technology, you know, brothers and sisters in Islam. This is an opportunity which Allah has given you that we are living in an era where there's no limits to whom you can communicate with nowadays. Alhamdulillah. Uh, I think I just want to make an announcement that Brother Mansoor will be a bit delayed because he's still at work. Uh, a lot of people asking where's Brother Mansoor. As for Brother Sam Dawa, unfortunately he had an emergency in his uh, family, so he wa- he will not be able to attend this stream. Uh, inshallah, we'll get him at the uh, in the next one on Hinduism. Next so yeah, please inshallah. continue, Brother Muhammad. Yes. Yeah, no, no, this is a perfect segue because I was going to ask about this, but I was going to say, so when was, and this is the key question, when was the first time out of all the possible paths that you could have taken, because you were searching, sister, you were looking everywhere. When was the first time that you said, you know, I need to look at Islam? You know, Christianity, I looked at Christianity, that isn't working. Hinduism, that isn't working. Maybe you looked at some other things, I don't know. But what was the first trigger? Trigger, kind of the trigger. That that says, maybe it's Islam. (laughs) Right. Uh, Not just Christianity, Hinduism, New Age religion, Sikhism, also Mm. Buddhism. So, you know, uh, wherever I thought I could maybe, as I was telling you, I the books were all there around me. The my my only friends who were there in terms of these books. So I would I would sort of you know buy, see, read. But I was so here the trigger was definitely Dr. Zakir Naik, uh, the way in which those question answers, etc., were taking place and the way the dialogue. yeah. Was it sort of? Did you accidentally come across it on, let's say, YouTube? Absolutely, somebody accidentally. You a, so, so, no, uh, no, go, go, yeah, go through that process. How you know? What were you searching for, and <laughs> why did you look at that particular trigger? I was searching. I would be writing on YouTube. Uh, who's God? Um, mm. Who's the creator? You know, things like that. Uh, what is the purpose of our life? You know, so in 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 kind of those kinds of news feed, etc. I had got uh, one of this where he was having a question answer session and I just I, I didn't even know who he was mm. uh, so I just a big, and big, and uh, usually dialogue appeals you rather than a, a, a monolithic you know uh, argument which is there so question answer kind of a thing which was there Alhamdulillah Sorry, that... <laughs> I really love it when I he- I'm able to hear Azan. I just love it so much <laughs> because here I'm not able to hear uh, Azan where I am. Uh, so, alhamdulillah, no, no, alhamdulillah. Uh, so, so go ahead. So, so you're putting all these keywords into YouTube, searching for purpose of life, what is yes. God, who is God, and all of a sudden this strange video pops up or this strange recommendation <laughs> pops up. Yes. Okay. Can you remember yes. what the title was? Do you remember what the title was? Um, the, the, not really. I don't know. I don't remember. But I did. I did get to know that he told uh, there that we have a peace TV channel mm. also. Okay. I started looking for the peace TV channel. Started looking for the app. Maybe if I could get at so, but it was not running. Uh, uh, so that was not operational at the time. So okay. I was not able. So I thought, okay, let it be. Never mind. YouTube is good enough. If I could sort of, I I I bought some of the books online, soft copies of of it, the question answers which were there. So uh, I read through that, and those started appealing a lot. And there I you know, just felt that, yes, this is very, first of all, there was no complication, very simple, you know, answers were just hitting uh, to the kind of questions which were being asked. They were not abstract. 
they were not too philosophical uh the way i was finding in uh, in lot of hindu texts they were not also in terms of just taking you away from it and saying you have all the power the very flawed idea of empowerment which was provided they were neither how buddhism would totally nullify everything mm-hmm. not like that so here it started appealing me and i felt maybe this is where i could you know i could have i could get my answers so i started reading from there i started reading listening to him and then i thought let me see what is islam all about <laughs> because we i didn't have any clue of what islam is of course i heard about it but didn't know i thought let me figure out what is the core philosophy uh, who is a muslim uh, what do they do what kind of rituals do they have what uh, who is the god and i didn't know anything about prophets at all so then when i started reading about it uh, you know uh, the 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 core ideas and the basic uh, you know the 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 entire the way in which um, b- even before coming to the five pillars i would say the very idea of god which was presented was something which which really appealed me because that was something which had driven my journey uh, of looking everywhere so 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 that was that when i when i started and then again you know that god is that creator is one surah ikhlas which he talked about and where mm-hmm. he said you know kul huwa allahu ahad allahu samad lam yalid wa lam yulad wa lam yakul so i it just i i just felt that yes of course why not god is definitely one how can you know because as you were asking me were you looking for one god i didn't know consciously whether i was actually looking for one god or not mm. but the kind of you know ideas which were there they were not appealing and here with ikhlas oh. it just said it clearly that god is one absolute he begets not and nor was he begotten and there is nothing which is comparable to him so this such precise you know very very precise idea i just you know i started getting answers that yeah in hinduism we have entire family running of deities you know children grandchildren whatever like you know uh, c- cutting heads of children like that uh, whatever be the gra- whatever be the reason behind it so here it was very simple and it was said that no you know the way it was said and you have avatars you have three manifestation mm. of brahman in hinduism here it was said no it cannot view the god that supreme creator is one it is absolute you can't divide that absolute into so many the way it has been divided in hinduism so when i started reading and understanding about it through uh, through this and of course uh, you know namaz etc came much later first i wanted to get the core idea about what is this because i was going through so many so i thought i thought i don't want to indulge in another ritual where i don't understand the background of it so uh, that's good so, yes yes yeah yes. Uh, i mean let me sort of come in here because yeah. this is an important point first of all so first of all the point is that you recognized the simplicity in islam but islam is not simplistic this is a very important thing that we right. need to be aware of so it is, it is you know we have very very deep uh, thinking very very deep actually centuries of thought that have gone into sort of appreciating islam but at the core it is something that is that appeals to the simplest of individuals to the smartest of individuals absolutely and if a way of life is revealed from the creator of, of all of existence that you would expect that's you would what expect it is that Yeah, you would expect that this message should be at least standable, or at least be able to be appreciated by whoever in whatever condition they're in, as long as all of their faculties are with them. So if you know, the, you know, the, the, you know, if they if they're short of anything, Allah will treat them the way they are. But but this is important for me. So I think this is the key thing, which is the what 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 resonated with you then. was first of all the simplicity of 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 sort of the message but secondly as educated as you were this is what resonated with you because the Absolutely. philosophy wasn't Absolutely because philosophy entangles you you know it's, it's very good to have those kind of intellectual debates get a little high mm. get that kind of uh, you know self intellectual gratification that people seek 
but ultimately after that debate does does it change your life is the question is right. your day to day living changing or not so what i was finding in hindu's philosophical base was no it was not changing it was too complicated to be able to come in its empirical practice in real life and that was something which was a, which was something which i was you know finding here that yes definitely it's here it was saying that you have you know that that complete perfection that uniqueness that greatness which is associated with god which has and and something which which has no compromises to it that one god is unique it cannot have partners you know there cannot be any equal you, you cannot have rivals you can't have mother father son daughter wives of gods and deities because mm-hmm. that one is the one that god alone is one who is worthy of all worship he has all authority he has all power over everything this was something i was not getting in hinduism because hinduism has so many deities no so you have to go to one or the other for whatever desire you have you know again a uh, uh, new age would totally scrape it off uh, uh christianity would have you know jesus to have to be uh, to be the recourse for salvation which again was not making sense to me buddhism would again nullify it sikhism would have gurubani but again mm-hmm. not you know so that th- this was such Clear, crystal clear you know it it just felt to me this is what i was looking for that you know that you god cannot have human limitations you know the way it it said in christianity the seventh day you know after resting on the seventh day he created <laughs> the universe so here i just it just appeal yeah definitely definitely it can't be so it can't be like that you know the core cool ideas yeah. yeah it is and and you know i remember brother hashim had a discussion i mean he has regularly these discussions of course at speaker's corner but if your fifth i mean when we had actually a program on this a little while ago for when, on the fitra if it's clouded and if you've somehow polluted it then what is reasonable and sensible doesn't make sense to you anymore and i think we see this quite often right in in speakers corner where they come with the predetermined idea and then they justify it without listening to the logic that you present to them so quite often Thank what you say you know look it's one and they will say uh, no i don't agree it's one it's one in three three in one then you say but how is that sensible and they suspend all logic and what i'm seeing with you sister is you didn't suspend logic in fact you were using that logic that allah gave you that 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 rationality that allah gave you and you were using it to find allah to find alhamdulillah yeah, alhamdulillah you know? you know one thing is um, the intellect itself everyone's been given intellect you know all humans alhamdulillah we all have this uh, faculty of reasoning however people misuse them many times you know they are looking elsewhere when the truth is in front of you when there is uh, clearly the haq in front of you you would still go about doing what your forefathers were doing and this is a habit you know it's very difficult to change and the, the older you grow it the difficult it gets mostly and this is a danger in itself as well because when you do not use the god given intellect and when the truth is in front of you and you still continue rejecting it that just shows that you are not even true uh, true to your own self because what if you if your head is telling you that this is wrong this is wrong you know there's definitely some red alert you know there's this sign given to you internally and you keep saying to yourself no my forefathers were right that is wrong okay. even though it makes sense to you and this is exactly what islam is isn't it islam gives presence to you you have all the faculties you have the re, uh, what do you say the free will all of this and this is all in your favor but yet you will reject all of the truth which is in front of you and then go on for this so i hear our hindu friends you know whenever we have this discussions and i'm sure you have come across this as well they say oh hinduism is so complex you know exactly as of that plus point <laughs> you know exactly. god wanted you to have salvation to have nirvana to have moksha or anything and he was kind and merciful to make it easy for you not make it complex for you exactly. yes exactly. i mean in fact true imagine, that's yeah, very imagine true. you're teaching your yeah. child and you say hold on this is very complex you can't solve this <laughs> equation you know so make it easy for him that's the best way he'll learn not the other way around 
yeah sorry sis, sis, absolutely sorry. absolutely brother hashim yeah. i mean that's what that's what you know i am personally a very simple person and i like that you know i like things to be simple for me to be able to practice it yeah to to be able to practice to be able to as it is i don't like complexity which just you know takes you around the bush and and it just yields nothing so here i was finding that the message was crystal clear it was very simple and also the way you know because most of the religions when it will be said that we are very god fearing people you know no things like that this new i would also like to put in this one uh, uh, aspect that you know the new age religion would usually say we are not god fearing we are god loving so you know there is no place for fear religions create fear among people let's get you know let's get rid of that fear based religions which are there around let's bring a new religion which is based on love harmony brotherhood that entire new world order a uh, new age religion being part of that so that was you know that tries to appeal people who are not probably getting answers within religion so they may think that yeah you know maybe let's let's everybody would say that yeah probably but there is you know as we know certain fears are uh, important for your survival and that's how uh, you know you need to ingrain that but here they would say in new age religion let's not have how can you how can you have a god or a creator who so uh, you know whom you are fearing but they don't understand the very idea how fear is used for your own good and how that is used as a way of respect to that you know to that to that creator yes. so so yeah so alhamdulillah we got uh, brother mansoor he just uh, come in assalam alaikum brother mansoor alhamdulillah we can't hear you your audio still not no we can't hear you at all mansoor sorry we can't hear you <laughs> yeah so i'll um as uh, so, 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 yeah that's that's absolutely right so it's um you know this fear and love kind of thing you know it's you find this in your parents as well true so imagine a parent just loves the kids you know and the kids don't fear the fear the parent so there's no boundaries no um uh no ifs and buts they can do anything you know there's no restrictions for the children now anyone in the right mind will say that this parent is doesn't know parenthood he doesn't know how to treat his children he gives them the Salaam free alaikum. reign to do anything wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh yes, wa alaikum assalam alhamdulillah i'm hashim and sister sati yes alhamdulillah we are good yes i think brother muhammad has just left for maghrib and i'll follow him shortly so okay. yes how's how's the day man so alhamdulillah has been very busy as you can see <laughs> we just come from work yeah, alhamdulillah thanks for joining All right No, Mashallah, Sister Swati has just been uh, telling us about her journey. From- I was actually listening um, on on the way when I was riding. Um, I was listening quite a fascinating story and journey, and so much to learn from. So I'm, I'm, I'm very much, you know, um, honored for Sister Swati's presence here in the sense that there's so much to learn um, because when you when you learn from people who've gone through the experience. there is no substitute in learning and we can't find these in books unless you write your own story in a book form um yeah. just really to see how you know people can connect i mean this is fascinating so hopefully inshallah uh, myself primarily and our audience will be able to learn so much in terms of the whole you know the process the the, the journey itself that one needs to undertake in 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 seeking the truth and yours is a, an exceptional story i have the day which is yeah you didn't sorry, have sorry. any friends and so on yeah, yeah sorry i was interrupting surprise. brother mansoor yeah which is why probably you know which is why brother mansoor when i'm talking about it sharing about it i feel so happy so elated uh, you know because because this was such a search that i had been looking for it yearning seeking and then once finally you get that uh and you get that uh, you know you you get the answer and you know this is the correct path it just whenever you're sharing ex- or you know exchanging those ideas you tend to feel i try not to sort of you know show that or reflect that kind of happiness but it just comes out uh, by default naturally when we are talking about deen and especially islam <laughs> so alhamdulillah yeah i mean honestly i haven't listened to um, the 
bulk of this presentation only since I've you know, left work and on, on, the, on the way back home. Did you have did, did you have parents who encouraged you or family members who encouraged you to the self-discovery? Because what we would find, and the reason why I'm asking is this, even from a Muslim family point of view, we wouldn't normally encourage you know, our children from a very young age, like go and explore all religions. We would inculcate that Islam is the truth. And of course, depending on your family and your the environment, you may discuss the idea of this religious uh, ideologies all around, how they fit in in reality and why Islam is true. But in majority of the cases, this doesn't normally happen in a, in a household. So how was your family in terms of your <laughs> of discovery? As I was telling uh, Brother Mansoor to Brother Hashim and Brother Muhammad, it's been, uh, I have been totally blessed by Allah, even when I was there in Hinduism, seeking and searching, because probably he somewhere knew that this, you know, this, this person is looking for me. So, uh, yeah, my family was absolutely very, that's what I was telling, that my family has been very, very supporting towards this, because I would ask them the questions from Hinduism to, you know, why would we do it in such a manner? Why? this ritual what is the meaning behind it i am not getting the answers through you know upanishads becoming they're becoming too philosophical too abstract for me to be able to you know put it in practice so so they would encourage me and they would say okay you read more you know you figure out of course they did not uh, they did not know that i was also venturing into other religions new age religion etc uh, uh, it was not that i was hiding it from them they would see the books around with titles but it, they were okay with it and they thought that all right let it be you are gaining some knowledge from that so it's okay as long as you're gaining knowledge uh, I mean they were pretty okay with that so so in that sense you know exploring reading researching studying and alhamdulillah that was something which was which was encouraged uh, in my family a lot that uh, uh, supposedly maybe I could say supposedly you know, the within the world national system, the Hindu Brahmin family were supposedly to be the one who would seek God, the kind of enlightened one, which we don't see in practice. Of course, that's a very corrupted version that we see today. But Alhamdulillah, what I would find in my family was that my parents would be such that they would not stop me from reading, from gaining knowledge, from seeking truth, from knowing about that God, from wherever I, you know, whatever authentic source from which I could, they would encourage me for that. So, so in that sense, uh, uh, I was not I was not stopped from that that why are you reading this book or that uh, and also because I was simultaneously performing those rituals which were there it was not that I had totally cut cut off myself from it so mm -hmm. because I was performing that and I was being very uh, you know obedient in that sense uh, uh, so uh, very well mannered listening to them so they did not have any problem as such with my reading because they thought that okay it's just gaining knowledge so that's all right it was when i when i actually got answers through islam and then when i thought that now i uh, feel hesitant to now perform these rituals uh, that is where you know the trouble should have come <laughs> but alhamdulillah even that that also didn't come you know uh, uh, when it came when that point came uh, which that's why i'm saying that it's such a sheer blessing and maybe because you know when somebody is a true seeker and when they're really wanting to know that creator and and it's said in islam if you take the first step allah takes the rest of it and just navigates you holds your hand uh, you know take you step by step to it so i it's not something which is just you know it's not something which is bookish i had experienced it you know day in day out in my life how things would become very cordial for me to be able to explore to search even when would accept Islam and start with the rituals, even then how, you know, it would be at my, at least at my place with my family, it did not come out to be like a big deal in that sense, yeah. which appears to be very strange because somebody may say that, you know, you being from a Hindu Brahmin family, how could it not be a big deal? But I don't know why it did not turn out to be a big deal like that. When I explained, when I told, my family about it and also somewhere because maybe i think maybe could be that in the heart of their hearts 
they also could have felt that yeah this is not making much sense we are doing because of what our ancestors had been doing but questions which i was raising they would ask me that these are intelligent questions and they would not know how to respond to it or whatever response they would give they would provide but but maybe it could have uh, you know hit them somewhere that yeah i i am not because i had asked them first it's not that i was just doing it all by myself i was asking my parents my family tell me you guide me i'll not go outside mm. to somebody else but because when they were also they only had directed me that you read you uh, you know study you read it's okay you'll find answers so in that sense uh, you know uh, alhamdulillah they would they were very very and they are still very very supportive alhamdulillah i'm, I'm pretty blessed and let this blessing be yeah. there on me amen amen assalamu alaikum brother mansoor how are you wa assalamu rahmatullahi wa barakatuh alhamdulillah bi khair so i was just um saying that i was listening uh, part of this conversation uh, on 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 the way home mm. so it seems like from what i can figure is the the family uh, swati um has they didn't feel any disconnect in terms of how you were searching you know going through a journey of self discovery they could see still the goodness within you so there wasn't anything that they saw that you were actually going into something like becoming you know a hip star you know going to drugs you know how families normally worry um if they see that their children going in in the wrong way wrong path but what mm-hmm. they saw within you is rather it is something that they themselves would encourage you know f- for their own self to find out the truth find out the reality of the things because it is sensible reasonable questions that you are asking so in in this um you know as we were exploring this at the very end point your family just say you know what let me get some pundits to you, to you to answer those questions or you should go to this temple and speak to this pundit and this guru to get your answers or they're just simply leaving it to you to read um and and then find it yourself they uh n- not go physically visiting but yeah they would uh, for example my parents would say okay you read bhagavad gita uh, you know it's in a dialogue form you'll get the answer you read uh you if you if you if you feel that upanishads are too abstract or philosophical for you you go through bhagavad gita that's in a very simple manner given you may you may find answers i did read it and uh, of course you know all the bhakti yog karm yog gyan yog which were all there how could you reach to god i did read about all of that yet there were a lot of questions which were not uh, getting clarified the varnashram system which was there the and especially the very idea that somebody you know they would say uh, uh, for example they would say that okay you know lord krishna would show the virat roop to arjuna they would say even arjun had these kinds of doubts you know the way you are having he would also ask so you read that you will find figure out answers my question was that uh, okay somebody that you are talking about as krishna as uh, if you are saying that he is god or the manifestation or an avatar but he came in dwapar yug the yugas which are there in in hinduism the tre- the satyug treta dwapar and the kaliyug which is going on as per hindu philosophy religion so i would wonder that wh- how, you know he came in dwapar yug if he's he if he's the god or the avatar of god then he died he also died there was you know and and it was written that that, that was because of the previous birth is thing that uh, you know the the arrow hit him on the on the toe and he died and so i wondered how, that, that that becomes a very humanly trait how can god die and you know then again take whatever so it was not make and then entire the very varnashram system which was being uh, you know propagated uh, you know they would talk about gun they would talk about karm but at the same time those karm were related with your jan and was related with your previous birth also so it was not entirely the very idea of only karma theory the karma theory was entangled with the reincarnation theory the rebirth theory the very idea of so many uh, you know 84 yonis 84 lakh yonis that you had to go through to take birth into a human 
categorization so law all of that was becoming very complicated for me to be able to get that and that but that is where i felt that this is i mean i i don't think this is god speaking in bhagavad gita and again you know the very idea of why if arjuna for example if people say that you know in the varnashram system it's your way it's it's, it's based on your you know uh, your uh, your desire to be able to you know choose and it's not hereditary like that then why would arjun who does not want to engage in the war was given all you know so many uh, convincing arg arguments to be able to engage in it because he's from kshatriya varna now they would answer by saying that no 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 he was just getting attached you know they would say they would use the term moh that he was getting attached mm. to the siblings and family and which is why he was not engaging into his dharm you know the four purusharths which are there in hindu religion dharm arth kaam moksha moksha being the destination now moksha or salvation being the destination then why such a cycle of reincarnation which is an eternal cycle you know endless cycle so so these were not these are these are questions and the answers to them were not making sense so uh, you know as brother mansoor is asking me that did did they ask you to go to any particular pandit to get the answers i read the scriptures i also listened you know because lot of them are online also doing the way we do dawa so there they would they would you know uh, preach or uh, bring out answers so i did listen to that too uh, which was which was online seminar or lectures etc but again that's what i'm saying that these answers would not make much sense to me uh, it was not very convincing to me no they were trying hard uh, but again that's one sect vaishnavs would say something shaivites would say something else shaktiites would say something else so because of that plurality you know there is no one consistent answer that you will get and that's the reason why you have so many you know different ways in which it's being addressed if you if you'll critique one particular aspect of hinduism you'll have somebody else coming with some other you know some other literature text and saying this is what where we can find answer so that becomes very problematic this is fascinating because one of the so this is just a thought that i've had and it's something i've been thinking about for a long time is that you know under the sort of secular liberal mindset the idea is that everything is relative right so therefore therefore and therefore you know it's your truth my truth everybody's truth everything is fine uh, and if i do a little bit of sort of like a, a thought experiment then here's what i arrive at and again i have no sort of evidence to back this up but this is what i think which is if you take liberal, liberal secularism and you extrapolate it let's say 2 3 4 5 000 years and you lay on top of it a uh, man's thinking and philosophy then what you essentially arrive at is actually where hinduism is right now correct right? absolutely correct But, yeah yeah true and which is why which is why prate mohammed you will you will hear people from hindu religion saying that see we are so tolerant we mm. are so liberal we can accommodate and you know amalgamate everything into it how plural how diverse it is uh, so yeah very good very plural very diverse everything is there but then don't call it religion my only thing is then don't call it religion call it to be a kind of philosophical ism or idea just like you have liberalism you have uh, feminism you have postmodernism you have conservatism anarchism call it to be another ism like that don't put it in the category of religion then but then you have yeah. you know yeah but then you have religion which is which is based on that based on text like puranas which is suppose no that's the irony that puranas are supposedly to be the one who have very low level of of you know uh, understanding but all the festivities are coming from the same puranas they are not mm. mentioned in any of the upanishads or vedas uh, so that again becomes you don't have answers to it and i'm telling you if you ask any common person out there you know have you read this upanishad have you read this veda you they'll just look at you blankly and they'll say I, i we don't know we have not we just follow the rituals and we do that and and that's yes. basically 
the way it progresses. Yeah. Sure. Can I just ask you, sorry, uh, Brother Muhammad, just a quick question. Maybe you have answered this, um, Swati, already. When, when you read the scriptures, I mean, were you reading this in Sanskrit or in your other, some other languages? Yeah, yeah. Yes, Brother Mansoor. Uh, yeah, I did. Uh, I, I was telling, I had, uh, I had sans I had studied Sanskrit and got very good high grades. So I was able to, and my parents also knew Sanskrit. So I could read in Sanskrit and also the uh, translation which was present in these scriptures, which were there in Hindi, being my mother tongue. And also it was there in English. So yes, translations were available. And in, in Sanskrit also it was there. So I would read in Sanskrit and understand also from the translations which were present. So yeah, the, so the direct engagement with the texts had been there before I got a little disheartened or dissuaded from it. The, it's not that I totally did not go through the text and absolutely was dissuaded. It was not like that. Sure. So when you read the Vedas, what, I mean, how does it present to you as you read in the Sanskrit? Does it have that appeal that, okay, this seems to be some kind of divinely uh, inspired text or divinely revealed text? You know, when we read the Quran, you feel that this is not ordinary, this is not humanly, this, this is out of the world, extraordinary. You can feel that when you listen to the Quran, you, you can appreciate and understand that it doesn't seem like it's like a human work. So when you read in Sanskrit, the Vedas, how does that appeal to you? How does it feel? I mean, did you get that vibe that, okay, that's not just some gurus or some rishis coming up with some poetical, some kind of eloquent um, structural sentences here and there with their, with their hymns, the praises? Exactly. How, how exactly. did it come to you? It, it did come like that only because that's what they are, the mantras. The hymns which they are uh, are basically recited to uh, you know engage particular deities and to be able to get uh, whatever material uh, you know uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, material aspects that you want to enrich yourself in into that's that's how that's why those mantras and we would have I would I would see the yag yagyas havans with which would take place um, some of some of some of which would take place in my at my home very rarely say once in a year or so but yeah the pandits would come and they would they would uh, you know so they would engage with the mantras from the Vedas uh, you know you would put clarified butter in the fire uh, and then everybody would chant those so but most of them would not understand, for example, what are we reading? Why are we doing? But they were done. Those the, the way Vedas had come, they were they would be performed again to get certain material results. So, mm. you know, the way you're saying with Quran, the way we when we read Quran, when we understand, you get hikmat. I was not getting that from it. It was more of the um, uh, kind of what material desires would you like to get fulfilled from it? And of course, a lot of things which were very discriminatory also in nature, which were which were presented, a lot of things which were very contradictory in nature, which were being presented. So with, with that kind of a thing, I didn't know what am I actually gaining out of it. And as I was telling Brother Hashim and Brother Muhammad, it's just the same thing which you find in New Age religion. Same material progress, material enrichment, enhancement in the New Age religion. It's the same thing without cut off the rituals. Uh, and let it let's take it to spirituality so the same thing comes out there uh, yeah. so in that sense i uh, you know the way we say the recitation chant it out loud maybe it will somewhere um, make you feel that this is from the divine uh, i i did not personally experience that i don't know if somebody else would have but i did not mm. it's interesting. Well, this is an interesting story yeah, sorry, sorry, Brother Muhammad. The reason why I am asking this is because there has to be some kind of divine hallmark or signature in a scripture which is from the divine um, or inspired from the divine if this is some kind of inspiration theory like Christians and other people believe in. Because if the authenticity element is not there, then you can read any book, any novel, any piece of literature and get motivated and change your life and follow a particular life style, isn't it? But if you want to really know the truth of this reality and the reality after hereafter, there has to be the, this element of divine, authentic source material that you should accept 
and transform your life by. So that's interesting to know. But I, I do understand as well that there might be some people who may feel that way. So it all depends on how they connect with the books. Uh, the I, yeah, uh, sorry to cut. Brother Mansoor, I did not find it to be a source of knowledge in that sense. I wasn't gaining knowledge from it. You get to know, you get to, you know, it'll be very, maybe 5% of it, which would talk about the Brahman, the Supreme Creator, but nothing beyond that. The way in Quran, you would also know what God wants from you, why you are here, where will you go, how to deal with your fellow beings. You know, the entire way to conduct yourself is, it's like an entire manual which is there in front of you. That's not present when you read Vedas. That's not there. They are, they are, they are hymns, they are mantras for you to be able to chant them to get certain, uh, you know, certain things that you would want to receive in terms of the material progress. But the way of life like that is not something which is present in that. You know, it's, there's actually a couple of points there. So let me just come in. So, Sorry, Brother Muhammad. Uh, I am just just realized it's been two hours. So maybe we should open for Q&A. But continue with your question. while. Yeah, I, yeah uh, exactly. So uh, let me just make up one point and, and then I think yeah, we'll open sure. up. Because I think Sister's been speaking for almost two hours. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Uh, please do, please do take a drink. Um, uh, keep yourself hydrated. But a couple, you said some very couple of some interesting things, and I just want to make some observations. The first thing, that, or one of the first things that you said here, is the idea that, or actually, Brother Mansur mentioned it, which is, if it is from the divine, then it must be truthful. It must have truth in it, and there must not be any uh, predictions, any things that are problematic in terms of um you know uh different kinds of deceptions or different kinds of inequalities you know this is the, you know we would not expect to find things like this in guidance from the divine and i think from what you were saying earlier as you're reading these texts in sanskrit in in clearly in a language that you understand because you've been educated in this you understand this you're looking for that truth or you you want to find that truth and it's not there so it doesn't resonate with you that's, that's what's the first thing i i get from what you said Thanks. the second point that you made which i thought was really powerful is this idea that if you if you strip away the rituals then actually the essence of what's left is there's no meaning in in in, in this sort of cultural hinduism that you're brought up in so if you take away all of that, and then you then you try and find some meaning, there's nothing there. So it's almost like the rituals now take complete precedent or precedence over the idea of faith and belief. You know, faith and belief is not important as long as I am, you know, doing these things, wearing clothes, then you know I'm part of the club, as it were, right? I found that very insightful. I think this is this is a very powerful uh, thing that you, that you sort of alluded to. And the third thing, and this is the last point I'll make, is this this journey that you've been on that you've explained to us so far um, has one where you've always maintained a clear sign or a clear goal, which is I want to find that which appeals to my mind but also to my heart. I want them both to align. You know, I don't need just emotion and I don't need just intellectual satisfaction. I want intellectual satisfaction and emotional peace with, with whatever it is I'm getting. Would that, would that be a fair summary of, of sort of, sort of what you've been told. A very perfect fair summary, Brother Muhammad, because uh, uh, the second point which you had mentioned where you were saying that if we just uh, take away the rituals from it, then probably we are left with nothing. You know, there could be, I think there could be people who would come up and say uh, that, uh, no, if you take up the rituals, because you also have Advait philosophy within that by Shankaracharya. Good. And you have the dualism of Dwayth philosophy, which says that matter, reality and the, uh, the, the, the supreme, these are two different planes. Whereas Advaita would say they, that the two are, two, you know, they are merged together and that's where, you know, the, in, everything else is false. So they, the Advaita philosophy probably by Shankaracharya, 
would you know come here and would say that no we in fact do not believe in these rituals you know we are basically mm. we have a very strong philosophical you know idea of how atman can attain that parmatman how we can unite how how the soul can actually get enlightened uh, to get you know to get merged or immersed into that but that's what i'm saying you it's it's again very if you if you start asking them about your very day to day mundane activities that you need to perform to give guidelines on the basis of that they'll be a very very abstract again very much in air so you the way quran gives you right from the smallest of the thing that you have to do you know in way of conducting yourself they'll they'll not come down to that level to tell you how then how to how to guide your day to day life so that's why even when you bereft yourself of rituals and you come up with that very high high tech philosoph- philosophical argument that that also doesn't take you anywhere because you uh, you don't get the guidance in terms of your very day to day empirical practice right. that's the thing and which is why when you know people come and debate about it they will say have you read about have you read, read about uh, you know patanjali yoga have you read about sankhya have you read about nyaya you know uh, are you familiar with vedanta good enough yes let's have a philosophical debate about it but where exactly is it leading you to how mm. has it changed your day to day behavior that's where i ask them it's good we can have an an hours discussion on that which is very stimulating comes like a brainstorming thing but then how is it impacting you how do, do you get a manual on how you have to behave where would you go that doesn't come out so for that second point which you were saying no that which is why either ways with the rituals and without the rituals you are not getting the direction that an almighty should give you and okay. second yeah. and the third uh alhamdulillah and the third point which you had said no uh, which is uh, of ap- appealing to the heart and uh, as well as to your mind you know your heart and your intellect mm. that's something mm. you know where i feel that if we if we if we just go through surah bakra and surah imran the how clearly allah says that the truth comes from your rab from your master you know don't you dare become among, become among those who fall into that doubt because because i as whatever little i've studied I, i've taken those little steps in surah bakra they say because the direction of the muslim prayer now shifts from jerusalem to makkah mm. and because the jews the you know they are considered to be people of ink you know very very well read very scholarly you know into the heads so you know somebody of that high intellectual credential high academic credential when they start saying that you are wrong you might get intimidated you might start doubting yourself and that's where allah says that don't doubt just stick with the truth no ma- and that the same thing happens with upanishad etc with vedas in hindu religion where they come with you know these kinds of very high philosophical ideas to say that you know this is very these are just biographies maybe or uh, historicities of mm. the prophets what is there in it so that kind of you know that kind of doubt which comes allah says do not do not get you know dissuaded from that and the heart which you talked about in the third point that you know it should appeal the heart now again that emotional doubt which comes you know that emotional doubt which is out of love of god you know where you could ga- you could be guaranteed that salvation you know sometimes people would say that you know when when for example the muslim brothers and sisters if they would not feel loved in the community they might say that okay let me go to the christian community or maybe hindus are too liberal you know they they would just they have so much toleration or the christians you know they would say that you know they they feel very loved with christians you know uh, and they might think that you know if those people are really wrong then why are they so kind and nice you know and if we are really truthful how come some of the muslims are so mean and so insensitive so that kind of you know emotional doubt or that kind of intellectual doubt the academic doubt you know with so many terminologies books papers research so much of elaboration which becomes and it's so staggered that it, you get intimidated and you you just say man i don't know anything maybe probably i what i am believing i should not believe any more but allah in quran is is he's he's he is not dismissing one doubt or the other but he is giving in quran he's saying how with the academic or the intellect or the mind the rasul allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was ummi unlettered yes and you see yes. the validation the way in which quran has come out how could the very first you know ayat alif lam mim is saying don't come with that spiritual arrogance here to quran mm-hmm. 
that if you're trying to soothe that kind of a thing here, you know, step back because this is not coming from any human. This is coming from the creator who knows where to you sort of pin you down and where to sort of give you the leeway. So, so that kind of intellect, you say mind, intellectual doubt with, you know, with the Jewish scholars or the, or the Hindu uh, Advait philosophers, etc. would come. Our Prophet Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was Ummi. He was unlettered. And here we have, here we have this, this divine text of Quran. Similarly, for the emotions, the emotional text, and you know, people would say that, you know, the, that softness which is there, that kindness which is there, you know, that, ca that character, that compassion, that mercy. You know, that is something which appeals to me of maybe or, or the toleration that appeals to me of Christianity or of Hinduism or, or, or any other religion that they talk about. Again, you know, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had more of that than anybody ever did. You cannot just mess with, with Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when it comes to that. He was the friend of every friend. He was the consoler of every consoler. He was the leader. You know, uh, of course, an average Muslim may have problem with that because we are losing that trait, which our Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had. But, but the compassion, the kindness which he had, you know, if you really, which is why it's important to read the seerah or seerah of Nabi. So both of these aspects, you know, which you in the third point had mentioned, your heart and your intellect, both of that gets totally fulfilled. And it gives you a very comprehensive, you know, entire idea when you study Quran, when you read each and every ayat. I remember Brother Muhammad had told me in the last stream when I had come, uh, where you had, you know, suggested me just take baby steps, you know, be firm with it. You know, because of course it happens with people who had newly taken uh, to to Islam, they, they become eager and too enthusiastic. So very slowly and steadily, just read each ayat, understand it, understand the deeper meaning associated with it. Imply, see whether you are able to, you know, put it in practice. Are you? What benefit are you getting from it? Is it really bringing any transformation? That's when you know that this is from divine. The way Brother Mansoor was asking, how would you know from Vedas whether it was from from that divine? This is where you know, I chant, I read those Vedas, the mantras, we have had yagnas, but I did next, after an hour or two of the of performance of the yagna, things would get back to normalization. In fact, people would say we are getting too tired, you know, open up the windows, a lot of smoke uh, because of the fire, etc. And here you read each ayat, just one ayat you read, understand the tafsir, understand the tarjuma, apply it in your day-to-day -day life, you see it reaching to your core you know, to the very beingness. And you know, this can't be just from any other human. Alhamdulillah. So, yeah, Alhamdulillah. Right, we got, uh, shall we take the first? Um, yeah, the so first let's give Sister Swati a, a little break here. So please, um, <laughs> yes. um, yeah, Alhamdulillah. Mashallah, so we're going to bring some... And all of us put together, you know. I think she has, <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Um, so take we're going to bring sister, some individuals get on. Get some water, get something to eat if you want. Uh, yeah. we'll, we'll ask questions uh, I mean, we'll take questions from our... Well, we'll take questions. I mean, they may be for, for the sister, but uh, yeah. So yeah, let's bring the next guest on to you where we are. Right. So we got uh, Kumar. Is that right, Kumar? Can you hear we, us? We can't, we can't hear you. Sorry, we can't hear you. I, I can't hear at all. Just wait for no right sorry the other people who are waiting uh you need to verify your uh with the video verification in the back chat could you switch uh, in the back chat you could you switch to the okay. live chat you can switch it off just for verification for a few seconds actually and we'll be giving priority to non-muslims uh the muslims can join in later inshallah we'll invite them inshallah right kumar we cool. still so, can hear you. brother kumar, kumar we still can i hear think you. what you could do is you can just go back and come back again you know just log off and log back in yeah. and see if that fixes your mic problem so those in the back chat please switch your camera on briefly just so we can verify that you are real and then we'll bring you you can and then you can switch the cameras yeah. off even if you're hindu we still need to verify you it yes. just it doesn't give you a special privilege just because you're okay hindu. very good you can switch it off now thank you otherwise you can ask your question in the private chat in the live chat sorry in the private chat at the back okay um Brother Deist, hello. 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 Uh, so, do you hear me? Yes. Yeah, we can. Yes, we can. Yes. So, my English now doesn't. Are you comfortable in Hindi? 
You no, need this to is an English only Twitter. channel. This is an English only channel, brother. Okay. 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's okay. Do you have a question for us, Deist, or any? I think he's going to no. get his translator. Yeah. Right. So, so we got brother Kum Kumar again. Kumar, try again. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, can you? Hear oh, me we now? can hear you. Yes. Yeah, we can yeah, hear you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, I have been following your streams uh, for a brief amount of time, uh, at least for five months, I think. Uh, your panel uh, discussed well about Hinduism. I uh, like that also. Uh, I have one question for Swati. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, we can hear you. Just speak yeah. a bit louder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Okay, you are hearing me, right? Yeah, we That's can. That's fine, yeah. Me. We can hear you. Yes, go ahead. A sister yeah, Swati is listening uh, to you. Yeah. Yeah, Swati, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, Brother Kumar. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think um, uh, for any verification of, uh, like, in, uh, for any uh, thing to verify, we have in Hinduism, like, Pramanas. You know that. Yes, I know that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> But uh, how can you uh, see? See, you have converted to in Muslim. I, I don't. I don't. Uh, uh, okay, you, it's, it's your wish. You can uh, follow any faith. Uh, but in pramanas, you, you should. Uh, you you have six or seven type of pramanas to verify that uh, anything is good or uh, is is there or not. But you have not anyone. I think in the Muslim world, except Muhammad, have not seen Allah. That is Pratyaksha Pramana in a Hindu culture for any for anyone to claim that I think Muhammad has claimed that he has seen Allah. Uh, nobody has seen that. Have you seen Swati Allah? Uh, Brother how... Kumar, uh, I would like to. Yeah. I, I have heard. I I understand about pramanas which you are talking about, shabda yeah, yeah. pramanas etc. Yeah. So I yeah, would. Yeah. Uh, and and that was very kind of you to be saying that. Yes, of course, it's yeah. a personal choice, and our constitution provides that choice uh, to uh, everybody to be that. able to. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, so yes, you are asking about this very aspect where you know you have seen or not. Now, yeah. Uh, what, uh, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. what uh, I probably maybe you can guide me, perhaps, since you are well yeah. aware of it. So how yeah. would the pramanas work, for example, in case of uh, Lord Ganesha? You know, uh, 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 what kind of pramanas would how would you how would you explain uh, why would Lord Shiva, for instance, uh, you know, scrape off his head? Of course, you may yeah. say that that's an illusion. That's a leela. No, no, that was part of the bigger ask. plan. No, yeah. no, no. Oh, yeah. I will tell the answer. I will tell the answer. Yeah. Yes. Yes. You know, God, you know, our Hindu devatas have no direct son or son or uh, uh, daughter giving birth from vagina. You know. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Pavati Mata is known as uh, Adi Mata, means uh, mother of all mothers. You know that. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. Uh, she had, in fact, some uh, humanly delusions like that. Uh, she wanted to have a baby, but in Devatas, they can't have that one. So she, in the bath, created one son and gave, uh, she has power to give, uh, give life to anyone, any form. Yeah. But uh, she, she, she is an Adi Mata. She cannot go and uh, concentrate on one son. She has, she, uh, Don't you think, Brother Kumar, that's a limitation which comes on Adi Mata? Because if you have if you have that power, why would you place restrictions like that on yourself to not be able to give you know give birth in that ways? Why would you not be able to? Secondly, I was wondering about this. That why would it be that uh, I get that it is not in the way in which human birth takes place that you're saying. Uh, so why would, when he was placed uh, as somebody who, when she had gone to take bath, so he was placed, uh, you know, there to basically guard and protect her honor. And when Lord Shiva would come, why would it be that he would not be, first of all, able to recognize that he's he's been created by the Adi Mata? And secondly, he had come after a long you know, of years of meditation, the tapasya. So why would it be that when when Ganesha would stop him from getting inside in that fit of anger, 
he would sort of you know where he would cut off his head and then of course when adi mata would say he would place then the head of the elephant on him now some may say that you know so, so that's what i'm saying these are the kind of you know humanly traits which you're saying that they are not born out of humans you know that human birth is not there then why the human trait of anger why the human trait of ignorance yeah, yeah. which has you been depicted you are coming to the point you are yeah. coming to the point ganesha had the anger and the modest of stopping shiva he has anger not ganesha ganesha, ganesha. Not, Gan okay, ganesha. Not, yeah 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 See, ganesha yeah, yeah. has not he was, he was not gay, like that uh, gate guard okay just go uh, you are come you can come he is not like that he is not like waiter he had uh, see uh, he has not recognized shiva he has all the human traits in him ganesha he is not but a deva so, but yeah brother yeah. kumar just just a minute on from the but, out of yeah yeah yeah, yeah. just a second yeah. but so were the human traits being depicted by by lord shiva where he also became raged and he cut off his he head not, then no 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 he not he has not come into rage he has when not he cut off somebody's head it's not out of compassion yeah. for sure right when we cut off somebody's head it's not out of kindness and compassion and mercy so that rage was there and at the same time even the ignorance even if it's a play it even if it's a leela that that ignorance which was being depicted that he did not know that parvati mata had created it it was her creation so i am asking that that ignorance and that rage which was being depicted by lord shiva that something which you know makes you question then that how can how can those divine how, how can human attributes those human vices which we say calm crowd low mo uh, you know how could that be present in a supreme deity you know that is something so where is the pramana you said that pramana is something which needs to be checked now here yeah. what is the pramana which makes them divine and the supreme god how would you check that i think they are in one question you have so many questions okay ha, because uh, that's what i'm saying those kind yeah, of yeah. questions do come up when we read and when we yeah. try to understand no yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. sorry okay, kumar can uh, i just quickly ask you a question which yeah, yeah. Uh, which tradition of hinduism do you belong to is it vaishnavism or shaivism see i am from south of india i am from madhya pradesh here we are following india's uh, indigenous culture we don't relate to shiva or vaishnav see in india you cannot uh, you cannot just give an uh, example that shiva is god and this god there are so many gods are there in, in india every community has its own god like uh, muslims have their own god allah here we have every community every sub community has a god Okay, that's yeah. what I'm asking. Yeah, yeah. Which yeah. which God is your community's God? What is the name of uh, your tradition, Kumar? Yeah, 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 yeah. My God is Yalamma. She is Goddess. Okay. Uh, Yalamma. So what do you know that? Yeah, Yalamma. Okay. Yeah, Yalamma. What is Yalamma. what is the common name for that God or Goddess? Ah, uh, she is God Yala Yalamma. Yeah. Okay. Is she so, called anything okay, else in other Hindu traditions? God or Goddess? No, no. Or? We call we ah uh, yeah yeah in our community we call Yalamma. Every community has a, a God. god uh, home god uh any bigger than the text brother kumar any scriptural text through which you know the text within hindu ambit the way we have so any particular uh, scripture from where we, you know yalama goddess has been taken from could you so, refer like islam how the muhammad has taken uh, reference uh, that he is god every community in india has references in them but they are in oral traditions they are they have just after printing they have just come, come out you can but ask puranas do talk about them so have you referred to any puranas we, for that matter we don't in india you know there are so many ideas of hinduism This yeah but, but still there are like four major yeah. sects you know shaivism vaishnavism shaktism smritism so out of that where would yeah. yours fall into See, if the goddess is Yalama, it, it comes to if if you categorize, it comes to goddess. Okay, so you will say it in uh, in Shakti. You would call it in Shakti tradition. We call we see see we don't want we don't relate to any type of mainstream uh, Vaishnavism, Shaivism, or Shaktism here. Okay, okay. Please understand all the Muslims in the world. In but India, don't, but how do you, brother brother Kumar? How would you then? Because you you started with Pramana, no. 
So when yeah, you yeah. don't have, so how would you then decipher whether it is correct or is it just made by a group of community or people? You know, because yeah, like, the very like, first question was that of Kramani. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like, like Islam, the Muhammad has the right to give all the uh, that that is God Allah. In our community, we have Allama, and we have uh, one uh, uh, ancestor. But was there any Allah. wahi, any revelation which came? Because when we talk about Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, we have an entire, you know, you we. It's not just randomly that we would like to have this particular person as our deity. So, is there any wahi, any any uh, kind of revelation which had come, which would say that Yalama would be the goddess? Any scripture which would, would which would reveal that to you? Anything? Because because I'm why I'm asking this to you is because the very first argument with which you had come was that of pramana, and you had said that yeah. let's you know with with that. So I'm asking you, what is the pramana for the entire basis in which you are doing the worshiping, on the basis of which you have the deity and the goddess? Yeah, like Muhammad has seen Allah, our community ancestor has seen Allah. Okay. Which yeah. ancestor? Yeah. So, uh, has seen? Kumar, I just uh, quickly... thousands of years before before Allah. The, the, our tradition is about 2000 finals, uh, according to my uh, calculation. Kumar, can is, I just ask uh, you a quick question? Yeah, yeah. Is, is Yelema um, an avatar of Vishnu? See, we do, uh, see, she is an image. She is uh, the god which uh, which I am I'm talking to is born is uh, revealed in south of India, in the part of Andhra. Okay, I'm asking: like, Is she yeah. is she an incarnation of Vishnu? We don't relate. That I told that we don't relate to all this Vishnu, Shiva, or Atma. Okay, is is another name of Yalama Renuka? In some parts they call it Renuka in okay, Telangana. So I've just looked at Wikipedia because I yeah. don't know Hinduism, and it yeah. says she is actually an incarnation of Vishnu. Do you do you reject that? I reject that. How? Okay. But how would you reject it on the basis of what pramana, uh, Brother Kumar? Because Brother Hashim had given you, uh, uh, given, and you you did agree to it that yeah, she is referred to as Renuka also in some parts. Yeah. So he was correct in his in his interpretation and understanding. So on what yeah. basis would you reject and you would say that you know you would not agree to it that she's not an avatar or an incarnation of Vishnu? Yeah, in our temples we only have that Yalama statue only. We don't have any Vishnu Shiva. So, yeah. Brother Kumar, uh, can I make a couple of comments here? So, I've been listening to this. Yeah. Uh, so, first of all, I think it's important to understand that we don't just appeal to, I mean, certainly in Islam. I, I, and I don't know how much, I mean, have you studied Islam at all? Or do you know about Islam? Uh, what do you know about Islam? Sorry, before you answer that question, just wanted to introduce. Yeah, I don't have any complaints on Islam. Any, 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 yeah, I don't have any complaints on Islam. Uh, I totally agree that Muhammad has seen Allah. No, no, no. It's not the seen Allah. No, no, no. I, I'm trying to understand. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying to understand. Yeah. Have you studied Islam at all? Yeah, I have a brief idea. There's their, their community. Yeah, their God is the Allah. Yeah, okay, so okay, so yeah. so so there's a couple of things you need to understand about Islam. First of all, yeah. Muslims, we never take anything without verifying its source and verifying its truth. Okay. This is one of the fundamental principles of Islam. Yeah, I have and one you, question. Yeah, you have finish, you, you, you yeah you me. your comedy people have not seen Allah. Now, we have seen. Uh, do you see Allah? No, no, not yet. But we will. Yeah, we are promised that we will okay, see yeah. the face of Allah. You have seen. Okay, okay, okay. You okay. can claim that. Yeah, yeah. Nobody has seen. But you are claiming. Right. Okay. That's okay. Okay. No, that, no, no. I'm not claiming. No, 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 no. You misunderstand. You misunderstand. Nobody in this life has seen the face of Allah. Has seen Allah, and nobody. Right. See, However, he should be seen. Uh, right. How so, can you see, tell, how, how can you tell there is Allah? If you have not seen, 
but you say but you're saying Radha Kumar have you seen your Yalama goddess Yalama have you seen her yeah we have statue of her our answer is not I'm not talking about the statue I'm not talking about the idol I'm saying have you seen her in real life like a living person talking to you conversing with you answering you living breathing person the way you are sitting in front of us have you seen her like that the goddess Yalama yeah we we have methods to see her Yes. Have you seen? There could be various methodologies. Have you yeah. seen? Because you were yeah. asking Brother Muhammad about it. Yeah. Have Have you seen her? No, no. So then, how can you ask Brother Muhammad that you know you you to totally disregard Allah on the basis of the argument that he's not seen and you have not seen your goddess? So that does uh, not yeah, make yeah. sense. See, 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 I am going to give a clarity on it. Any is, is Hindu can statue? see a god. Kumar, is this the statue of the Al Yalama? No, this is not the one. This is not the one. Okay, because this is what Wikipedia has as a statue. In Wikipedia, you can read anything. Well, why this don't you true. give us what they look yeah. like? Maybe you, yeah, your better friend, true. because my Google photo. you said that it's not uh, Vishnu uh, yeah. incarnation of Vishnu either. So, yeah, yeah. if I can ask a question, I think um, Kumar, yeah, yeah. Kumar, yeah. sorry, Kumar. yeah, yeah. Um, I would rather want to know about your argument about the Pramanas you came on. So, sorry, you Brother Mansur, uh, just wanted to introduce Brother Sam Stallon because he's been waiting. He's our guest as well. Oh, Alhamdulillah. He's joining us. Mashallah. Oh, yeah. he's, he's already on yeah, the screen. Yeah. Salaam alaikum, Sam. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Assalamu alaikum, Rahmatullahi Barakatuh. Alaikum, Salaam. Brother Hashim, Brother Mansur, Brother Muhammad. Alaikum, Salaam. Hello, Kumar, Brother. How are you? I'm sorry, my apologies. I couldn't join. Yes, saying no, yes, uh, uh, it's good to see you on the platform with uh, these beautiful people. And uh, my apology is that uh, I couldn't join you from the beginning mm -hmm. because uh, I no, had some okay. emergency, family emergency. Uh, still, right now I'm outside my home, so uh, I would not be able to turn on my camera. So uh, I just uh, join you to say assalamu alaikum and uh, just to have a chat with you for some time. And I have seen mm -hmm. and I have heard uh, uh, Brother Kumar talking about uh, Yalama. So ahead, Yalama yes. is also called as a Renika, right? No, no. In Telangana, we are calling Yalama. 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 Yeah. Yeah, he, uh, she is also called as Renuka, and Renuka is the mother of uh, Parshuram. Am I right? You are, no, 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 no. But Brother Kumar, totally you just different. agreed to it when Brother Hashim had said that, yes, she I told her, 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 her name. You agreed Renuka yeah. earlier. Yeah, right. Right, right. brother. That's right, fine. brother. She's she's Renuka. Yeah, she her her name is Renuka, and she's well, also known as Yalama. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Renuka is the mother of Pachra. Just a no, minute, brother. Totally. Please let me let me talk for well, one minute. We are totally and, okay with you, but we are totally legitimate. Right. So Renuka is Renuka is the mother of Parshuram, is one of the avatars of uh, Lord Vishnu. If we you read, if you read Purana, if see, I told you in the speak, beginning, brother? all all of you guys. We don't relate to Vishnu, Shaktism, or any Shaivism. No problem. No problem. Yeah. L let me let yeah. me complete, then you can you can come to a conclusion. Uh, yeah. What I'm saying is, if you if you read Puranas, uh, there is one incident where Parshurama has uh, chopped off the head of Renuka, his own mother. So uh, she's the she's the same goddesses you worship. So now you please tell us yeah. that uh, how yeah, a no goddess's head will be yeah. chopped off by the. I said Elama is not Renuka. I said Elama is not Renuka. We don't know about Renuka. Okay, you don't know about Renuka, yeah, so yeah. you better. Uh, yeah, is I'm, there? I'm going to hear all your position on Hinduism. Every community has home god. Every community has home god. Uh, you cannot relate with them Vaishnavism, Shaivism, or uh, any isms here. Especially but you have not seen Yalama. No, you have not seen Yalama. Yeah, we have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We see in Islam, you don't have any methodology to see Allah. In our communities, in, in Hinduism, there are methodologies to see goddess. We take some <coughs> dikshas. Uh, we uh, we go into deep meditations. Uh, if we cannot see, we can just feel her. Yeah. How do you know that you what you're feeling is her itself and not some th something else, not some evil spirit maybe trying to deciate you? How do you decide this? Is, it is evil. This is good. 
that's what i'm asking you because yeah, but, you yeah, came yeah, with pranam yeah, pra- pramanas no pramana so yeah, 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 what yeah, is yeah. the pramana we have again we, we started with pramana so what is the praman for you that what you feel in whatever ways I mean your meditation is your yalama goddess itself and you were not talking about feelings with brother mohammed you were asking very tangible existence of being able to see her so have you yeah. brother kumar seen her have you seen your your goddess yalama yeah i said i have not seen her we are in process so, so the matter it, ends there could be lot of methodology it, it, it does not end it does not end swati in islam you cannot see god you are, you don't have any methodologies to see allah in this life please But explain we, and elaborate about those methodologies the way through which you are able to see we have meditation we have deep meditation you can search soul search yeah in hinduism god is omnipresent omnipotent and omniscient Yeah, yeah, but what are the meditations? What are yeah. those meditations? What do you do in that? How do you yeah, know what you are feeling? Is that, yeah? As a Brahmin, you should know more than me. We have studied in the mathematics. So, so Kumar, I have a question. Yeah. Um, uh, it's a very simple one. Um, your God Yalama, is yeah. this? Is she independent to Vishnu and the other gods? Is she independent I, to those? I said, yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, so you believe that North India has a different set of gods to South India? Yeah. Uh, yes. Okay. In the East, there are so, so much. Uh, see, every in Hinduism is so old, and every every community has their own god. Okay, I so understand. So we cannot only Vishnu is a higher god. These are not that they are higher god. These are lower gods. We are we every community has their own god. Yeah, but what does that mean? So, can you can you help me understand what does that mean? Because you're using the word God, which is a very special word, yeah. and it has a very special meaning in 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 the way we understand it, right? So what? Let me tell you how we understand. So this word God for us means this is the most powerful, greatest being that could ever be. There is nothing greater. than this being okay which means if there is nothing greater there is by definition only one of this being there cannot be multiples of this being because you cannot have multiple all powerfuls and multiple all knowledgeables and multiple creators it 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 does because otherwise you would have chaos complete chaos so imagine the situation you have one all powerful god everything is under that powerful god's creation you you now have two powerful gods all powerful to decide what, what to do how do they decide do they yeah, do they like, fight each other like, do they what, what do they do what do they do yeah uh, i will tell with small analogy how the god system works in hinduism uh, like you have an electric current wire you put a bulb it will show energy light energy come will come in that if you put a current a fan there there will be some fan going wind energy energy is the same but the but if you want to tap light energy you can tap light energy you can take energy we are saying all are same but we are tapping different energies here right but they're not the same because the amount of power that light bulb draws is different to the amount of power that a fan draws is different to yeah. the amount of but the full want, power yeah. no 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 but the full power is in the wire yeah, yeah. yes right so yeah. what we say is the full power is with allah and allah does not give his power to anything else then how then how can you uh, then how can his power can be uh, seen but there is no need you see th- this is a misunderstanding you have This is this is where we say from Islam developed a tradition of misunderstanding, right? Okay, Because you say the, the origin- God is yeah, Allah is different from the mm-hmm. world. It's separate, yeah, right? Or? No, so uh, yeah, so what we say is that temporality and spatiality, time and space, was created by Allah. So therefore, yes. Allah is not in time or space by definition. Allah is where Allah always was before he created time and space. So therefore any tradition any philosophy 
which has a concept where the god that they talk about exists in time and space by definition is wrong okay. by definition is wrong because this is the this is the this is the fundamental philosophy that we have been that we have had revealed now now you say to me now let me let me sort of ask you if you believe god exists in time and space then you have a problem because now what you're saying is time and space governs god he's restricted by time he's restricted by or he or she's restricted by space this means time and space is greater or bigger than this god you see this is problematic logically uh this is a logical okay, problem uh, yeah i will tell you one logic so two truths can exist in uh, exit at one time i will tell you one example see um i this is night here in india this is light here in america the world is one one is covered in dark and one is covered in light so in hinduism god can exist in form and formless form formless in time or without time see in the, uh, when you see from our space you can see one part of the earth is with light and one part of the earth is dark if in india i say the whole world is da dark i am poor if in in america in such sense says the whole world is light that is also not true see two truths can exist simultaneously don't in you india, think that the kumar that the infinity yeah. of god then get reduced to a fin fin finiteness when you are reducing them to form because the form has a you know it's not infinite whereas when we talk about formless that's that's infinite so when you're saying these two can coexist together these two yeah. are absolutely you have example example yeah. water you have water you have water in the form it is liquid state in formless okay, so, state it is water state so brother in, kumar the, 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 yeah, yeah so i understand your analogy yeah, but you have both can exist a multiple truths can exist okay. in any yeah. state and any given no, no. time right so let me sort of so i understand yeah. look the, the challenge here is really simple the challenge is that you first of all you first of all have to agree what is the rational basis of your thinking okay yeah, and yeah, i think I you, said, I said, okay well, let, me, let, me finish, let me finish let me finish let me yeah. let me finish let me finish you see when you appeal to the idea of pramana you're yeah. appealing to the you're saying what is the what is the the test what is the yeah. the logic that we use right okay good you got that you got that you got that now the logic that i use and the logic that most of this world that i know of use is really simple one is there is this idea that contradictions cannot exist at the same time so you can't be black and white I, at the I same time example of light in the globe you can see one part of the earth is dark one part of the earth is light this okay but in in the part, in, okay okay let me finish let me finish yeah You see, first of all, we have to agree some things, which is you either agree contradictions are real, which means you cannot be both P and not P at the same time. Uh, you cannot be so black and and you can't be black and not black at the same time, right? That's a contradiction, right? Then we have to agree on a couple of other things, which is the idea that if we logically conclude. that certain things follow from certain premises you have to agree to the conclusion and the premises have to be correct now what you're saying here to me is you have a concept of god locally in your in your town yeah. in your village in your region yeah, what i i, I say I'm, every every person can access god without or with work no this is you said something different now because now you're saying everybody can access god This is different. Yeah. We can access yeah. God. We let me tell you why. Okay. This is different to what you said earlier. What you said earlier is we have a God. You're not yeah, saying you know, we access God. See, see, I said we have God. Yeah, Elama is the answer. God, our answer has seen. Okay, if you want to tap one energy, if you want to see Vishnu, we have some specific methodologies to follow. We can follow that. You can uh, see him. If you want to see Elama, there's specific methodologies. every god if you want to see any god in hinduism you have to follow some specific mantras 
specific uh, yogas to see him yeah like the karan the power is there you but, can but, tap okay but this is where we have a dis- this is where we have the disconnect look okay so so i think we're not going to get anywhere on this so brother come out thank you for joining us um we've enjoyed your questions we need to bring on other guests waiting for us you can join us on the next show thank you very much yeah i i will declare the, the this one every every one can access god without or without with or without any book well, we believe that in islam as well we believe islam which is the belief in the one true god is accessible to the, of all religions of all color sorry of all countries colors Uh, there is no racism in islam there is no separation in islam if you want to recognize god allah is accessible to you what we do not believe is that god is in your backyard or is in your room or is in your fireplace right we, we don't believe this okay, okay, so, okay. Uh, thank you thank you yeah. thank While you kumar yeah, yeah. is here uh, you know i think uh, just let me quickly ask you something kumar if yeah. if god told you yeah. that if you see me you will die Would you want to see God? Yeah. What about that? So you're willing to die to see him. Yeah, if I see anybody who wants to see God, he is in position, he is in a mental state that is uh, he has no wishes other than seeing God. No, right? no, I'm asking you if the God told you that as soon as you see me you will die. Then why would you want to see God if that was the case? Would God will tell you that I will uh, if I if I see you if I the God will... is telling you that if you see me you will die. Would you then want to see him? Would God will tell me that like like that? No, no. If he tells you, is a question for you. If God tells you that if you see me, you will die. This is like, I, like I, I, imagine no. imagine this. If somebody told you that if you open the door of this, for example, this nuclear reactor, yes, you will die. Yes. Would you open yeah. the door? I will not. Why? You, why you? Why you answered so quickly? Because it was a nuclear reactor, not God. But that now, is, if that, I tell you that, that God you know. told you, and you you trust God, right? So if God tells see, you something yes. like, "If you see yeah. me, you will die," then the question arises: Number one, why why was it so important for you to see God at the expense of your own life? Yeah. So your 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 wife doesn't matter. your children don't matter you just want to see him for the sake of it what was so important for you in that case to see god see you are asking two different questions two different contextual i know that nuclear 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 attack is bad it's bad for me i know god is good for me i can see it's is dying instantly good for you it's not but good. in both cases you will die brother even exactly. if you open the door yeah, even yeah, if you yeah, open yeah, the yeah, command uh, of god you can bully me yeah which god will tell me if we're i see you if i we're not bullying, bullying you. you i just asked a simple question we're asking yeah, a question yeah there are Sorry. two different questions you know one is bad nuclear is bad you know god is not bad you know no no it's not about good and bad the end result is death yeah but, yeah i'm asking which god will tell me to that, that i if i see him i will die Yeah, but the... why would you want to die that's a question can you please respond to that in a rational way why would you want to die just to see god why i'm i'm not going to die yeah no no god told you that you're going to die you trust god right if god tells you something will you believe it yeah you are asking yeah uh, in a different angle okay. that is not um, i'll tell you what why don't you think about it and then you can email us the email is in the bottom right corner okay yeah. Think about it. There's no need to. I'm not putting you on the spot or anything. Yeah. No, think about it. I'm also not putting you on the spot. Trust me. One year, one. Brother, I'll just, I'll just put across one, one, one point, one, one, one quick point. Uh, brother, yeah. see, in Quran, yeah. in Quran, Allah says, yeah, in Quran, Allah says that if there had been two gods, then there would be chaos in the skies. So there cannot be two gods. Otherwise, they would fight. The same example we can see in Puranas that Brahma fought with uh, Shiva and Shiva fought with Krishna. and brahma fought with vishnu so there are multiple uh, cases we can find that two gods are fighting each other and degrading each other in puranas so this is logically we can understand that there they, there is only possibility of one god and bhagavad gita also says you are talking about the yalama it's a, she she uh, you believe that she is a goddess but she is a deity not the god and in uh, bhagavad gita uh, uh, chapter number 7 verse number 20 it clearly says that uh those who those who uh 
those whose intelligence has been uh, stolen by the materialistic desires they worship demigods like devi and devtas so yalama is a devi not the god so krishna is warning you those who worship the demigods devi and devtas they will be thrown in the hell narka i told so you, you need to realize that there i told you beginning we don't start with we are in, we have intelligence god we don't start with vishnu shaivism or any shaktism doesn't matter doesn't matter yeah. brother you you just need to you just need to realize that you are you are worshiping something which is uh, which cannot benefit you and which is which uh, uh, as i said that uh, she is a renuka and uh, uh, she is the mother of uh, parshuram and parshuram once uh, chopped off her uh, his own mother's head which you worship so how can she uh, be yeah. she be all powerful yeah you went tomorrow i will write a book on something my renuka uh, that uh, scripture and say if anybody else uh, worships except renuka uh, elamma he will die or uh, this is sin it's written in your puranas brother it's it's written in your puranas not in a separate book written by me or any random guy yeah yeah nobody so brother, uh, this, this god is bad this god is bad you should not worship that any it's no, not, no it's not about bad it's not no brother it's not about bad the god is all powerful the god is all knowing the god is all mighty but here what you're worshiping is not almighty she has been killed once by parshuram said, so how I can said, the god I, yeah i said we are uh, if you think of a wire if you put a bulb there this is elama then i just say kumar your god has been killed thank, thank you brother and you have been worshiping a killed god killed god which god uh, if you if you talk about hinduism yeah yeah he was in uh, human form yeah the dharma supply to him rules apply to him when he come to right. okay form. thank you very much okay, uh, brother thank Mar, you thank uh, you so much brother. hopefully you'll join us again in our future uh, yeah, streams yeah, but uh, because we are running on limited time here so we have to give yeah. other people who have been waiting in the queue okay yeah. but thank you very much for your input yeah 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 everybody have can take care other one so yeah. those on the back stream if you want to switch off the cameras those that we've seen it's fine you can switch it off before we bring you on uh, for those that haven't switched them on please switch on your cameras yeah okay so got, uh, and yeah, another like thing we have a policy time. as well just in case hello if you are under 18 yeah, we second. do not bring you onto the channel okay we only allow people who are over 18 so if you are definitely over 18 you can come on if you're not we have a policy of not bringing people under 18 on okay thank you right ajay how are you doing hello sam hello sam how are you i'm very well yeah, yeah brother where are you well. calling from I'm calling from India. Okay. Um. And what's your question? Yeah. Whom is it for? I want to ask Swati that she says she left Hinduism. Then yeah. she must have read about paganism also. Say again. The entire That's Hindu what... Hindu religion has paganism within it inbuilt, brother Ajay. Yes, yes, yes. That's yeah. your bi- most basic misconception. I can tell okay. you how. Kindly enlighten me then. In pa- Yes, yes. In paganism, they have first of all they have no scripture, okay. And second is they consider these statues and any sculpture or idol as god. They can say that this is god, okay. And in Hinduism, we have one Brahm that is timeless, spaceless, and exists independently, independent of any element and any you can say created universe. And these things, Brahma, Vishnu, Mahesh. these are not separate gods like the, it it has been termed we, we call them devi and devtas so when when i say like there is someone in there is a image of shiv shiv in front of me i don't say that this is shiv ji i am saying that this is only his representation like i want to fix my mind i can say that this is image of shiv okay so this is the this is reverse uh, paganism brother, paganism is with, called I get, poly- i get that i get that i get that i just yes. want to ask you would that mean that you are saying that yes. that you know the the image of shiv or maybe vishnu or any other mm-hmm. deity is being used as mm-hmm. a point of focus to focus on that eternal you are saying brahman is the eternal one yes, just yes. to focus yes. on that you need some you you need a point of focus so which means that yes. their existence 
uh they mm-hmm. that means that they do not have an existence of their own in that sense the, so many temples have been built where we go we worship them we, the entire stories which have been there which are associated with yes, them yes. which are mentioned in puranas so do you say that all of that is hoax mm-hmm. and it's basically it's, just it's used a, as a focus a, point just a, let's take example of yalama uh yeah, let's take example yeah. of yalama yeah so rathor bhai okay. do you do you believe in so yalama maybe she can, she may be when any manifestation but i haven't heard much can it she may be a focus say. point no, because we maybe. just need so a focus point sure. no, you saying maybe that means you're not sure we will in that you can't say any created and you will, you will create any new any deity or devta i don't believe in that i am i believe only which is written in scripture and now so which which scripture do you put your faith in from so, the first of all of where the brahma vishnu and shiv exist second which scripture which specific scripture Hello? do you put your faith in can you hear me and then vedas and now now swati has said that if brahma and vishnu does not exist why why there are temples they exist and even in upanishad tells us that brahma is nothing but a creative power his form is not like normal human form you can say that brahma is made of any human hands or and anything yeah brahma is got created like out brahma of is always in meditation uh, yeah yeah brother brother What? ajay i'm just asking that you were saying that you were helping me guiding mm-hmm. me and you were saying that uh, yes. they are used as a as a point of focus you were saying that yeah we do have a conception of that one god you were saying brahman yes. and these manifestations which mm-hmm. are there or the avatars which are there brahma vishnu and mahesh they are used as a focus point to be mm-hmm. able to concentrate on that right that's what you have been saying to be able to concentrate yes. on that brahma so but but that's what i'm asking so if we have can we can we not use these mm-hmm. as a or if that they are just working as a tool as a focus point can i not i can take a flower as a focus point and that can be used to concentrate on brahma why would then i use only brahma vishnu and mahesh why would not anything else look we have two ways you can you can, you should, you may not use any image you can you can form nirguna niragar philosophy yeah okay. i know about nirguna niragar you cannot you don't have to yeah, focus yeah, yeah. on anything yes, yes. that's another yes, thing yes 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 i know about that nirguna niragar and second is nirguna sagun you can focus in on date on devta okay so now krishna in arjun ask krishna and geeta that which is superior in from both of, both of these then he says that nirgun nirgun form is for yogis those who are remain in meditation and deep absorbed states okay they don't have to focus on anything because they have reached that level where they have seen or i can't i can't say seen they have taken seen the darshan of brahm okay and second is for lower people like if you have haven't progressed any i get it. on any so path like that mean, brother, so you can focus on that yeah so that would mean so you are saying mm. so yeah i get that that's very correctly mentioned as you have said in uh, that yeah this is for people who may not be able yeah. to focus so therefore they would use this as an aid as a tool so that and so that means that you want to yes. somewhere bring in this idea that there is actually there is one formless god even in hinduism and these deities for yes. example yes, yes. they are just so you're saying these are just used as tools just aids so that means do they have an existence of their own or not that's what i'm asking that would brahma vishnu mahesh would they have yes. any existence would these mm-hmm. deities have what purpose would they serve other than just being used as a tool to be able to focus because okay. ultimate is the brahman so if we have to focus on that why would you be using brahma vishnu mahesh are, are not okay not intermediate brahma vishnu mahesh are not separate you can't say brahma exists separately and they are independent brahma vishnu mahesh are just manifest beyond time and space okay so brahma vishnu mahesh they have loks brahma lok vishnu lok and shiv lok Okay. We are having a bit difficulty listening to you, Ajay. We are, you're, you're breaking off as you speak. Um, is it possible for you to fix your mic? 
Yeah, I think your 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 wire is touching something. It it makes this um, sound, you know, this cracking sound sound. So just just repeat that again what you just said at the end. Yes, I'm saying Brahma Vishnu Mesh are just manifestations of one. But okay, they so would fight problem. with each other, as Sam Stalin had said. You can't see Brahma. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Ajib, so, Ajib, so, Ajib Sister Rattu. Swati, I yeah. think yeah. what she mentioned mm -hmm. earlier about you when you, you know when you say Brahman, who is wh whom you do you worship him as Nirguna or Saguna, with form or without form? Come again. Do you worship? your god as nirguna Hello? with form or saguna without form or is it the other way around mm -hmm. nirguna it's the other way yeah. Yeah, it's nirguna the other is without way. form do you worship your god as without form or with form did, you, did you understand the question beyond time space and matter yeah, that wasn't my question yes do you, you are asking your god do i worship with form? do i worship Okay. Yeah, you you obviously worship God, right? Hello? Now, do you worship when you worship? Do you worship him with a form or without a form? Brother, I think I, the voice is I, not reaching. When I do meditation, I worship without uh, form. Rathor, Rathor, Ajay, Ajay, are you able to hear Brother Hashim? Hello? I think there's a delay Rathor, why, Are you able to hear Brother Hashim? Yeah, Brother Sam, I think there's a delay on the line. So let's give him a moment yes, to respond. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So, you know, when you say that there are certain people who worship Brahmin as Nirguna without a form, and certain people worship him as Saguna mm -hmm. with form. Okay? With, now, when, yes, when you say without form. form, does this, does this um, God have qualities? Does he have attributes? Yes, he have attributes, but you can't compare with this world. Uh, I'm not asking you to His compare. Attributes. Just asking: Does he, does this Nirguna form of God, does he have attributes? Mm -hmm. Okay, so give me one of his attributes. Oh. No, you, I can't say. You, do you his, know the attributes, or you don't? Look, know? his attributes, he's beyond time and space, so I can't. So I can't I'm comprehend. Not asking, I'm not asking you. you I can't he, say which attributes. No, no. Brother, you know, brother, in the last thing you have given the attribute. I need to know his attributes. For example, if I told you yes, a triangle, attributes. what comes to your mind? Mm -hmm. What comes to your mind? A triangle, I'm saying. Triangle, a three, shape, a triangle. three lines, Good. close. So that is the yes, attribute, the three-sided object, mm -hmm. which comes to your mind, Okay. has got attributes. Mm -hmm. So whenever you, whenever you talk about yeah. any object out there, yes? Whether it is God or mm. whether it is something else, yes. it always has certain attributes which define it. Mm -hmm. You understand? When you're telling me that Brahman has okay. no attributes and no form, yes, yes. then you're talking about nothing. Because the mm -hmm. only thing which we can say has no form or no attributes is nothing. Mm -hmm. Is your God nothing? Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. I am... No, I am saying Brahm is all powerful. This is only his attribute that he is all powerful and beyond time and space. The other attributes, creation, creating power, destroying power, maintaining power, that exists in time and space. Okay, I'm not so saying Brahm, say all nothing powerful, exists out there. Then so there is no one should be there. Yeah, Ajay, mm -hmm. when you say all powerful, okay, give me one thing yes. that your God has done to show his power. Show me anything. Hmm. I'm talking about the one without the form, not the trimorph, which is a incarn, uh, which is the manifestation. Hello, your show, me, show me one thing that Brahman has done, which shows that he's all powerful. Which all powerful? This world is yeah. the, demonstrate to me that he's you can all see this world. He has created this. I thought I thought Brahman created. Yes, he has the created world. this. Sorry, Brahma created the world, not Brahman. Who created the world? Brahman. Brahman by Brahma? his power. Right. Samba, you want to come in here because I'm pretty sure right. that Brahm, he's Brahm, an impersonal Brahm, god. Said yeah, exactly, exactly. You're right, Hashim, brother. Uh, the Brahma, the Brahma is the creator of this universe, not the Brahman. Yes. 
so uh, brother hashim uh, question yes, was I'm very specific he, he asked you he asked you that uh, to show one uh, specific attribute what he has done to this world the brahman yeah. does he even interact with the world does brahman okay. interact at all he yes he inter- interacts by sending guidance through various avatars and vedas and other scriptures but like revelations so what does he do sorry he sends avatars he sends the avatars guidance are, by the medium the of avatars, avatars and revelations like primordial the avatars you're talking about is of brahma vishnu and shiva not brahma yes yes the avatars no, no, no. that you are not getting about, my point in gita it is okay i'll tell in you what gita, i'll bring i'll bring in sg krishna says i am i'm great much better than you uh sg is also a hindu i think he he joined us previously yeah so, yeah yeah uh, how are you doing sg you all right yeah yeah i'm badiya ekdam fine good 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 to hear that you did you understand my question sg uh i understood that you asked like uh, what okay, are the so qualities of the brahman let me just summarize right? the question again well, well before that does sorry sorry before that yeah, does yeah. sg agree with rj's world view do they have the same world view i'm not sure uh, uh in the sense what like uh, he actually uh, his i mean his foundation is not that clear with advaita that's why uh, i okay. don't think he has that foundation that many foundations so we inshallah mohammed will answer that question shortly once we, he answers this question so as you here's a summary mm-hmm. the question is like this brahman yeah. has manifestations mm-hmm. as uh, in the trimurti is that right the brahma vishnu and shiva uh would you like the answer from advaita advaita vedanta point of what view what do you what do you follow okay let's say let's go with advaita because ajay no, no, ajay was saying what do you follow? not let's go you it's what about you your follow? personal yeah your yeah. personal i i follow advaita i i follow, I, I follow advaita i must okay ajay do you follow advaita no, brother, 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 brother jasan le jasan le i'm sorry i'm sorry uh, brother hashim i just need to take a leave uh, because uh, you know where i am right now yes, hello yes, so i'm saying okay. sam 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 and i'm i'm very sam by wait Wait here. I just no, want to talk with you. No, he has to go. He has to first. I'm, I'm, I'm really sorry, brother. I could not yeah, talk exactly. to you this time, brother. Right now, I'm uh, in hospital. Just yeah. to say. Yeah. Okay. Okay, brother. So oh, okay. Yeah, he's he's oh, got okay. a family okay. emergency, so he yeah. needs to go. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Okay. 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 Thank you. Oh, Thank you so much, brother. Thank you, brother Hashim. Thank you, brother Mansoor and Muhammad and Sister yes. Swati. And Zakala uh, for joining. Zakala Khan. Thank you so much. May Allah bless you. Thank 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 Hello, uh, your voice yes, is Rajiv. We can hear you. Can you hear me? Which which tradition do you follow? Do you follow Astika yes, yes. Advaita I, yes, tradition yes, no. or yes, no, fine, no. Okay. I follow Shakti. Did you, did you understand the question? Shakti. He follows Shakti. Is he's cutting off? I mean, is his? Yeah, RJ, your connection is really really bad. Yeah. I'm afraid. If you okay, want to anyway, drop and come SG, back in, we, if you want to drop SG, and come back fine. in, we'll go, see if you go on. Can. Give your give your interpretation yeah, of go ahead, SG. The, yes. the what do you say? The hierarchy of gods in Hinduism. There is no uh, hierarchy of gods. See, there is one ultimate truth that is Brahman, and uh, that's okay. it. No, that is according to the uh, Advaita. Okay. So, what about the the Trimurti? What are they? trimurti where have you i mean see the thing is the trimurti are nothing but uh, see in the uh, gita krishna actually explains there is a verse in the gita where krishna is saying that whichever form a devotee seeks to worship i take that form right so whichever form let's say you want to worship a uh, shiva then obviously brahman will take the form of shiva if you want to worship in the form of brother is if, if, if i would want to if i would want to for example it could be any mm-hmm. form if i would probably you know uh, with all due respect if i would want to worship in form of a rabbit so would that also uh, uh, hold true then in that case any form because you're saying any form could it be so for no, example no. i could take no, yeah i could take you, any form i could like anything. rabbit he's saying about among the he's among the 
no 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 he says no the devtas and any avatars he have to take from not who any side who who decide okay, I'm, I'm which them yes but brother can i can i just uh, can i can i just uh, say answer this okay. uh, if you don't mind okay yeah. see when it, when you say rabbit if you do have the capability to look god inside a rabbit in the rabbit form then go on the god will take that form also see god is not limited to only taking the human body right yeah which is, is why i am seeing unlimited... that's why yeah that's why sg brother yeah. that we see that there have been you know we worship we see in hinduism that we worship tree we worship we could worship sun but don't you think these are no, all no. creations and these are not the cre you know there is a differentiation which is there between creator and the creation you cannot uh, say that the creator gets down to the level of creation and you start worshiping creation don't you see a flaw okay, I... flaw in that premise and listen to very uh, interesting point which you made you say that creation and creation uh, creator is different uh, see if you see in the normal lives let's say you you have been created from your mother and father are you completely separated from your mother and father of course i'm different from them i can't be my own oh, mother so you do not you 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 do not share any similarity with your mother is that there is a saying? difference between similarity and becoming that there mm. is a difference between that mm. i can't become my own mother no i cannot become my own mother mm. so you when you are talking mm. about worshiping you are saying Look, any yeah. form that we want the go, mm. the supreme the creator would take that form and you can start worshiping that form so i have a problem where we are saying that Look, there is no differentiation between the creator and the creation that's what i'm saying and when you say that you yeah. put it down to the level I, I of creation say. you are in fact you are in fact you know delimiting the entire characteristic and attribute of the creator into creation don't you think that the infinity gets reduced to finitism when you reduce it to a form let no the thing is what you not understand okay, otherwise uh, just wait for one say let let me take it let, let just let let me just take uh, but in the form of devotion in in a love okay you want to go go on then i will stay here yeah, okay i agree I think that it's, yeah uh, yeah it's love, form of devotion is now yeah devotion is one of the ways through which bhagavad gita would say you can reach through devotion you can reach through action mm. you can reach the god through knowledge so bhakti yoga is what uh, uh, brother ajay is talking about that through devotion mm. but that's what i'm saying yes through devotion but there has to be something which is which is eternal something which is true with the devotion you can't change that truth into something else no so just because of my devotion i cannot change the creator a, into a creation brahm will come in Yeah, Ajay, go on. Hello. No, I'm telling. Now, yeah. it it doesn't mean that Brahm from his. Uh, can I answer? Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. Just answer me. Go on. Doesn't go mean ahead. that Brahm from that outer time and space matter. He will come in down the rabbit. He is just manifesting. He by his his will, I can say he can manifest. He can show you, and that's not possible without without the Brahm Gyan. Brahm Gyan is a is a highest level of meditation, or you can say where you can see God in every particle. it doesn't mean that god god will descend to that particle and it's not called reducing it's like manifestation in different okay sc you want so, to come in here it it's not declining or uh, i want to come in but let uh, because the he is actually talking between that's why i want to him to answer first then i will say yeah uh, ajay he... brother is saying that it's not been reduced it's not been reduced and it's just that you are able to see uh, you know the yes. attribute of that into uh, into that creation which so i can then that means i can see the attribute of that uh, what what is the attribute which you are saying that we can see what is what exactly is the attribute of that brahman uh, the the ultimate eternal supreme creator which attribute is it which is coming into the creation Be- can you tell me which attribute is is it okay. which i'm able to see yeah, in the yeah, creation yeah, for example question. yeah for example if i want to see that in you brother rajesh if i want to see the attribute of the eternal in you yeah, out yeah. of my devotion then which attribute of that eternal will will yeah. fall into you for which i can then start and then should i then okay. start worshiping you or should i worship the eternal one who no, no, should no, no, i worship no. then Look, listen. Okay. Answer the question. Here, I'm not saying that if you see God in me, you should worship me. 
I'm yes, I am saying that if this is Brahmagyan in which the learned sages, the highest level of those sages who have reached highest level, they have they have gone into that deep state of meditation that they can see God in every particle. They don't worship every particle. It doesn't mean that they, they see a God in tree that they should worship a tree. They, yeah, yeah. I the thing I think, brother, actually, you're very correct when you're mentioning outside. it. Your intent is very correct, yes. and that's what Quran also says that everything which is there around us has been the creation of Allah. So, so you know, worship the Allah who has created everything. So, the way when you are saying, you know, that we can see the attribute, you're using particularly, I think, the wrong word here, attribute. Maybe it's maybe mm-hmm. you can say that, yeah, uh, the the eternal supreme. You can see the design has, in everything. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah that design is, is there in everything. But attribute is very different from design. Attribute exactly. is different. Design is different. And I'm asking, which attribute look, is look, it? I'm and saying, you're saying that you yogis are able to see that. that. that is good. Okay. So again, we, yes, we see, didn't catch that. I'm not saying through the eyes. That's a Brahmagyan, inner eyes, inner consciousness, which is mentioned in even Guru Granth Sahib and any, many other Hindu scriptures also. You you can see very correct, very correct, very correct. Very correct, very correct. I get that. Okay. I get that. With the divine eyes, we are able to with even closed eyes, we are able. I am asking you, what exactly is it? Yes, yes. Uh, you know, Quran also says that you see hmm. everything is creation what of that exactly Allah. It is. Yeah. So what you are saying? Are you saying this okay, that with the yogis we can say a term to... is called Brahma Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brahma Gyan. So that means that yogi, that okay. yogi stage. Is where you are able to see that everything has been created. Yes. The dissertion which I am making, yeah, yeah. So that then we are on the same ground. If you are saying everything mm-hmm. is a creation of that supreme, that's that's correct. Yes. Which is what Quran also mentions. But when we say that the everything has the attribute of it, that's very different because then you start worshiping. No, 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 and no. You are, yeah, and no, you no, agree no. that we are not worshiping. You are saying that you would not worship. That's what you are saying. Okay, uh, guys, just one second. I'll I will hear sorry. from SG Ajay. One second, SG. What, what do you think of that conversation? Okay. Uh, Actually, the thing with the creation and creator, uh, I wanted to reply to that. Uh, see Swati, the thing is, uh, in the Advaita tradition, we say that Brahma Satya Jagat Mithya, Jiva Brahma Yuvan Atra, that whatever you see around you, all is nothing but Brahman alone, right? The creation is nothing but an illusion created, I mean, in the sense like, let's say when you see a dream, right? When you sleep, you see a dream. In the dream, you see roads, different buildings, different people, you meet with different people. You see vehicles and all. What are these? Ultimately, these are nothing but an illusion. No, in uh, a dream, play, which is being created with mind, yeah. right? So, see, we yeah. Are so, about just, dream. We are talking about reality. Do you think? Do you think no, you see, exist or you don't exist? Let's say you are no, not in let's the, say. inside a dream. It's a, it's a no, no. I'm answering. Question. No, because because you are asking no, you, the question you of reality. You mentioned dream and you mentioned illusion. We are not talking about non-reality. We are talking mm. about reality. Do you believe in reality or you don't? Now, the reality which you are saying now, right now, in which we are sitting now, I and you are talking right now. That is what your reality. That is what I'm answering. Just listen. Just listen for 30 seconds. You will understand. Let's say you are inside a dream. A sage comes up to you and says to you, and you are washing your car, let's say, let's suppose, in a dream. And a sage comes up to you and says that, oh, son, this is nothing but an illusion. Do not take this world as seriously. And then you go on saying, or oh, do you think this is reality or not? Is is this not reality to sage? What do you think? Uh, will you be right or wrong? I asked you about reality. You went back into the dream. I don't know why. In the dream also, if a sage comes to you and says, this is illusion, you My will friend, say the same dream, thing. Is I can't even fly in a dream. In reality, I cannot fly. So let's get back to the real world and answer this question. Do you exist in the, in a real world or you don't? When you inside a dream, do you think that is you always Why think it is a real Why do you ask a counter thing? question when I'm asking you a simple question? Just answer the because question, don't see, ask a counter question. Because, Keep it simple, as you, you came before as well, and you did the same hmm. thing. Every time we ask you a question, you give us a counter question. So once again, we do not, just answer. From the point of Advaita, this yeah, world is not real. Answer me from the point right. of Advaita. It doesn't matter. Okay, Okay. if the okay. world is not this, real, uh, SG brother, where would you place the theory of karma then here? The actions that we we perform, uh, if they, it's all hmm. illusion, 
that means that i can perform any action i can murder i can be rude you know anything could be done because it's all illusion would that hold true no. then karma because karma only applies to your uh, listen to me yeah uh, ma'am listen to me uh, i understand your question what you say see karma as i said you karma only applies till you are to till you have a body till you have a body till then karma exist once you are away but from the body but isn't the body, the body also not real is, is that isn't real the body is the body real, real or is that an illusion yeah. as well because everything is illusion includes include the that's why, the body that's why i'm saying na karma being illusion until you are inside a human body it will act. can i answer because both are illusion it's like saying but uh, once you are just bro just wait just wait just one second wait one second uh, sorry once you are attaining to enlightenment once you give up this body be it female male whatever it is once you attain to the state of atma then there is no karma for you but till you are wearing this cloth of human or a body karma will exist that's it how would you place the entire theory of reincarnation into this into the into the into this entire philosophy till you have karma karma acts acts as a impetus of reincarnation till you have a baggage of karma till you have a body you have karma right till you have not attained the enlightenment you have a body if you have a body you have a karma that will keep compelling you towards your next birth once you away uh, you but have attained the enlightenment but once i have died once i have died i have left the body then why should the karma fall on me afterwards because you said that once you become atman then nothing it's the, then the karma of the body would not fall on you and also i would like to ask you brother sg that this entire philosophical argument that we are doing of advait philosophy yeah. how has it really yeah. helped you in your real life in your day to day practices you know the way you conduct yourself uh, uh, the way you interact with people uh, how does it how does it help you out Uh, when you ask me this question how does it help you i want to see the standard i mean what in what basis are you saying like how does it how does islam help you in shaping your life because it has an entire it has entire way of how you conduct yourself it gives you an entire manual uh, of how you behave your voice got broke uh, yeah your voice was not audible can you repeat you i repeat uh, answer, again please. it says hmm. the if you read quran it you it gives you the entire ma- it's like an entire manual of how should you conduct yourself right from the smallest of the things to the biggest of the things have been answered so i'm asking you the way in which you have explained about this entire thing that the world is an illusion everything is an illusion how this illusion is helping you in your day to day life because these are very good philosophical ideas which are there but i want to see the empirical practice of it how is it helping you in your day to day life is, what is the manual which the, is being given to you by this and also this has been see. given by shankara acharya and uh, there is another thing which is refuting within hinduism this entire idea which is about dwait dualism so then how would you respond to them because within the ambit of hinduism you have another idea altogether within the ambit of hinduism we have sankhya we have nyay you know we have mimamsa so 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 how how would you discern one from the other why how would you choose and pick one from the other what is it that okay, makes you get uh, to advaita have, and not the other i have written your questions but maybe because you have asked so many questions maybe i may forget it you just repeat it i will i uh, would just uh, yeah, uh, uh, is just rather i would just like to reflect i would want you not to answer me because it becomes like a philosophical debate i would like you to reflect upon these questions which you have written maybe and in the next stream probably you can join and you can you can tell how is it actually helping you because otherwise it just comes to a debatable you know the thing where we just cross okay, count just, just, counter and argue about okay. it Okay, I understood. I understood. Just, just listen. See, the very thing uh, what she said is that uh, Shang, uh, Shankar Acharya found Advaita. That's wrong. Uh, Shankar Acharya actually learned Advaita from his own uh, guru, Gaurapada Acharya. Right. So I guess you do not know that. Yeah, but so that again is a human being. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's another human. No, that's another. But you human. do not know source, right? But but you do not know the source, right? Where did Gaurapada learn from? Learned it from. So let's not so do what say is the like source. That. Yeah, but S T S T S T. Let me stop here. So. Yeah. What you uh, this is this is a technicality that is ir- why should I trust any source if you cannot show that it is trustworthy? That is what we're saying. So trust, so it doesn't matter who Shankaracharya learned from. Right. Yeah. So there we go. Because you said all of this is illusion, which means there is no truth. So it doesn't matter who learned from who. None of this matters. 
It's all an illusion. No, no, no. You, if it's no, all no, an it's illusion, illusion. Then, then, then it doesn't matter. The books no, no, are illusion, no, no. the gurus it's, are illusion. It's not like illusion. It's like... Souls is illusion. Everything is illusion. No, no, no. Can I, can I answer you uh, before you just keep uh, uh, implying something? Can I just answer you guys? Like, no. Go ahead. Which yeah, part are you answering? Okay, yeah, thank you. Uh, Muhammad, uh, Muhammad Bhai, uh, listen to me. Uh, when you say the scriptures are not trustworthy, can you just say me why do you think it is not trustworthy? That I won't understand. Because, you, okay, it's to be trustworthy. You have to establish that they come from a source that is trustworthy. In order to establish that okay. something comes from a source that is trustworthy, you have to first of all validate that source. So what my first question would be, how do you validate where your Vedas, because in, in your tradition, in the Vedanta tradition, you accept the Vedas as being, as being um, um, the underpinning uh, philosophy. So yeah, actually, you have to brother, first... Uh, before, before we validate it, SG, what is the source of Vedas? Right, exactly. So what's the source and how do you validate that it actually came from a yeah. source that is worth before, following? Before that, just answer the most basic question also, without Vedas asking a counter question. What hmm. is the source of the Vedas? See, the Vedas were actually... What uh, is the source of Vedas? See, I'll just read, bro. Uh, yeah. Ajay, yeah, asking yeah, SG, yeah, Ajay, Ajay, SG comes from a different tradition to you. So yeah. we're asking SG's position, not yours. Thank you, SG. Go ahead. Okay, thanks. Uh, see, the in the Vedas, yeah, sure. Uh, see, uh, when you say the Vedas, Veda, let me just give you a context before answering. Whether Otherwise, you would understand this, where it comes from. Vedas has two parts. One is... Uh, Jnanakanda. Another thing is, uh, ka, I think most probably I am forgetting Karmakanda. Sorry, yeah, two parts Karmakanda and the Jnanakanda. Jnanakanda means philosophy, a section which consists of philosophy of Hindu. That is the basis Upanishad, Brahma Sutra, and all. And the Jnana, uh, Karmakanda, which means uh, a section which relates to the worldly affairs. Now, when you say, uh, where does it inspire from? Vedas just means knowledge. As far as Jnanakanda is concerned, the philosophical knowledge, Krishna says in the Gita that everything is given by me. So the source is God only. The Jnanakanda is source. But as far as Karmakanda is concerned, the section which consists of worldly affairs. But Krishna died Krishna no, in, the... in Dwapar you Krishna died. Then how could how could it come from Krishna? Who himself no, took no, human form and then... So, 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 no, no. Just one second. The so, is... SG, you're saying it comes from God. Is that, is that right? And the is, is, philosophical part absolutely is. Is it, is it an part, inspiration Yankan from God or is it just, is it like a book form in God? What is it? Uh, Krishna says, I have given this uh, knowledge since the beginning. So he has given that. Uh, it comes from the God. How? Way. You, you heard of the form? Sapta Rishi? What? The seven Rishis. You know the Sapta Rishi? Uh, Sapta Rishi is a thing of uh, a Shaiva tradition. Uh, they believe in that. Okay. So but do, you, Vaita, do you reject it yeah. or do you accept that? Uh, we do not know. We do not comment on that. Maybe, maybe not. We do not uh, necessarily have any interest in that thing. Okay. When you say you don't have interest, means you don't believe it, right? So the, are they wrong? Uh, as I see, 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 there can be anything. Like I, it may be or may not be. It doesn't matter to our philosophy. Advice. No, it does matter because so the source is the source Why? is. Ext Look, if one one sect of Hinduism is telling me that the source is like the the Sapta Rishi, the seven Rishis, yes, mm -hmm. who to be honest are not even human. You know that. They live for millions of years. So they're not human, definitely. I, I see. See, no, no, hear, uh, hear me out, hear me out. As far as I'm concerned, as far as I'm concerned, the Advaita Vedanta, which which is what you uh, believe in, are actually a minority mm -hmm. in the Hinduism. Okay, you may be a less than 1%. The 99%, they believe in Bhakti, you know, they believe in this different forms, you know, like the way the guy who came earlier, he believed in Renuka, you know, all this. So 99% of them, they have gods and goddesses that they believe in exist. Okay. Can you, I, on the other uh, can hand, I answer are you? a minority. Can I just answer you? Yeah, sure. Oh, okay, fine. Yeah. See, the moment you're saying that Hinduism, you are minority or not, the first thing is Hinduism and the name Hinduism, I reject. Hinduism is a name given by the Persians when they came into India. When they crossed the river Sindhu, they yeah, called yeah, us. No need to get technical. It. Come on, we but, know what Hinduism so, is. So, we know. Yeah, okay, so, so, so we are so so the thing is, see, Sanatan yeah. Dharma. Is that okay? No, no, no. Sir. See, listen to me first. The thing is, in this culture here in India, I'm saying about the Indian subcontinent, there were different 
you can see different faiths different religions advaita shaiva uh, shakti and all now versions came and they together called together all of them as hinduism it is just like going to arab and then calling islam christianity and judaism as together i just told you let's call it sanatan dharma no problem it's semantics i'm advaita that's it my religion okay, so is advaita you are a minority do you agree minority in what amongst the sanatan dharma i am advaita i have said you that already i didn't ask you what you were i said you are a minority amongst the sanatan dharma do you agree or disagree where is it where, where is no no i do not agree with you so where is the word sanatan dharma present in the scripture when you, can you just See, show me the bhagavad gita this guy. he never answers a question straight yeah and he is always... advait is advait i said you know another religion altogether is it another religion alt is does exactly, it not fall yeah. within the he purview of hinduism asking. And he does exactly. this every time. Hinduism has no meaning. Swati, Hinduism has okay, no meaning. Okay, okay, I get. I okay, okay, okay. S G brother, right? if you would fill a form, mm. what would you write? Would you write when in in the column of religion? Would you write Hinduism or would you write Advait? I'm just. It, it's a common uh, sense. We all know that it Swati, falls. He knows exactly what I'm asking. Oh, you, yeah. He wants to. Uh, he is, wants to evade the question by this counter questions. He does this all the time, and that's the reason Ashi, I don't. To be honest, I don't Ashi, like listen. coming and wasting time on the stream. When somebody asks so you a direct is, question, they expect a direct answer. That is, that is. I'm answering discussion. you. I'm. So I'm not agreeing with you. Do you consider? You. Do you consider the Advaita Vedanta a minority mm. amongst the Sanatan Dharma? Uh, no, I I do not even consider the word Sanatan Dharma. So no. Okay, thank you very much for your time, brother. Hello, can I answer now? Yeah, go on. Ajay. Can I uh, ask can Islam? I answer, Islam? There are lots I of other people waiting. Let's see. So, if you're not going to answer straight away, you know, it's no, no use to be honest. I've answered you. I do not take Sanatan Dharma. I'm saying I'm. You said you don't even Dharma. believe in Sanatan Dharma. So, which term do you want to use for your religion? Advaita. I said you. I am Advaita. Advaita is okay. not a religion. Okay. Advaita what, is a. What is the okay? The origin of Advaita. is based on vedanta is based on is based on vedas and vedas as far as we concerned actually encompass a whole host of traditions so are you now saying that you have carved out for yourself a special tradition and that's the only one that's the real one and everything else is false no 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 uh, when you say uh, advaita comes from Hello, the vedas no I advaita comes this. from only the philosophical part of vedas only the philosophical part of vedas okay so not from the karma kanda So, so yeah. are there other traditions that have adopted the Veda philosophy? Hmm. Uh, there are, there are certainly many other. They follow their, uh, they take uh, the, uh, they follow different things of Vedas. It's and also, see, Vedas is okay. Okay, okay. Yeah, uh, okay. Uh, and Vedas are part Hana. of Vedas are part of Hinduist philosophy. No, so how can you just segregate so, that? See, please, yeah. please just uh, remove the word Hinduism. I guess I, I don't. Okay, okay. Why I don't I, I'm not asking about Hinduism. Hinduism. So I asked the question first, very early on. You may have missed it. I said, "How do you know what is truth and what the source is?" Now you've just said that there are other traditions that have accepted the Vedas and and arrived at a different conclusion. Who gave them the right to arrive at those conclusions that are different to yours? Uh, sir, the thing is, Vedas just means knowledge. Knowledge. Veda comes from the word Vidya. I, I look. Veda comes please from don't, the word Vidya. Please don't Bro, please don't give me a language. Time, no, I don't know why. No, no I'm answering, sir. I'm no, answering, no, sir. No, listen no, to me. No, 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 no. Look, you need. You need look, I'm not asking. Listen, I'm not asking you to be a dictionary. I can. I have a dictionary here. I can look for it myself. I'm asking you a very simple okay, question, uh, and you need to be direct with me. Which is, if you have a not source of knowledge, and this source of knowledge can be interpreted in multiple ways, who decides which is the correct way and which is the wrong? Because there is a correct way and there is a wrong, incorrect way. uh the thing is uh, it is same as saying you know uh, in ancient time uh, in the arab there were there was a knowledge now who currently follows the ancient knowledge of the uh, that middle east is it islam christian or who vedas just that, means comes from the word no, vidya exactly. ancient let me finish let me finish let me finish that doesn't answer let me finish hold on oh, please As, let me finish see, look that's, look he's asking that's you that's why i'm giving you context if I'm you believe in advaita one second sc if you believe in advaita then there is also dwaita right yes there is So what Muhammad so, is asking you is Dwaita wrong? Who decided Dwaita? Because you see, they believe Atman and Brahman are not Let the same. You believe Atman and Brahman are the same. So you yeah. cannot be correct, and they cannot be correct. Who yeah. is correct? The Dwaita are the opposite of Advaita. Exactly. So which one? And yet they use the Vedas as the source. Correct? Because if you believe both, then it's a contradiction, isn't it? It's like saying a married man. Can I have a married man 
or you can have a bachelor man. When you talk about a married bachelor, that's a contradiction in terms. Exactly. So once again, which one is correct, the yeah. waiter so or the it, waiter? It's like. See the thing is, uh, uh, saying. Look, see, in Guru brother Ajay, please. No, no, no we're, we're talking to brother Sg. Brother Ajay, please. We were talking to brother Sg. Brother yeah, Sg, go ahead. Just, just when, minute, when, when, when you guys asked me this, which is yeah, uh, which is right or wrong? See, the first thing is we do not have anything like this is right and this is wrong, right? We would say uh, for me personally, Advaita suits my intellect the best. That's why I choose all of that. So That's is it. Atman? So let me ask the question then: Is Atman and Brahman exactly the same thing? Absolutely yes. Okay, because the the right to say Atman and Brahman are not the same. So what does that mean? Because Explain they, that. To me. What does that mean? By the way, because they, Muhammad, have you noticed? He said there is no right and wrong for him. So for yeah, him, there is no such thing. I'm getting. I'm getting to that. I'm getting. I'm getting to that. I'm getting to that. Bro, I falsehood. I'm getting to that. Then, but then Hashim, but then. But then Hashim, I said for me, Advaita is true personally. But for exactly. I cannot say generally. Exactly. So when I asked good. you earlier, okay, which one good. is right, Advaita right. or Dwaita, and you were going round and round beating about the bush, I don't know why. Why can't you okay. just be straightforward? You know, look, I'm a Muslim. When you ask me a question, yeah. I'm not going to say the Sikhs believe this, the Hindus believe this, the Christians believe this. But for me, I think I Islam is the best. Once I've made the confirmation and affirmation, and I've declared myself mm. as a Muslim, then you. Or anybody else, when they ask me a question, they would expect me to answer as a Muslim, not beat around the bush. You have made a confirmation and declaration that you are Advaita. So if I asked you a straight question, do you believe in Dvaita to be true or false? Uh, Dvaita in the sense devotion is right, but the idea that God and uh, Atma is, uh, what is it called? Separate? Different. I do not believe that. I believe it's you, uh, do you believe Dvaita is wrong or not? Simple question, my friend. Uh, I see, I said you, the thing, see, the difference between Dvaita and Advaita comes after death. Like, what happens after Moksha? Uh, is there, so that's why now, no, no, I do no, not no, believe no, no, in the no, no, after death no, philosophy of Dvaita. That's I don't it. know how you Bro, pass your exam, exam honestly, you know. Yeah. SG, SG, let, let me sort of finish my thinking. Cause, cause I, cause see, like, I, I'm here to ask questions on Islam. I'm so not no, sure no, why. You're not here to well, ask look, listen, no, 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 you're not. Okay, you so you will get so. to, but you need to, you need to finish the conversation first. So... How is it that if the source is the Vedas, that we have two groups arrive at completely contradictory positions? I, I asked my original question, who decided that Dvaita should interpret it like this and Advaita should interpret it like that? Who was the authority? Where did that authority come from? See, that is what I was actually saying you when you just interrupted me. That the first question, very first question you asked me, uh, how did you get these two different uh, uh, Yes. Schools from Vedas. Yeah, traditions. You asked me, right? Yes. See, yes. now listen to me. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah, just listen to me what I say. Vedas just means ancient knowledge. In ancient India, the knowledge existed in the two forms, Dvaita and Advaita. Vedas come from the word Vidya. Vidya means knowledge from ancient India. So in ancient knowledge? India, who, knowledge exists. No. Okay, whose knowledge? The reality is it, ma is it man made reality, knowledge? Man made? I mean, did people oh, make it up? Is it no, man-made knowledge? Okay, so no, no, this is no, so no. you're saying it's divine knowledge. Yeah, divine knowledge. Yeah. Okay, good. You see, you see, terms are very important, SG. You like to be a dictionary. Mm -hmm. I like to understand terms. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, go on. Go on. So we need to be very clear, crystal clear in, in the words that we use. So if you say knowledge, mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you what type of knowledge. You said it's divine knowledge. Now you have to prove mm -hmm. to me how do you know it's divine knowledge? What is the proof? That this is divine knowledge. You can't just make a claim and then walk away. You've made a claim, divine knowledge. Okay, now show me how is it divine knowledge? Yeah, because in the uh, in our uh, one second, uh, in our uh, hello, just one second. Hello, yeah, I can hear you. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, because in our scriptures only, uh, when when you see when. Uh, there is Krishna who is explaining in the Gita only that this no, knowledge this which I am giving to you. No, 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 this is circular. You see, the knowledge later on in, that is written down comes after this revealed divine knowledge. This is what you said. No, 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 no. The Krishna clearly states that it is not this time that I am giving in the Mahabharata. Krishna says, this is not the first time I am giving, I'm giving this knowledge to Arjuna. I have given this knowledge since the beginning of time. But because it has lost, I am again giving it to you. That's it. That is what he says. Okay, okay, so, but so you mentioned problem. you mentioned the Mahabharata, not the Vedas. Is Krishna mentioned in the Vedas? Uh, 
see in the vedas when you say ancient indian knowledge yes in ancient no, no, knowledge in the vedas in, india, in particular the vedas is it mentioned in the the name of krishna uh, yes there is okay so which part in the vedas is mentioned uh, i think uh, uh, one second uh, if i'm not krishna sure, comes is... in dwapar yug brother sg how could it be there in vedas exactly he he knows he knows no. it but he just wants to win the yeah. argument no no no, 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 no. The, the thing is no i can answer just this. just one second just one second see i i let me say so let me say that's because, because let me answer it is mentioned in the vedas just that's why i'm saying you it is mentioned in the vedas that's it you know It is mentioned. Yeah, you need to tell us where it's mentioned because you yeah, can't yeah. just make a. Claim okay, I'm saying you just. Uh, okay, okay, I'm saying you. I'm saying you. Okay, yeah, where? I'm saying you. Which chapter? Which verse? Which book? Yeah, give us the reference. Give us the reference. Mm -hmm. Okay, one make, I think I don't be open it from, from, Not from some other. Okay, book. look, we're going to put you on silent while you find the reference. Ajay wants to come in here. Ajay, you, you can find the. Go on. You want to come in? Yes, yes. I want to say right. that one. Thing that you were talking about the way and other way. Okay, there is a verse in Guru Granth Sahib which says, "Che gur che kar che che gur che updesh gur gur eko ves anek." Means there are different thoughts of philosophies and methods, but creator only Have one. Have you okay, gone to Brahma. Sikhism, brother? No, you are. Che Guru Granth Sahib, you are asking. You are giving reference of Guru Granth Sahib from just... Sikhist Sikhist mm -hmm. religion. Sikh religion. So have I'm you just... now uh, yes. switched from Hinduism to Sikhism? Yes, yes. Is that the thing? I am just quoting one line to make it easy, easy, easily understandable. No, no, but this is, make, we're talking about for, we're talking about your RJ. We're talking about your tradition. You said you said you come from the uh, yes, Shakti am, tradition, right? So why are you quoting a reference from somebody else's yes. religion? Why are you that's quoting fine, Sikhism? Let him make the point. What's, what's your I am point talking about you? reference given to my religion. Okay. What, what is the my point? My point is, doing? Guru Granth Sahib mentions that there are different schools. Yes, I'm telling. You don't I'm need saying Guru Granth Sahib. Guru Granth Sahib line one mentions that, that there are different schools. So what is the point? I got your point. I'm just, I am just telling to. Okay. Point is, there are different schools of philosophies, but God is one. So they may differ in some few terms, okay. so but not. Let me ask God. you this, Ajay. You know, you know the people at Waita, and we had. Um, Rami, yeah. what was his name? Rami, it's something with S. Okay, so Rami said that even the gods like Krishna, you know, Ram, all these guys didn't exist. These mm -hmm. are just kind of metaphors which people invented. Do you think they existed? Metaphor. Krishna, Rami, Ram? Krishna, did they uh, exist in reality? I have found the reference. Uh, in case you want, uh, I have yes, found the reference. Well. Yeah, just just one second, S S G. Ajay, did Ram exist in in history? Yes, Ram and Krishna exist. Okay, because what what about you, SG? Do you think Ram and Krishna existed in history in real? Were they people? Were they real people? Yes, yes, definitely. No, no, I'm talking to SG. SG. Yes, definitely. You need to unmute yourself. You're muted. What happened to us, G? Because when Rami Sivan came, he said that they didn't exist. We asked him this explicit question, okay? And this is the problem with Advaita because they have like, uh, and and they're definitely in minority. They have reinterpreted and reformed a lot of uh, the belief and the way the philosophies kind of uh, oh, worked. Is my is my voice coming now? Is my yes, voice coming yes, now? Yes. Yes. So, did you hear the yeah. question I asked yeah. you? Did Ram? No, no, actually, was... Did Ram and Krishna hmm. exist in reality in history? Obviously, they existed. No doubt. Okay, because you know Rami Sevan, you 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 know the guy from Kora, uh, Kora? Pandit Rami Sevan. Who is it? I'm, I'm not sure who is it. Okay, so he's from the Advaita Vedanta as well, from the same school of thought as yours. And we asked him this explicit question, yeah. and he says no, they didn't exist in reality. Doesn't matter what he thinks. Doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. So two guys matter. from the same. Your uh, your 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 ISIS your ISIS people doesn't matter. Your ISIS people think killing Murtad is fine. Killing Kafirs is fine. You both belong what to you, the same. What do you mean your ISIS? Well, I, Sorry, SG. What do you no, mean your this, ISIS? Hold on, hold on. When you say your oh, ISIS, no, no, you know, well, well, the, there is no your ISIS. Okay. Of thought as ISIS, but you and Sa uh, Rami are the same school of thought. So I'm saying the same sect, same contradictions. ISIS, ISIS. 
I Daesh also comes from the same school of thought. Do you think any of you, any of the people here support Daesh? Are you making an okay? So, so I also do not. Are if, you making see, an I also do not here? support Ram Salim. If he says the Krishna, yeah, but Ram is saying what he's saying. He's not saying he's just a Hindu. He's saying he's from the Advaita Vedanta, and he's actually a yes, pundit. Bro, we asked him. We asked him. Even Daesh people are yeah. saying they are from Islam. Daesh people yeah, are from Islam. Um, yeah, but we are talking a specific need, group here, not just Muslims. You know, yeah. uh, there are many people who would claim they are Muslims. Brother Hashem. Uh, a clarification is needed. It seems like there's some kind of implicit allegations made about we or Muslims we are supporting, maybe supporting Daesh or ISIS. Uh, but no, 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 no. I do not. I do not. I do not. Okay, then. Do then not said, okay, your so, ISIS. Yeah. Well, what does your ISIS asking. mean, Ashley? Do you want to? Can you retract that statement, please, and say this was a mistake? I see. I can't. I, 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 no, no, I want you to. Apolo oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. Wait. Wait. I'm yes, retracting my, but the thing is, when, when Hashim, when, 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 when Hashim said, when Hashim said that what Ram Sivan believes, that I have to believe. That's why I said what no, Daesh no, no, believes. Then you also believe. No, 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 he did not say that. Right? What he said is that is no, what I'm saying. Okay, so SG, I never no. said Daesh represent Islam. I never said. Okay, that. calm down, calm down, calm down. Okay. Let's come. Take a deep breath. So first of all, do you detract the statement that you made earlier? Like Daesh represent Islam? Yes. Obviously. Yes. Right, good. So this is incorrect. It's a misunderstanding. Thank you very much. I appreciate your honesty, at least. Secondly, what Brother Hashim asked was really simple. He said, look, we have made a program earlier in, uh, I think, four, five, six streams ago, where we had a pundit on here. And he represented, uh, look, we're, from, we're speaking from the outside, okay? So he said to us, yeah. I am of the Advaita Vedanta tradition, right? And we believed everything he said about your tradition. We asked him questions, okay. he explained, and he, he gave his perspective. And, and we believe he is a okay. educated individual of that tradition, that his local community, and he said his local community, including the Australian government, take him as an expert. Okay, okay. now, okay. you come on. Now, now, let me finish my... Now, you come on, SG, and you claim to be of the exact same tradition, the Advaita Vedanta. So therefore, it is natural that we would think that you have a similar understanding of this tradition to this pundit. Now you're saying you don't. You see, do you, do you see the problem we have trying to understand this tradition? I understand your point. I understand your point. But the same thing I'm saying, you see, I'm also coming from outside of Islam, right? So when I first hear Daesh people that they are representing Islam, so I will we also think that... Discussing, look, we, we were not discussing we, Islam. We, we, we were discussing same Hinduism. Thing. SG, no, no, no. What is, same what thing is your quali to... Hold on. SG, what is your qualification in Hinduism? Uh, qualification as in what? what are you still an expert in Hinduism? Are you an Acharya? Are you a Pandit? I, I, have, I have studied, obviously, the Advaita school, yes. No, no. What is your qualification? Because like, Pandit uh, Rami is actually got qualifications, yeah. you know, he studied from uh, the Acharyas he himself is My, he, he himself Hashim, has got uh, credentials to back it up. What credentials do you have to back that you are an expert in Advaita even? Ashim, see, even you are not Molana. There are many Molana who speak rubbish. To, so I would see I would say, I would say no, I this would is say not what they're saying is true. SG, have you noticed you never I'm, answer questions directly? You always because the question which you are asking when it, when it comes to <laughs> just say you don't have the qualifications. It's not a big deal. Yeah. Quash your ego for once. That's no, fine. No. Look, see, I, look, you could. I, I don't mind you telling us that you learn everything from YouTube videos. That's fine. Yeah. That you've never or been to Wikipedia school. That's okay. Wherever. That you don't have no, any I education. Have. That's okay. I have. I listen, have. listen. Have. Let me finish. It doesn't matter if you don't have any of this. But if you're dishonest with us, then we don't believe you. Yeah. I don't really but care. I have. I have. Okay, then tell us the question. When you say Rami, hmm. uh, you know, Acharya Rami yeah. is incorrect to state his position. Hmm. What credentials do you have to, to invalidate him? Hmm. For what that, is your uh, basis I have to, to listen to his him? I have to listen to his Good. argument first. Then this Why is what you say... should have said. Yeah, but you already you just, made this I statement. Haven't... I don't care. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that yeah, was your reaction. See, that is I don't thing. care. Uh, what he believes. And then see, you see, connected see, somehow the Daesh. I don't know where it came from. You know, look, one thing, one thing when it comes to especially religious discussions is credibility. Don't lose that. 
Yes. Hashim, when somebody asks a question, they expect you are... to answer straight. So, for example, see, if you Hashim, didn't know see. about Rami, just say, I don't know. So, I can't really yeah, comment exactly. about it. But yeah, well, your reaction was, I don't care. In fact, that just shows how insignificant others' views are for you. Even your own Hindu see, people, let alone the Muslims. I can just imagine what you're thinking about the Muslim views. If this is the way you no, completely no. disregard the views of other Hindus, I can totally imagine what you hold in your heart about the Muslims. No, uh, see, listen Hello, to me. Can I conclude? See, there, is, there can always be disagreement between the scholars and you. Even you disagree with many of the scholars of Islam. And there are many scholars. Can we just right. move so on? Do you necessarily I disagree? Right. SJ, I want to move on and get uh, Sister Swati's question she asked. If you what? believe everything is an illusion, then of course mm -hmm. the, the, the focus points of Shiva and all, all the other you know, avatars or, demi, or demigods or de babies that you have, they don't really exist, do they? Because the only real existence is Paramatma or Brahman, or that, whichever weird terms they're using. So are they real or real not? Because we haven't still got the answer yet. So what you ask you that question and you said one point, they're not real, everything is an illusion. Another time you're saying, yes, you know, Ram existed, this existed in history. Uh, do you want to just clarify your position here? Because I see clearly a contradiction uh, in, in, in your statements. The thing is, uh, did Ram exist? Yes. But the thing is, not as a, you know, God like who created from the point of Advaita. Again, I'm saying from the point of Advaita, uh, we won't say Ram uh, from the point of Advaita. Again, I'm saying uh, he is not the ultimate truth. The ultimate truth is the Brahman. Yes, Ram is a uh, a teacher who teaches you. Krishna is a teacher, a Latin being who teaches you. Sri Ramakrishna, Swami Vivekananda, all these people are teachers who teaches you. That's it. We do not see anything. Else. And as far as your question about Shiva is concerned, uh, we say, as far as Shiva is concerned, uh, is there anyone who is uh, like residing in Kailash and all? Uh, no, we, from the point of Advaita, we say uh, there maybe is, there was some uh, Shiva who was called Mahadev in the past, but he was just an enlightened being. In the He was not necessarily a god. I mean, the ultimate truth. The ultimate truth still is uh, the Brahman, as we say. Okay. Thank you for like your time. That's fine. Okay, good. Okay, so, so, so basically, what you're saying is all the other gods are. Hello, bro, not, can I conclude in two minutes? Gods. So, when the Hindus they worship Shiva, they, when they worship Vishnu, all these gods are not really gods. They're just human beings who are enlightened. Is that what you're saying? No, they are uh, human beings who attain enlightenment, and once you attain enlightenment, you become one with the Brahman, right? Are they so God? In a way, they have become God. So they become, yes, Krishna has become how God. Many gods do you believe one reality only. There is no, uh, in the sense no, no, of God. No, how many gods? You said they are gods. You use the term they. They is a plural. How many gods do you they believe? Are, they, they have become God. They have become one exactly. God. They right? have become they have God. Become, is a plural. Those humans, those humans, they humans who have become enlightened, they have become one reality. Brahman. Humans become God, SG brother. Are you saying that humans you, then with enlightenment you become no, no. God? And then you once have not you, yet once given you, the reference which you were supposedly to be giving about Krishna being there, mentioned oh, yeah, in you Vedas. Were the yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hello, sure. Now um, I can answer, bro. Okay. Let me uh, let me just answer Swati's two questions uh, because she asked me. Okay. Do you want to give the Yeah, yeah, sure. I'll give this in the Okay, okay, fine. Yeah, you, uh, the, the, the the the... if you want, no problem. Okay, okay, okay. One second. In the meantime, uh, I think Ajay wants to say something if while you're typing. Yeah, that. so Ajay, type on. it in the private chat, SG, and we'll let RJ speak very quickly. Okay, go ahead, Ajay. Yes, see, see, yes. I have given it. Yes, uh, I'm saying okay, it, thank you. Can you write it in English. Come on, it, you know, you know we don't read that. Write it in English and then send it to us. Okay, this, okay. The, the reason we are discussing English is because our audience is English. It's not Sanskrit or Hindi. Even though Sister Swati can read Sanskrit and understand it very well. Yeah, but we would still like to put it on the screen. No, it's, can I speak now? Yeah, go on, Ajay. Yes, I'm saying I can. No. Go on, we are listening. No. And the, the movie made are just his manifestations. What he claimed. Ajay, your connection is very poor. Ajay, your thank you. Ajay, your connection is very, very poor. We can hardly hear you. 
now now it's coming okay go, Hello, go ahead we'll, we'll we'll try go ahead yeah go ahead we'll try okay i am saying and now i'm concluding okay now one reality is brahma which is eternal and beyond time and space and brahma vishnu mahesh are just his manifestation and vishnu take take avatars to send guidance to human kind and and rishis got the vedas from brahma okay this is one point now i want to suggest something to swati swati are you listening yes brother ajay i'm listening yes there oh. is an article yes there is an article written by scroll dot in which says is hinduism hinduism is polythe- polytheist is therefore it's pagan is pagan religion i'm suggesting you to read it okay all right thank you very much i'll go through it but i find both of it in yeah. hinduism okay. paganism as well as poly- polytheism but yes, yeah, yes. your because suggestion been noted word, i'll go through that yeah yes because yeah. there is a word called polytheism which says this is god this is god and hinduism this is word new world which is called polyformism which means yeah, one yeah. reality and different forms just forms not okay independent statues not god nothing that's what that's it RJ, so we have a long queue of people waiting for us and i think we've had enough time with yes, um, yes. thank RJ you yes okay all right thank, um, you. thank you okay brother uh, sg you have one last comment and then we need yeah. to move on so, sg the reference you gave only mentions a gopala gopala means a cowherd it doesn't mention the term krishna you need to unmute you yourself. know the word the don't you know that uh, The Gopal is the name of Krishna? No, it just means a cowherd. It doesn't mean it's a name. No, no, go. Gopal Gopal is the name of Krishna. But yeah, uh, brother is the SG, of... there is a Gopala which lives in my neighborhood. Exactly. I can even associate that with this particular, you know, men uh, uh, a, um, assertion which has Sister, there is a sister sister there is a Muhammad in in this stream also, right? So please do yeah, not come yeah, with yeah. some lunatic. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what please I'm saying. Please come on man. What? <laughs> it's that's what I'm saying. No, but you're lying. You're looking We are looking for the term Krishna. Gopal is not even the reason. reason I ask you is oh the name God. Krishna God. mentioned? Yeah, but, uh, yes. So, so no, the question is, how do you know that this Gopal in the in in the Rig Veda refer, refers mm-hmm. to Krishna? Who who decided? How do you know? Where is the reference for? Obviously, that? obviously, the scholars. Scholars have decided. They have seen. See the last right. line. He comes so, again so, and yeah, again to right. listen. Listen to me. Arre, give me the answer. Give. Let me give the answer. See in the even leave alone the scholars. even if you see this uh, the what is it called uh, the verse what does it say see he comes again and again to the material world the same thing krishna says in the gita yada yada hi dharmasya gnani bhavati bharata so listen so listen listen what is it okay very good i understand this but you see there is a a certain um um concept that we have in islam that we hold other things to as well which is if you're going to indicate a reference to me then i need to know who said it when they said it and why you believe it's true can you give me those three things for this assertion that you just made who said it when did they say it and why do you think it's true okay, that's fine i said you why is it true i'm giving you the scholar that's not an issue no no okay who's okay. the scholar give me his name who's which scholar okay okay fine just one second uh... Okay, look, I suggest you, uh, look, okay, SG. I suggest you do this as homework, okay. and we'll come back on the next stream, and we'll speak to you because we. Asha, see, time. listen. Uh, let me ask you a question of Islam. At, at, at least, yeah, let me ask you a question of one single. The yeah, entire stream, you just keep. No, 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 no. I think we can we can have another call. It's a lot of time been given to SG yeah. brother. He can do the homework and come in the next stream. So here, here is a reference, SG. Just before you go, here is a reference. Where do you see Gopala? Where do you say see Krishna? Zoom in a little bit. Yeah, Sister Swathi, you can read the uh, Sanskrit there. I think, right? Can you scroll in a little bit more? Zoom in a little bit more. Yeah, it's not mentioned. The go. term Gopala or Krishna are not mentioned in there. And Unless it's just written Gopam. Yeah, mm. it's just written Apsayam Gopam Anipadyamam A Ka Para Ka Padmitis Karantam. This is not there. There is nothing which is mentioned about Krishna here, S G brother. There is nothing That's like that. Thought. Thank you very there much. There is nothing SG. like that. It's it's a completely false uh, claim which you had made of Krishna being there mentioned in Rigveda. So you need to study Gopam? it again, perhaps. 
what is the meaning where, what that. is the source where, right. where are you getting so, so, you look at the english translation that's done by the no, no. Hindus, not done by the Muslims. hold on brother so sg this is your homework you need to find the scholar who interpreted this i'm giving you a scorn let us see i'm giving you a scorn i'm giving you a scorn what do, what do you say i'm giving you a scorn no, what do you say? it's not it's scorn is a institution who is the specific <laughs> scholar person that arrived at this and I, we need to because this is how we bhakti vedanta prabhu I'm saying it's is how, listen, you don't believe so in his con, so why are you giving his con? I don't know. Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. And it's, also, you belong to the Dwait tradition, exactly. no? yeah. SG brother. Now you are coming to Dwait tradition. You are coming to say that you be, you are you are subscribing to Iskon, which totally believes in Saguna, not Nirguna, not in a Dwait. Yes. So that okay. you are confusing so those terms together. How okay. does it matter? Oh, of course, it matters. Listen, of course listen, it matters. You give SG enough time. Prove things. He has been dishonest. Okay, we've given SG enough time. Okay, okay, thank you, SG. And hopefully, so you are creating this last question. Let you in I'm, I'm not sure why. No, no, we're not avoiding fine. anything. You cannot, you cannot appeal to a tradition. That, okay, so for everybody, why did the we take lied. this person? He off? openly lied, giving a reference. Right, is a good exactly. Thing I so, it. yeah. So let me just give the the what's going on here. So he claimed to be of a particular tradition, and then he uses evidence from another tradition to justify his position. A, a tradition that he says is wrong or or one that he doesn't believe in and this is dishonest it's dishonesty at the highest levels now and i think brother Hajj, you made a very good point earlier which is if this is the level of animosity that you have with your own traditions supposedly under the umbrella of hinduism then i can understand why you don't want to believe in anything else because even within your own traditions, you have so much hatred for each other's position that you can't even entertain There's them. an additional I mean, point, though, uh, Brother Muhammad. He mentioned that Krishna revealed all of these knowledge, contradictory knowledge about Adaita and yes. Adaita. Yeah. So you have the same source revealing contradictory knowledge, which Absolutely made right. then two different groups you know, following and accepting that information and this knowledge. I mean, yeah. is it reasonable to think that the divine, the, the 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 supreme being will give contradictory knowledge about something like that? It doesn't make exactly. sense. Exactly. Exactly, it doesn't. And so so this is where I think you know we need to understand that we we have a particular set of standards that we look at everything through. And for you to come and make claims without backing them up with evidence, as Sister Swati is her search, her journey, and this is, you know, this is what's beautiful, is her journey from the very beginning was one that was based on her intuition, which was then this must have some meaning. Secondly, she was, she's she been on a journey where she realized that unless she used her intellect and her heart to arrive at the truth, it wouldn't work. And then she went on the journey to find which of the you know whatever's out there claiming to be true satisfies those requirements and what what we what what I'm witnessing repeatedly here is people have switched off the intellect switch and everything is emotional or they switch off the emotion and everything is super philosophical and intellectual to the point where even they get lost in the discussions you know it's one extreme or the other which we are warned against in the quran of course you know we're told don't go to extremes in your religion, and and this is this is exactly what we're seeing here. So, you know, do the homework, brother S G. If you're still listening, and when we ask for references, we mean real references. We don't just mean pick out a verse from nowhere and give it to us, hoping that we don't follow up. Alhamdulillah, we have very correctly said, Brother Muhammad, and I think that's the reason why we can very easily decipher that battle. I think maybe the brothers also themselves, at least SG brother, he himself was able to, you know, realize it that there, there, there are problems, there are flawed premises, which is why I was asking again and again that this entire thing where you are saying everything is illusion, how are you able to practice it out in your real life? And there were no answers to that. So it's just what I usually see is just for the heck of debating, bringing out those philosophical Mm -hmm. arguments would they come and they, that's the reason why they would switch on and off to any of the you know various traditions in fact to the extent where they would even not want to call 
call themselves under the uh, you know religion of hinduism and you would 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 want to use various terms you would not they would not want to use even sanatan dharm they would say it's another it's a different sect altogether so these are just very very frivolous arguments and petty, anybody could make you're right yeah it's yeah. amazing petty amazing arguments. amazing right i want to bring in a muslim brother because he's been waiting in the background for a while uh, assalamu alaikum shanawas khan wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh all of you panel uh, i i have been really enjoying uh, the the stream and uh, swati sister welcome to islam very happy for you assalam alaikum uh, thank you brother yeah. wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah where uh, are you joining from brother and uh, please state your question yeah so i uh, i am currently from india uh, hyderabad is the city uh, okay. south That's okay. That's fine. That's enough. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I I wanted to ask actually SG uh, two questions about uh, one is uh, why is it so necessary to not worship one true God directly, and why do we need the God to take some form, some shape through which only we can just reach the God, and and what are the essentialism of Hinduism? how can i call myself hindu uh, okay, are so there SG any criteria not here if this questions were yeah. for sg he is not here do you have a question for any of us uh, nothing just uh, one suggestion for sister swati uh, you have been doing great uh, i have just sensed that there is a, a tone of complain when when you respond to uh, other people of uh, other faith so maybe it's your start yeah you it's not complaint yeah. it's just frustration <laughs> it, it just, actually brother yeah it, exactly because, it shows yeah. actually yeah yeah because you uh, know i have been there and i know it and when you see somebody just circling around the loop for no reason and when they themselves understand that they're just wasting the time so it just comes out that you know i i need to be honest with this so so that's why it just frustrates that you they know it they are just you know just making things up so that's why it's not complaint but it's just that you know let's let's yeah. move on let's not do it just for the sake of because it wastes time for the people who are there who are taking out their precious time to hear and for the right. panel themselves so that's what it is and of course it's not it's not to uh, sort of demean any other religious faith but it's just the frustration which comes up when there is no solid argument being made that's all right right one request for uh, other panels uh, there have been agendas going on in india i mean especially targeting muslims there are youtube channels like uh, ex muslim movement and all they they cook a lot of stories and unfortunately i have seen uh, their views are growing in numbers and uh, and let's be honest i mean muslims uh, are our majority of the muslims in india are muslim because it it has been inherited they don't study in depth and they don't understand uh, how beautiful the religion is so it's it's kind of vulnerable for them if if they fall for these agendas and they leave islam and and honestly we don't have such intellectual with the platform uh who can just defend this or maybe at least take a stand uh my request for you if you can do that maybe i can provide you with the, their clips and all uh, which are problematic uh, i mean your thoughts so when you when you say sorry did you say ex muslims ex muslim movement they they yeah, run we, it in this name you know in english if you look at our videos uh, for okay. example if you look at brother sabur ahmed if you look at uh, daniel hakikatu you look at uh-huh. uh, a lot of people like um, uh, what's his name farid response yeah okay. they yeah. all have dealt with this a lot yeah, mohammed hijab fact, as well as dealt with this yeah, yeah. mohammed hijab yeah. mashallah so they have dealt with all of these arguments uh, you mm-hmm. can look at their channels all of them they all have right. channels all and, right let, uh, let me do that yeah, yeah. so so w- what i would say brother just there very quickly is most of the ex muslim arguments are recycled emotional positions taken by people who are ignorant of islam to a level that is actually quite embarrassing uh, most of these so called ex muslims don't even know the beginning of surah fatiha right this is how ignorant they are right and supposedly many of them were muslims for you know years and years and years apparently yeah. before becoming ex- now i'm not saying all of them some of them genuinely did fall out of islam for whatever reason and and yes that that minority does exist but most of the ones that are vocal um are actually um uneducated 
in Islam in a way that is unbelievable. And yet they are more educated in liberalism, secularism, and Western thought. And to me, if any of those are listening, you need to really ask yourself the question, how is it that I'm more educated in the thought of the colonizer who colonized my mind instead of actually being informed about the revelation that the creator of all existence gave me? Why do I follow that route? Just to add on this uh, point, uh, Brother Muhammad, you made, many, if not the most, of these ex-Muslim communities, they didn't leave Islam because for intellectual reasons. They left Islam for emotional reasons, financial reasons, reasons which are due to their own persons, not necessarily with the religion. Sure. And then when they realize there's a huge market and there's a demand, there's a niche there available for them to somehow become the center of attention, somehow earn some money or fame or whatever, they realize the potential of being an ex-Muslim and present, present themselves as ex-Muslims. And they start then retrospectively justify their you know, leaving Islam and they find ways and, and reasons and excuse, or oh, that's the reason maybe I left Islam and they presented to that, but it wasn't the case anyway. So we have many examples of ex-Muslims like this. They justify retrospectively later on, oh, I'm not a Muslim because of these reasons, but they were not the reasons for them to leave Islam in the first place. So this is, this is a, another breed of people who've come into the limelight for some personal greed reasons not necessarily for because they really feel that islam is not right it's just something that had you know you know they they couldn't get into their marriage or get, they lost their job many reasons like this in fact many times we've done you know you know this kind of you know assessment to see what were the reasons and you will hardly find one that was in fact there was someone from very educated in a muslim school um, graduated from SOAS, um, you know, I, I've seen him many times, interacted with him. His reason, you'll be surprised, very emotional. After the event happened and a lot of people, you know, got, you know, killed here and there, that moved him. And he says, how can Muslims start, you know, laughing about it or being happy or being joyful about it? He couldn't take it. His personal emotional well-being was being affected, and that somehow, because of the actions of certain Muslims, he immediately said, oh, I don't want to be part of this community, Islam is not for me, or how Muslims treat emotional reasons. So when yeah. we ask people, like, you know, what are the reasons, they can't justify that intellectually. And this is one of the reasons you find um, our brother Hamza in Hamza's den. One of his, you know, signature, I will say, you know, statement that he makes is, okay, are they really any intellectual Muslims who left because of intellectual reasons to become an ex-Muslims, there are none to be found. So if you if you are wondering because there is a potential danger that this ex-Muslim community is going to somehow affect Muslims who are lay people who are not knowledgeable enough, and don't ever worry about it. What we instead want to do is we don't want to react to this. We want to proactively change our educational systems, our learning, so that when people come across like this, we will just deflect it because we would know this already. Like, oh, all well, this is argument. <laughs> We've already dealt with it. So that should be the solution where Muslims proactively learn about the religion, learn about all this shubhat people are bringing. This could, could be a part of a curriculum in which these kind of things are dealt with, you know, emotional reasons people have uh, against Islam. And you, you will see there's quite a handful of them. Um, oh, Prophet Sallallahu Islam married a young woman or a young girl and so on. That's the reason people leave Islam. And yet, you know, uh, well, I don't even go there. This is not even something that people should be even thinking about, like how can this be a an argument in the first place? So that's what we're dealing with. So once... We have an educational system in our maktabs, in our madrasas, in our universities, colleges. This needs to be from all levels. Then Muslims will not be in a position like this and, and be vulnerable. You know, vulnerability exists. It's because of people are not aware, not learned about the subjects. So the solution, in my humble opinion, is not just to react. There's a, there is a 
what's this called, a platform and a need for these reactionary responses, but that's not the actual solution to the problem. This is a part of a solution, not the main solution. Solution is, of course, always in education. Once you educate people, you will prevent these kind of things happening rather than dealing with it as it happens. I, I hope you understood my point, brother. The Shahnawaz. suggestion is a good one, brother Shahnawaz. I think, I think, I mean, it's good to point it out, but... Um... We don't want to give these people limelight to monetize their hatred. Um, it, it's it's yeah, unwarranted. In a sense, it looks like uh, we don't have an answer to the allegations. Oh, oh, no, we do. I mean, the answers are there. We do. Um, and there are lots of channels over here, as Brother Hashim right. said. There are. A, and, and this is. Look, it's, it's, it's quite. I mean, it, it, if it wasn't so serious, it would be amusing. But this is not a new movement. These. Yeah. These creatures, these cretins like this, have existed since Islam started, True. right? So this is not this is nothing new. You know, it's not like Islam has never had to deal with people like this. We've been dealing with people like this for fourteen hundred and forty years, right? So, so the only difference, thinking? right? The only difference right now is, is social media makes it look like they have a bigger voice than they actually do. But his his concern is 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 genuine, isn't it? Like, of there course, are people who do yes. get impacted by their lies, yes. by their misinterpretation, misrepresentation of Islam. And alhamdulillah, even in Urdu uh, and Hindi, I think there are quite a few channels. Uh, for example, we got... I, I think this should help. This Yasser, should help. Yes. We got Kaiser Ahmed Raja. Yes. And also we have, uh, obviously, our brother uh, Sam Stallone. And I think there's another brother called Amir. He's on our Zihab channel. And obviously we got Sister Swati here and some other sisters, mashallah who are also quite um, uh, active in these fields. So alhamdulillah, we, we do have lots of resources. We just have to make sure we utilize them and uh, educate others as well, you know, spread the word, spread yeah. the names of these channels, which benefit yeah. people. Um, because alhamdulillah, we, with the help of uh, social media, we can turn the tide. And we have True. been doing and, so. And inshallah, I take it on me. Uh, and, and I'll follow these uh, first to educate myself and then to spread the word, inshallah. Alhamdulillah. And thank you. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, well, what I was going to say is, is to everybody, actually, this is all our responsibilities individually. Absolutely. Right? Uh, you know, please don't think somebody else is going to do it, therefore I don't need to. You know, whatever little you can do, just do it. Uh, because every little bit, it'll all add up and it'll become a big thing. Yeah. Consider this like an ecosystem. You know, we have this Islamic ecosystem which we need to uh, utilize. You know, we are all brothers and sisters. Doesn't matter which part of the world, east or west. Okay, and we need to get together, show them that this is the hawk. We can stand against any falsehood because all they'll bring up is falsehood. Okay, it's uh, Alhamdulillah. We got resources. Just have to utilize them, and don't forget to support these point. channels because it's yes. very important. Whether you support them Absolutely. by commenting, by forwarding, by by yeah. by fin uh, financially as well, because they there's a lot of expenses uh, which people have incurred, and uh, the channels do incur this. So right. please do help them, inshallah, and may Allah. Right. Brother Hashim, can you just repeat the Hindi and Urdu channels once again? I could write Yasser, Faisal Ahmed. Yeah, so you can watch this uh, later, but. Uh, I'll just put okay. it up on the screen again for you. Yeah. Yeah. So we got uh, Mufti Yasser, Mufti yeah. Yasser Al Wajdi, Kaiser Ahmed Raja. Okay. And then obviously, you know, Sam Stallone and Awazi Haq is a channel by Brother Amir. He comes on Sam Stallone's channel. So these are all Urdu, yeah? Yeah, yeah. And I think this should connect more with uh, people of my region. Yeah, yeah, so you got, you know, you got the youth club in Pakistan, mashallah, Brother Raja, he deals with a lot of this uh, right. shabahat, you know, these things from both the atheists and from the ex-Muslims and so-called ex-Muslims yeah. and obviously the the uh, the Hindus as well. So alhamdulillah, please uh, do yeah. look at the youth club as well. Uh, mashallah, they do a great, great, uh, they do great work as well. Okay. Great help this is indeed and I wish you all the best. Alhamdulillah. Thank you very much. Allah Hafiz. Alaikum 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 Right. So we got uh, right. We got a Sikh, a Muslim, a Hindu. What do you guys prefer, panel? Let's bring a non-Muslim in. A non-Muslim. Specify Sikh or Hindu. Let's bring brothers, brother Singh in. 
Okay, our kids, our kids. He's been waiting. He's been waiting for a while. He's an old friend. He comes on. Thank you so yeah. much. Yeah. Hello, Harkirat. How are you? Uh, yeah. Harkirat, can you hear us? You need to speak up. Your, your microphone. Your sound is very low. Your sound is very low. Uh, there we go. Brilliant. There we go. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Very good. Fantastic. Go ahead. Thank you so much for having me on. Um, I want to say. Uh, where do I start? Um, my position is that we have the essence of dualism and non-dualism also. Um, also, I think it's important to... When you say V, you mean the Sikh, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I want to thank you for allowing me on. And, uh, yeah, thanks uh, yeah, for I, I, so I, I, I heard um, I heard the Dharmic... Uh, deities and I thought I would uh, jump in to give what little I've learned about Sikhi and, and all of this stuff and um, I would love to share what I've learned with you. Um, I think the issue is that um, the definitions are wrong, uh, generally speaking. I'm not saying you specifically, but the, the definitions need to change. Our terminology needs to change. When we say and, and, and I think that's where it starts to get deep and, and going beyond that would be um, becomes complex. So our terminology needs to change, I think. And um, like, uh, yeah. And the second thing is that we must be honest with ourselves, I think. Um, you know, we, we're debating and we're not you specifically or me, but we're debating, we're arguing from or discussing from our limited perspectives. And I know I have a limited perspective, um, but obviously I would love to share the little that I've learned, which is what I'm doing. So the limit okay, is... So Brother Harkira, because there are a lot of people yeah. waiting. So can yeah. you please, have you got a question for us? Uh, yeah, I've got a question. Um, okay, well, so can I've you state got, the I, I question? Wanted, please, I wanted to make it a bit of a discussion, actually. Yeah, it's just that there are a lot of people waiting and we don't have a lot of time. So you need to be specific. If there's a specific point you want to discuss or a question you have, you need to state that. Uh, yeah, so I would love to just uh, clarify what, what these terms mean. And, I'll, and I think it's important to remind people as well that, um, uh, you, you know, that we need to remind people that I think if we're honest with ourselves, like the the problem is when Muslims, are, from my experience, is when they say that we're um, only we're right and everyone else is wrong. Only Prophet Muhammad's right and everyone else is wrong. I think that's a, and I think that's our fault as well because we've not done a good job in explaining who we are and what we actually, um, what we believe. We've not done a good job of it. But now we know a bit of English, we can push back a little bit. So my what I wanted to um, share is the meaning of these terms. Like, um, uh, like for example, um, there isn't a separate God which which is being chosen over another God. We're we we we're, we're praising the songs, which is, for example, being sung. Um, the singing, the praises, for example, um, Krishna. No, know, knowing that, knowing that is the song. What is the term? The, what is the term we need to clarify? Uh, uh, all of these deities, so deities. No, no, not all. Give me. You said there's a term that needs clarification. Which term? Uh, th thank you so much for reminding me. The term I was referring to was the was the word deity itself, because the word deity is defined as God, and that's not what deity is. A deity in 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 our thinking, um, a deity in the Dharmic faiths is a function. Of the one, the one does many different things. The one, uh, for example, the 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 the, the union of um, is a function. It's a it's a description of of the one. So, uh, sorry. What, is, what just, is the definition of God for you? The, the definition of God uh, for is a spectrum. The God is a spectrum of all possibilities, right? God is a spectrum of all possibilities. And, what, and what does we, that mean? All um, possibilities. I, I think I think I, I I would I would love to get at, I would love to get there, but also I'd say I wouldn't I I, I don't want to go off topic. So no, but you you don't have a topic. You're all over the place. Yeah. So yeah. I'm trying to. I'm trying to. 
Yeah. You you are not specific. That's the reason I asked you. If you have a specific question, please state it. If you yeah. have a specific point you want to clarify, then please state the point. So then we can elaborate yeah. on that based on what yeah. you're going to and, say. And I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll try to be as eloquent, eloquent. It's not about eloquence. It's about being specific. I'm being specific and quick, yeah. So, okay, so once again, what is your question? Yes, so my uh, comment or statement I wanted to make yeah. is that um, when, when the one takes the unfathomable, unreachable one takes many forms and when that form comes down um and play uh, and sorry when that one comes down and sings the praise of the divine who comes down and plays the role of krishna the divine coming down and playing the role of um rama as well so we don't see them as separate individuals but manifestations of the same one so let me ask you this is krishna god in sikhism uh krishna refers to the the, the krishna refers to um the um uh krishna refers to the, the uh, an atomic level the, the, no 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 is krishna god for you just a simple question if you ask me the question is krishna god in islam the answer is categorically no so no need to beat around the bush. Just answer the question. Is Krishna God in Sikhism? Um, yeah, but that comes down to what is God, right? And that's exactly. why I said that's I the reason I asked that. you earlier. Yeah. What is God? What is the definition of God? So do you have a definition of Almighty God? It's not de deity. That's what I'm trying to say. It's not deity. I didn't deity. ask you the definition of deity. I asked you the definition of God. But... That's a separate topic now. It's not a separate topic. That was your main point. Right. Because you, um, this fact, is a separate topic. We can have a discussion later on. Yeah. So so thank you, you for need, You need to in be now, clear right? in your mind as to what you want to That's ask. Fine. It looks well, like you Before he not... goes, just before he goes, let, let me sort of ask. So, Hakirat, there's actually a hierarchy of discussion that we need to have here. If you're talking to, because you're talking to Muslims here, okay? The hierarchy of discussion is we need to first of all establish what or who is God. This is the, this is the, the highest level. Then there are other terminologies used in other traditions which refer to so-called divine beings or beings with essences of divinity that we refer to as deities, um, devas, devtas, these other terms. We need to start with the source first. So if you don't, if you don't have a clear definition of who is the all-powerful God, then discussing these other things really don't matter. All right, then I'm I'm very happy to quickly tell you what the definition of God is in Sikhi. Go on. Okay, go go ahead then. Oh, oh um, I see in Sanat and Dharma actually. Um, um, uh, Sikhi, we believe that the the God, uh, the the one God is, uh, s s sorry. Yes, yeah, so, so the one is like, the one is everything. It's in everything there's nothing but god there's nothing but it. it's outside of the universe like what muslims believe is separate from the universe guru guruji says that the one is out and um, created us and is watching over us is separate from the world but then guruji also says that everything is god this universe is god god is this and that and that there is only we are all connected and there is only god there's nothing but god it's like um, drops so you're of, talking about uh, pantheism. If I give an example, an analogy, so so you you might understand it, or I can explain it better. Is that we what what you just defined is pantheism. Right? Everything is God. The universe is God. That is pantheism. Uh, yeah, but, but no pantheism. It's not is, Sikhi. That is not the belief of Sikhi. It, it, it is. Pan -pan -pan I never said that. I never said it's it's not you pantheism. Said, the Guruji no. said everything outside the universe is God. Everything inside the universe is God. Didn't you say that? Um, yeah, but what what I'm saying is this, okay. right? Brother, no, no, no. I, I never said. No, sorry, no, sorry. I never said. I never said pantheism. Is pantheism is this. Pantheism is Hinduism. Is that everything is God? That that God and the God and universe cannot exist without each other. And but but Guruji gives the complete so truth. Guru, so Guruji God is says dependent that Guruji, on the universe. Seriously, sorry, sorry. The universe is a creation of God. Right, but 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 like How can I said, God be right? dependent on something that never existed before? Yeah, that, that's the universe. Do you know the universe? 
began to exist at some point. The universe is not no, we believe we believe we believe that in some form or another it always existed, right? What, so even be, even before the Big Bang, it existed in another form. That's what we believe. Okay. So so that's when you say we, are you saying the Sikhi people? I'm saying Sanat and Dharma. Okay, so you're not talking about Sikhism. Uh, that's why. Uh, are you? Do you follow he's Sanat and Dharma? He's all over. So, the place. Yeah. So we we are Sanat and Dharma. No, you're not. You're no, Dharmic. You're not. You're no, not, you're Dharmic. You're not yes, Sanat, Sanat and Dharma. No, we have we have Sanat and Shastra Vidya. We have Sikhi. Come on. You know, when I first asked you who is the we, you said the Sikhi. You didn't say Sanat. Yeah, Dharma. I mean, like, like I said, Sikhs bring the essence. We bring the okay. truth. I think you're wasting all. time, brother. Sorry. No, 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 no. Honestly, take care, mate. Got lots of people waiting. He does that every time. I've seen him many. Thank times. you, brother Hashim, because that was just not making sense at all. Yeah, I know. Because it started he, you know with what he wants to do. He yeah. wants to. He wants to please everyone. He he's come before as well, and he does it every time. Okay. He wants to be this uh, person who says, "Okay, we are okay with the Christians, okay with the Muslims, okay with the Hindus," and he he just thinks that everything is possible when he does not even realize that if that was possible, then you're saying contradictions are possible. So, True. for example, in Christianity, if they say that Jesus is God and he died for our sins, and the Muslims completely reject that, he's saying we should accept both. In other words, we should accept all contradictions. There's no such thing as truth. Truth is contradictory. And uh, is it not? Uh, I just I'm just wondering: is it is it with me, or is it is it is it with everybody that it's so easy to see how flawed these premises are? And they would not make sense. And sometimes one just tends to lose patience because one, you know, at times you don't even feel like rationally discussing because it just boils down to that same irrational argument from where it started. So uh, yeah. I don't know. Maybe, you know, maybe. You know, Sister yeah. Swati, th this is a good question. So what, in my experience, what it boils down to is, you see, in every walk of life, people accept logical, rational consequential actions and reactions Absolutely. right so for example you know they play a game of soccer they kick the ball they expect the ball to go down the field or they expect a ball to go to they don't expect the balls to suddenly go into the air and become a burden <laughs> yet you know yet when they come into the realm of of discussing their discussing their existence that logic suddenly goes out the window it's almost like it doesn't exist, and therefore I can now believe anything I want, even if it contradicts the basic essence of my intelligence. Absolutely. And yeah. this is, to me, um, disingenuous to your own intellect. So you know what you're doing, actually, is, look, you're actually not disrespecting anybody except your own intellect. That's right? so what at the end of the day, I, yeah. Yeah? You're fooling yourself, basically. You're fooling yourself, exactly. So if you want to live in this illusion and this this sort of essentially this 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 mist of ignorance then go ahead because the only person you will damage at the end of the day or hurt at the end of the day is yourself yeah and which is why i sometimes wonder that would they listen to themselves when they would be speaking how it would not make absolutely any sense i mean uh, the previous brother who came shehnawaz who who said that you know maybe sometimes your tone seems complaining i i am telling you i was being uh, to the helm as much courteous as I could be but the arguments were just not making any sense at all so this was the best which I was able to you know put forth in front in terms of not being complaining or frustrated because it could be it could have been totally a different way altogether had had I had a you know personal conversation I would have just cut it off yeah well, well you know what a lot of folks need to remember and this is important for is is I mean you know from speaker's corner these brothers are having the every single week day in day out and in some cases the brothers here i'm not going to point to have been doing it for the last 20 years or more okay so you've got to understand you know you, you have to i mean the people out there have to appreciate that sometimes we do stand back and sort of say look we've heard this before right we're not being dismissive in many cases we really have heard these arguments for the last 20 years year in year out and they're exactly the same words and the people positioning them come up with the same reasons for believing them. And we say, look, we've already addressed this. Cut it short. And they then they feel like we're um, somehow disrespecting them. Hey, to right. you, Muhammad. Yes, go ahead. A few other guests waiting. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Well, good point. Excellent point. Thank you, sister. Right. Uh, 
Delhi Muslim, you've been waiting for a while. Thank you for your patience. Asalaamu As Alaikum. What, what time is it there for you, brother? It's uh, 2 or 9. Same like oh my goodness. Well, Zakla Khairan for wait, wait, staying up. Oh, no, it's okay. uh, Thank you for all those waiting yeah. from yeah. Southeast Asia for your patience, um, including our chief guest, <laughs> Sister Swati. Our sister, yes. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Thank you so much. It's way past uh, your bedtime, guys. <laughs> <laughs> all right, okay. Delhi Muslim, uh, you got a question for us? Uh, not not a question, but uh, just wanted yeah. to share. Yes, yeah, but just wanted to share something. So, uh, Sister Swati just uh, wanted to, I mean, congratulate you. And uh, I wanted to share a feedback for you that I know there are plenty of uh, YouTubers uh, who were ex-Hindus and now they have reverted to Muslim, uh, Islam and they have their own channel. But I believe the kind of uh, uh, charisma and the kind of uh, spark that you have in your voice and the approach, uh, you please start a one channel and please keep that in mind to be in Hindi because majority of the audience in India uh, are familiar with this uh, language. Alhamdulillah, brother, I would really, uh, I just feel that maybe whatever I'm able to speak, share, say, I totally feel it's been the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because I don't know, uh, it's, it's somehow, because as I was sharing my journey, everything has appeared to me like a miracle in the way in, in which it has unfolded. So uh, I just totally, you know, absolutely the, the credit, the thanks and the praise belongs to Allah for this. And of course, mm -hmm. uh, as you had been asking, uh, you know, talking about a channel, uh, I, as I was telling in my, in, my, in my journey, I'd been a very reserved person as such. It's just very off late, you know, of two months, last two months that I've joined here. But yeah, mm -hmm. uh, I do get it. I would like to share what I had learned, you know, being in this religion. How has it affected me? How has it changed my day-to-day -day living? And I was thinking that maybe uh, there is this channel... Uh, I, there's no video which has been put up yet as yet. Uh, the name is Allah knows and that's enough for me. I can share the link here in the private chat, but there is no video as such which has been there. I Let's see if, if you know, maybe in future if I would like to share something in that, I could. As of now, it was just... Um, you know, I didn't plan first of all to come on YouTube and then things like that. But yeah, I, I get your point that yeah, it's always good to share what you have learned from it. And maybe it could help. Maybe Allah's hikmat could come through, you know, one yeah, of yeah, the slaves. It, yeah. yeah it, oh, mashallah. It, it, so you, you have a YouTube channel, Sister Sophie. <laughs> I, it's just been created like three okay. days back. No problem. I'll share the link here. There are no Yeah, inshallah, in please that. do. We'll put it in the yeah. description as well. Um, uh, yes, you, yes. You, uh, Brother Sam's well, already. I'll put yours too. Who yes. knows that you might be the uh, female version of Zakir Naik in the future? <laughs> Someone might see your video. Someone so, might see your video. Well, sister, and, you know, Swati, might... What I would suggest is because you don't have any content that you recorded, what you can do is you can take clips from the live streams that you have already appeared, in, and whichever whichever parts you think are beneficial, just cut them and put it there. Inshallah. Yeah, uh, that was from the previous forum where I was. Yeah, maybe. Or maybe I would like to. Yeah, but let's see. I would like to sort of, you know, put something new there. Yeah, that's how you experience. start. You start yeah. small and inshallah you grow. Yeah, inshallah. I, let's let's I, just, you know, just start here. Yeah. Uh, my emphasis only, uh, Sister Swati, is that, uh, that you have, uh, I mean, gone into the depth of this spiritualism, so called, right? I believe you have studied that. Yes, I had studied. Yes. Uh, I want, like, I yeah. want this particular subject to be out because you know, uh, most of the, I mean, the people from the Hindu community, they are so much inclined to towards this uh, position. You know, like you know, spiritualism to be yourself everywhere is God. God is within us. I want this particular subject to be uh, out, you know, from your side and to compare it with the Islam, you know, to the Definitely. oneness of the God. Definitely, and, that's a very the, good suggestion. Yes, and and the panelist, uh, I I've, I've been listening to the other people, like the the two guys were there. I mean, they were just uh, circling around. I wanted to to share something like in Upanishad, they have this definition of God. Uh, the, you know, which says that which makes the tongue speak, but which cannot be spoken by the tongue. That which makes the mind think, but which cannot be thought by the mind. That which makes the eyes see but which cannot be seen by the eyes. If you understand the meaning of it, I neither know nor don't know. 
then you understand god so i don't know why do people have to put some krishna some vishnu x y z into this form i understand that in hindu culture or in sanatan dharm there is no concept of uh, the uh, the absence of prophet hood is there and what i believe is that you know they they could be prophets but uh, you know they have been uh, you know idolized as god nowadays see i i wrote in a private chat like a uh, 100 year ago i spoke i speak to a lot of hindu friends and uh, i spoke a uh, few of them and i told them like sai baba sai baba is a great figure in india and uh, he passed away 100 years ago and i told and i when i tell them that you know sai baba just passed away 100 years ago and look at him you have all the idols of him people have in their cars people pray to him uh, they have mandirs of sai baba so i tell them like don't you don't you think that you know somewhere down the line these people could be prophet and you know people have just you know taken up to them i mean taken them as a as a god like figure and now they have been worshiped and they 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 find it shocking very much about this this is a, this is a very good point brother sakala khair and do you have any other questions i not a such i just wanted to you know give the uh, suggestion to swati uh, regarding the channel and about the alhamdulillah we we appreciate you t- coming along and zakla khair and for and i know and i know the person uh, that who has been uh, coming to the speaker's corner since last 20 plus years and he's <laughs> i know i've seen i've seen his video alhamdulillah his video. alhamdulillah I'm there you go stuff. Yeah they so th- oh. then you understand you know I, there's not a question i think the brother hears that has not been asked already you have to believe that <laughs> yes yes yes, yes, yes. <laughs> well, hinduism is actually a new kind of new concept, yes, yes, paradigm yes, for us <laughs> yes yes yeah, exactly. brother, so we're, we're learning as well yeah, we're learning yeah we're learning as well yes. exactly brother, alhamdulillah brother, 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 brother. something on the on the messenger and the and facebook messenger uh, or I'll email you, you, you can email us you can email no, us i've sent it i've sent him something and he knows oh, okay all right fair enough okay. alhamdulillah okay jazakallah alaykum assalam just a quick suggestion about the channel that sister has created uh, it could be a very long name um, and might not be a unique name i'm on i'm just looking at the screen <laughs> yeah uh, the name it's, it's is very basically thoughtful. it's very thoughtful it's, um, <laughs> right. you might want to something like you know make it think about the title so so it's easily reachable by people searchable on a search engine comes yeah. easily the link is there rather in the private mm. chat because that's what i felt um, that allah knows and that's enough for me that's that was something which uh, which truly resonated and that's what i wanted to put put across mm. maybe just the name itself probably could do the work of da vibe somebody just reflects and meditates upon them the mm. way the first mm. caller mm. had come and said that you know wh- whatever renuka god is we meditate and we are able to see so maybe just wed- meditate on this particular aspect that allah <laughs> knows it and and that's enough and and just meditate on the 99 names which are there probably that could do some benefit to them absolutely yeah exactly look uh, we're, we're happy to help you as you know um, um we can discuss this but it's a journey alhamdulillah and you you already made the first step um okay so for those in the background that haven't switched their cameras on we can't bring you on until you switch your cameras on so if you want to switch it on now It will have to be momentary. We just want to know that you are a real person and so on. Yes, yeah. and then you can switch it off when you come online. Okay, thank okay. you. You can switch it off. If you haven't switched it on, please switch it on. Okay, so we can bring next. Okay, guest. thank you. Okay, okay, the others. Harkirat is okay. back. Harkirat, we are not taking you again. <laughs> yeah. Okay, thank you. That's okay. Thank you. Yeah. Good. 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 Uh, Rohan. I think Ron is okay. We'll bring him in next because he's come here before. Okay. So, Rohan, you need to unmute yourself. Yeah. Hello. Thank right? you. Yeah, Hi. yeah. Thank you. Hi all. Hello. Yes. You didn't um, sleep all night. Just waiting for the stream, isn't it? Oh. <laughs> yeah. We appreciate your dedication. We really do. Thank you. No, no. You guys are giving us sleepless nights. So. <laughs> Yeah. You know, we, we start at five o'clock here our time. Um, it's it's uh, that we can't do any any sooner than that. People work during the daytime, yeah. so it's literally one minute after I stop working. Yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> okay actually you guys conduct it very professionally and i should really appreciate it and i really want my hindu brothers also to start some of uh, some platforms like this because there is absolute paucity of platforms like this where we can actually uh, discuss matters to matters about hinduism and explain to others so yeah, really you are doing great job what you've been saying you know please bring your friendly hindus to these streams so we can actually have a discussion a conversation yeah. you know we're happy to have uh, i think sensible yeah. conversations so uh, so rohan what's on your mind yes uh, the last stream you did was about hindutva so if it's okay we, can we start from there mm, yeah. we, we really want to so the topic yeah, today was the you was need the to journey just one point because there are other yeah. people waiting so exactly so the point uh, we want to discuss and we can take it from if it's if it's brief yeah if it's brief i would Go just ahead. think that maybe that stream already had taken place and you know we have had callers there so why to bring that again in this particular stream brother rohan and i think maybe you would have introspected upon what we had discussed uh, in our conversation that we have had so probably did it did it help you to change or maybe reflect upon certain things that we had discussed during that time yeah yeah that's why i want to bring in just two points so what is hindutva is all is it's a reactionary movement that's happening in india and what's causing it it's islam which is making us react in this fashion i will give you one example of will durant who has written this uh, history of civilizations story of civilization he says that the islamic invasion of india is the bloodiest of all in that that uh, that humanity has seen so we had to bear the brunt of it and now we don't want a repetition of that and we had, we should assert ourselves why so, again the same why? victim card that you are playing here i mean i mean i thought you would have reflected upon what we had discussed with such a long two hour conversation i think but it's the same thing which has been again repeated and you i think you just wanted to prove the point and you know probably you know put yourself in the victim place and and sort of hold a uh, accusation against islam maybe yeah. that's what something which was left in the previous team to say and you wanted to convey that this time ron the question the question is why now after 75 years of india's independence when the hindus are still 80% in number and the muslims are a minority less than 20% why yes. now after 75 years does it raise his ugly head of hindutva no it was it is not uh, today if you go back the foundations of rss was led sometime back in 1930s uh, even well before the independence happened because people recognized what is about to come for example you know pakistan got created as a theocratic state where they say hindus are second class citizens the constitution of pakistan says pakistan. that because pakistan didn't exist in 1922 whenever the rss was created Yeah, but they saw that coming because you know no, the no, founder wait, of Pakistan. Wait, wait a minute. What was the thing that tri- that actually made the RSS or bring the RSS into existence? Give me something that triggered it. Yes, you know, for example, with the founder of Aligarh Muslim University, he started this whole movement that Hindus and Muslims cannot live no, together. No, and I'm saying when the when the RSS was started, when the foundation. What made them? What was the founder? Brother Rohan, you're too to close to your mic. Can you move the mic away a little bit? We can hear you yes, breathing. Yes, yes, sure. Thank you, thank you. So you know, Pakistan didn't exist. The Aligarh University didn't exist back then. What was it that started the RSS? Yes. Uh, what was the main motivation? Let's see if you know the history. Yes, the motivation was there. Uh, there, there was that religious churning that was happening in India. No, no, no. And I'm asking you, what was the main motivation for founding the RSS? Yes, they wanted. It wasn't religion. See, I can tell you that. It wasn't really religion. It was civilizational or cultural. They saw that. So which this, culture triggered them to make this, this new movement called the RSS? Yes, that's what I'm saying. The onslaught which happened on India. Which no, was no, no, no. it was earlier than that, brother Rohan. What what ha, brother Hashim is asking is is what is the philosophical underpinning that justified the RSS coming into existence? Yes, if I am understanding it right, they are acting as uh, you know a, a protection layer for the philosophical aspects of Hinduism. Hinduism for long lack. You're this. not answering. Sorry, you, I think you've missed me some. So what I'm asking for is. how did they justify the rss to come into existence so there is an argumentation that was put forward right in 
in in a certain um, uh, document that was produced. And in that document, he outlined why do we exist. Can you recall what was written in that document on why RSS exists? Um, maybe I don't know. Maybe you'll have to enlighten yeah, you, me. You but... really need to go and learn the history before you start yes. blaming Islam for it. Because, by the way, the RSS are not the enemies of just the Muslims, also of the Dalits. Exactly. Mm. They would no. use they would use that muscle power of Dalits to, you know, just pit against the Muslims. And exactly. I think, Brother Rohan, you need to study Golwalkar and the way mm -hmm. the entire agenda which was there to, you know, to have this diversity which is there of tradition, language, custom, etc., just to straight jacket it into a monolithic Hindu Hinduism. That was one of the things. And of course, to create this kind of external enemy which will be you know so that you can you can have that external enemy which can be used to whip up this hindu consolidation that they wanted so almost like that you know hitler kind of fascism was was the basic aim with which they had worked on it i think yes. let's not let's not bring in those you know political no, no, ideas they, when they, the stream no, is not they, about that no the reason yeah. need, there was a need for us to assert ourselves in that way we cannot always remain battered am, am, amidst all these castes and all that we need a folk, we were in need of a focal point so that we could stop we should stop for the but did you uh, but did you think of, brother rohan did you think that they actually eradicated the caste system they did not in fact they used it for the personal self vested interest this no, is very they, clear just the previous yeah, president of india policy. they used the, the policy of the english by the way ron do you think india is only for the hindus certainly not nobody ever says that but do you know what hindutva is do you know the philosophy of hindutva if you read the constitution enunciated by mr savarkar himself there he never says that the, this country um, will treat uh, other religionists as second class citizens but it happened well, in constitution no, it's not about of pakistan treating them as second class is is the identity of the hindus which they want to establish in india that the everybody else should leave this is basically the this is exactly what they have been saying all this time that everybody Certainly. else do not deserve this country it's only for the hindus in fact well, brother rohan if you would have seen the history of it of the entire movement you would have seen that for them the external enemy was never the britishers in fact they would you know they would they would even uh, get certain kind of concessions from them they would join you know, that's the reason why, why they... do you know why savarkar had to spend 10 long years in that uh, horrible andaman jails because he See, went after the british oh i am telling you it lot you know if you read the books even nanaji deshmukh in his book has written rss has been the victim of slander and they say and in fact they wondered why rss did not take part in the liberation struggle organization that's why i'm that's... asking you that's why i'm asking you why savarkar had to spend 10 years in andaman jails see uh, what was he now uh, i why would just like to uh, say brother rohan uh, why, why, why was why the rss spend... banned Sorry? on three occasions in india why Yes, uh, they found that maybe these guys are whipping up passions, and this is not a time to no, whip no, up passions. Why were they banned? What was the main reason they were banned? Yes, they were whipping up passions, and some people said that whipping that up passions. The... What? Yes, what which whipping up passions. Yes. Are you exactly. are you trying to say they were promoting sectarian violence? Is that what you want to say? Yeah, exactly. Uh, so don't try they... to sugarcoat it. Whipping up passions. Yes, yes. Okay, you, if you want exactly. it direct. What yes you because you know india had to bear the brunt of a partition where they said that we are going to create two islamic countries and one secular country by breaking india this was not acceptable for them and they who said, was the one who killed mahatma gandhi since you had brought I mahatma gandhi in the previous i think that's what he's saying this is that's what he wants yeah. to say but yeah, india yeah that's what that's what he wants to is trying to justify the death of mahatma gandhi Exactly. No, no. I, I can, I can never do that. In fact, I am the strongest. You won't do that in open words. You won't say it. But when you say, who was a, according to the Hindu Twa, who was the main person responsible for the division of India? Well, uh, this is where I have uh, some problems with RSS. They say it's the Nehru Gandhi clan which, um, which uh, undertook this exercise. Why was Gandhi killed? Why was he assassinated by the RSS member? not the rss member let's not call him that way he's, he was from really? the hindu mahasabha he was from so the you're, hindu you're saying this guy was his name uh, godse yeah. yeah godse he did not uh, he, he did not belong to rss 
He was from another fringe group called the Hindu Mahasabha. Did he so, belong to RSS or not? No, I don't think he belonged to RSS. You, you He's from Hindu Mahasabha. Because he did belong to RSS. Maybe he might have gone his separate way some, some other time. But he definitely belonged to RSS. And also, Brother Hashim, I wanted to ask, we have you had a, an entire stream on Hinduism and Hindutva ideology. So did Brother, uh, I wasn't well and I couldn't join that stream. Uh, did Brother Rohan come there? Because that was the entire topic of discussion in that stream. So uh, did Brother Rohan come there, uh, putting oh, forth his arguments? There. So okay, then why? Brother, Brother Faiz yeah. wants to say something on this topic. Faiz, you got a few, you got a few points you want to add? Hello. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum wa alaikum uh, where, where are I, you calling from, Brother Faiz? I'm calling from India. Okay, you're from India. So you probably know more than us uh, who are not in India. So go on, please. Add, your, add what you want to add. Yeah, I mean, I do not understand the point they, these guys are trying to make here. They go round and round and round. I mean, they, 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 they pour all the hatred when they are in private chat, you know. Hmm. And at this point of time in India, we are facing like these, uh, th this Dashera. Many of the people have entered into the mosque and urinated. Police are with them. They are not going to provide any help to the Muslims. And these guys, you know, advocate RSS. And they know, they, they want Muslims out of the India. They do not say in front of the camera, but off camera, they all show their hatred. I mean, yeah, why okay. are you so insecure? Why have you filled, I mean, why are you filled with so much hatred? He's saying, he's saying it's a reactionary movement. But the thing is, why is the reaction only mainly against the Muslims? Because the, if I remember correctly, the Muslims are the one who actually built up India. They, they are the ones who send the GDP skyrocketing in India. They are the ones no, who build all these monuments like the Taj Mahal, which is the jewel in the crown of India. Every time when uh, they have a, a brochure about India, the first picture I see is the Taj Mahal. You're not identified by a temple in India. You're identified by a Muslim architecture, a monument built by the Muslims that, that gives revenue in millions to the Indian government every single year. Okay. okay, brother. Uh, but you're not against the British or the Christians mainly. They are the ones who looted India. They used to take the cotton back to England and then sell it back to you. Okay, they literally destroyed the country. But no. Absolutely. And, uh, Rohan, Why? Rohan, I want to ask you, I mean, how are you going to lead your life? If you if you are going to be like this, your heart is going to be, I mean, you know, your life is not going to be easy. Remove the hatred. Live peacefully. There is absolutely no space for hatred whatsoever. No, you, know, you know what is there in your heart, all right? Absolutely, I know. And for that reason, I'm here to clarify things. All right, because all right. Listen, listen. Why are you guys talking about Hindutva? India has been a majority of in Hindus, right? The Prime okay, Minister, I will President... Give you an example. I will give no, you an no, example. Listen to me. Listen to me. You guys interrupt a lot. Listen to me. Okay. The Prime Minister of India has always been a Hindu. The president has always been a Hindu, you know, and the home minister, everyone. If you look, if you um, count the, uh, I mean, if you see the percentage of uh, advocates or the judges in Supreme Court, high courts, everywhere, there are all Hindus. But still, you think that Hindus are in danger, you know. Why do you think like that? And why oh. do you have to advocate for Hinduism? Okay. Just listen, uh, listen, listen. No, Learn not, Hinduism. Sorry, Brother Faiz, just to correct you, it's not Hinduism that we are against. They have it's a right Hindutva. to stay there. It's the Hindutva, who are the extremists, you know, the fascists, who actually want to get rid of everyone. And they're saying this land is only for the Hindus. Let me come in there. When there are 200 million Muslims, where do you think they'll go? Create a new country? I they want to chop it off. They want to chop, chop every Muslim. I mean, yeah, I can name the massacres. So the we are not the Hindu, just to clarify. Yeah, whatever. Hindutva, I mean, both are the same things. They are not. No, they're not. Brother Faiz. Really, no, they're like not. The Zionists and the Jews. Yeah, let, let's be okay, let's be careful every, here. Not every Jew is a Zionist, and not every Hindu is a Hindu twa. Hindu twa. Exactly. So let's be let's. We need to be because look, this is a public uh, a broadcast. Okay, we need to be very careful with vocabulary. So we agree 
and to answer the question earlier, which uh, Rohan, you didn't answer. So let me actually read something out to you, which is it's actually public information. It's out there. And it's, it's research that is underpinned by most of academia. And it says that Goalka's vision of a Hindu state drew inspiration from Italian fascism, specifically Mussolini's organization of fascist paramilitary forces. And in comparing the Hindus in India, the premacy of Hitler's Aryan race, Goalka wrote, to keep up the purity of its race and culture, Germany shocked the world by purging the country of the Semitic races, the Jews. Race pride at its highest has been manifested here. A good lesson for us in Hindustan to learn and profit by. This is the underpinning philosophy that I asked for that drove the creation of this organization known as the RSS. So therefore, you see, nowhere in there do I see the word religion. Nowhere in there do I see <clears throat> that this is driven by some kind of um, faith tradition that he has a problem with. No, his entire um, foundation is he wants race pride, i.e. nationalism, and a fascist paramilitary uh, elite to take front stage. What do you say to that? Okay, now, first I'll answer Faiz's question and next to yours. Uh, why Hindus are assertive these days? Uh, recently, uh, the ex-Prime Minister of Pakistan, Imran Khan himself, uh, said that the women, Hindu women of Pakistan are being forcefully dragged out of their homes and are being converted into Islam. Prime Minister of Pakistan says this and pr pr the Pakistan tried to bring in a law which prohibits force, forceful conversions and again that was stalled and they removed it saying time is not conducive to bring in this which means what forcible conversions are fine in Pakistan. And then you say brother Rohan that you have not come you have no hatred See? in your heart you have exactly. not come to incite That's what anything. I, want to figure out. I mean, yeah. I mean look, at the, look at the statements look at the stream look at the Why? topic of the stream and you are bringing some, some, something yes. which was not a part of it and you're saying there is not even an iota of hatred. What, what, Look at the claims what is the reference? So, Rob, huh. so no, no, you don't you made this. They got they got the uh, the Hindus who have got the Garwapsi thing, which is no different to what some Muslims are doing in Pakistan. You know, look, we are not here representing either the Indian government or the Pakistan government. The last thing we want to get right. involved in is is politics. Okay, exactly. That is we not the topic of the channel. Channel. and we want to stick to that. So. This is yeah. always a problem with discussing with Hindus. You know, they have to. I think. I think um, with with. Um, with all due respect, 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 uh, please uh, Swati, my, with sorry, all respect, respect, Swati, uh, we need to um, say goodbye to Mr. Rohan Saxena because we're not going to discuss Hindutva on this stream, and we've got a few other guests, and it's been a long uh, stream for all Sister Swati as well. So thanks for coming, uh, uh, Rohan Saxena. Maybe in our future streams. If we have another stream on Hindutva, we can come on and have that discussion. Yeah. You're most welcome sure. to join there. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Brother Faze, did you have anything else to add? No, thank you so much. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to figure that out. I just wanted to put that out because, hello, can you hear me? Yeah, we yes, can. yes, right. go ahead. Perfect. Okay. So the thing is, uh, it has been 75 years, more than 75 years since independence. And now the political parties have, uh, you know, uh, put these slogans out, and they are on. I mean, you, you, you must, you guys are uh, aware of the situation in, in India, right? So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, I from what we can see on the media, yes, exactly. And mainstream media is not showing a bit of it, you know. So, uh, I mean, I see. I mean, Swati has accepted Islam, Alhamdulillah. But these two guys, I mean, SG or uh, the the other guy. They were attacking a Swati just because they do they, they cannot accept the fact that a person has accepted Islam. Uh, to be honest, they were not really attacking her. I think so I Swati, mashallah, what, she can yeah. take care of all yeah, of them the fans, I mean, I was just, in fact, frustrated with the arguments. It did not, yeah. uh, thanks to you, but it did not feel like an attack at all. In fact, I just felt a lot of ignorance coming from the arguments mm -hmm. rather than any attack. So that's why I was just feeling very frustrated with the points which were being laid. But yeah, thanks. Thanks a lot for your concern. And Brother Rohan, I think, who had come, just wanted to, you know, just, just throw a random loose statement to whatever please his ego and to and then to say that this was not done to bring out any hatred 
etc which because it doesn't make sense the stream is not about hindutva he did yeah. not come in that stream which was there for that particular specific topic just randomly coming and throwing some statement uh, that doesn't make it, it in fact we were very tolerant to have him speak exactly. whatever he spoke i mean i mean everybody has the right i mean they, you can uh, you know uh, read your scriptures everyone i mean hindus or sikhs or whoever but why do you have to come on every stream and talk about negative things in islam because of the ex movement ex muslim movement going on and they feed the they feed these people what are the negative things in islam i mean there are no negative things but they have you know portrayed in such a way that you know these are the things which you have to put in these streams well it's it's yeah. obvious isn't it they are a sure. match made in so, hell so what do you expect yeah. when you Thank you Khan, Brother Faiz, for coming in yes. we are a bit conscious of time it's been 5 hours live stream yeah. keeping sister sure. swati um speaking non stop almost you now we have to be i'm kind. sorry if i sounded a bit rude no 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 and what i'm saying is uh, we're going to make it quick inshallah for all other sure, guests sure, sure. to join thank you so, so much it's a pleasure having you assalamu alaikum wa alaikum assalam Who do we have next? Brother, yeah. How are you? Guys? Welcome, Salam. Alhamdulillah. Sister Swati, how are you? Are you all okay? So I have, uh, I have just a, a small point to make that you know whenever you because uh, um, uh, this stream is about Hindu Hinduism because Sister Swati was once a Hindu, so I just want to make a point on that that whenever you argue or you know debate with uh, these people. They, their arguments or their uh, claims about their religion, they are never the same. I mean, every Hindu that you meet, they'll make up points of their own, and uh, you know, you'll even have majority of the Hindus they even condemn their own gods. So, like my my, if if any of you can answer me that, you know, um, you you hear Hindus saying that, you know, um, we condemn uh, Lord Ram for marrying Sita at. age of 6 so why don't you condemn your prophet for marrying her at 6 so th- these are the points that they make and and when you ask them that if you condemn ram then why do you worship him why do you k- carry out rallies every year in his name and then they just flip so you know th- these kind of and you know if by making these points i mean if 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 you guys uh, think about it seriously a person who's truly looking to seek the right path to seek the right religion he will never ever accept their religion because if if these people themselves are condemning their gods then that means that that religion is not true so i just want to know from sister swati or any of you guys out any of you guys sitting here that what is the idea of hinduism if these people reject their own scriptures then why do they feel why do they like feel pride in calling themselves hindu and you you hear them all the saying that we're going to fight for our dharma and all of that then what do they have to fight for if they condemn and reject their own scriptures i think that the daniel that maybe what i have seen from whatever little i have observed i don't usually see them coming out so straight forward and condemning because that would still be uh, you know i would still appreciate that if they would be so straight forward to say that yeah we do what they as we have seen what they do is they there's so many various you know philosophies which have been there so they just you know jump and hop from one to another and just go around the bush saying i mean just make a mess out of it and uh, uh, and and you know the, the that entire process in itself i think anybody who is wanting to seek learn understand could very easily help them get that this is uh, this is not correct pa this is false this is flawed so maybe i think um, and as far as you know for them because the ones who come usually the ones i see very few of them are really sincere in 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 their uh, you know seeking or in their understanding or in the claims which they make it's just most of the time it's just for the heck of debating or just putting forth the argument so uh, so i think um, i think what you're saying that why are they so proud of uh, whatever culture etc it could be because of the lack of uh, lack of knowledge because of ignorance and maybe just because as i was telling just to prove a point just to come to the stream you know just to say whatever you know take that win maybe that just gives them a high and they just go like that yeah i so, think i think yeah. what what i think is that uh, the 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 reason why they reject their own teachings and they also call, uh, you know they also associate themselves with the hinduism and call themselves proud hindu is 
um, number one, in order to be accepted into the society and also to be affiliated with their culture in the same time. This is how I feel. And if you're doing it because of that, then then it's not really a religion. I mean, it's more like a culture or tradition and, you know, something that you've been following since a long time. It's not really a religion. It's uh, just like your traditions and culture. It's But unlike in Islam, yeah, yeah. in Islam, if you reject a certain teaching, we immediately... You know, uh, we disassociate themselves, uh, ourselves with them. Like you, you're never gonna see anyone saying that. You know, any Muslim saying that I condemn this part of the Quran or you know Sunnah. No, you'll never see that. But you have Hindus proudly, you know, disassociating, rejecting their scriptures. And this is not how uh, you do in in a religion that is the true word of God. Because it is entirely, you know, based on philosophy. The way it's been said, there are six philosophies within it. There are so many different traditions within it. They, so they just, I think they maybe they feel proud about the fact of diversity, which is there. Or maybe feel proud that, see, we are so tolerant that even if you reject everything, we are still so accommodating towards you. Maybe that could be. But that that's what I was saying constantly, that don't call it a, I mean, that's not the attribute of a religion then. It could be a tradition, you know, culmination of various philosophies and a lot of them also say like this that they had been diverse philosophies which have been amalgamated into it and that's how it is so i think that could be one of the maybe one of the reasons why they would reject it so no, easily. That's, that's a good point so uh brother daniel i think you know the 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 challenge is i think sometimes that we we forget that the world view that you hold and the presuppositions that you have when you come into a discussion actually matter Right, they really do matter, and you know, as Muslims, you know, we we walk into discussions with a very particular idea of what exactly truth is, what exactly evidence is, what exactly a source is. You know, especially if you've studied Islam to any level, you have a very clear idea of what I can believe, what I can't believe, and and things that are, you know, completely untouchable. You know, you don't you don't you don't go near them. This is not the case with other traditions, and you have to appreciate this. They, they don't have this idea of absolute truth in many, many traditions. They have an idea of a subjective truth, and it's true for me. And imagine you've had centuries of this kind of thinking. You know, I mean, the lenses that they then use to look at the world is that anything could be true. I have no idea. And so the consequence of that is, is well, if anything could be Somebody with some charisma, somebody with a little bit of, you know, energy about them. Oh, maybe they have something that I could do and follow, which is exactly what you see. You see these exactly. people and the, falling on and the And here's feet, the thing, right? You know? uh, Muslims, Muslims are the only people in this day and age who proudly accept their scripture, their book and their religion as it is. You're never going to see it in anyone else, in Christians, in Jews, no. in Hindus, anyone Everyone has submitted and surrendered their religion, their beliefs for this today's modern, secular and liberal ideas. That's why, you know, even Christians, they reject the Bible and they abuse the Bible. It's not, it's not even modern. I mean, look, I mean, the, the Romans and the Greeks already did it years ago. Yeah. Right. So it's not even, you know, it's not something that came about in the last couple of hundred years with the Enlightenment. This particular situation of, of let's go with our whims and desires is a historically uh, way, way back something that happened already. So what I would say is, is in our discussions, we just need to be a little bit more nuanced. And sometimes you see people who are, if you're walking around in a mist and somebody tells you you're walking around in a mist, well, if a mist is all you've ever known, you don't know that you're walking around in it. You just think that's the way the world is, right? Yeah. So sometimes you just have to help people you need to handhold them and guide them out. And then when they've hit the light, you show them this is what light looks like. And this is actually the journey that Sister Swati went on. She actually guided herself out. This is, this is what's amazing about her journey. She actually guided herself out of this mist into the light. And the only thing she had to guide her was the, the Quran and the Muslims on YouTube. Right? You know, she did, she did the real Karvapsi. You know how they say that <laughs> oh, she did the real yeah, yeah. Exactly. And that's what I'm saying. So uh, this journey of, you know, when, you know, uh, you know, if you explain to a goldfish, for instance, that it's born into water, it's, it's not going to understand. 
it doesn't have the intellectual capacity to understand what you're saying to it, but it knows that if it swims around in this thing, it can swim around, right? And, and, and most people that are born into some of these traditions are exactly like that. They lack the intellect to appreciate that there is a higher level of understanding. And what they find, they think, this is the world. This must be it. There's nothing else. And so part of the challenge isn't that they're deliberately ignorant. Part of the challenge is this is the view that they have, and we need to somehow gently, you know, sort of deliver the message. This is why in Islam, we, we, with our is really true about delivering the message. That's what it means. You know, it's about inviting people. It's not about converting people. You see, unlike evangelical Christianity, which is all about converting people, Islam is about inviting people. We say, look, here's the message. It's true. Now it's up to you to read it, to understand it, and internalize it. And then if you think it's right, follow it. And we have no power over that. Allah says, you know, that's your job. The job to make them Muslim is, is Allah will do that. Exactly. And, uh, and this is the difference. So, so sometimes, you know, these lenses that people are wearing, they don't even know they're wearing them. Yeah. And, you know, uh, just the last point I'm going to make and then I'll leave is that, you know, there is this misconception in the world that, you know, Muslims are not allowed to, in Islam, you're not allowed to question your faith or question your scriptures. And, you know, I want to thank you guys for, you know, uh, you know, just uh, uh, finishing this misconception because you have people from all over the world, you know, coming on your stream and asking you questions and you guys answer them, you know, uh, just as nicely as anyone would. So, I just want to thank you guys for it and may Allah bless you guys and you know thank you so much for having me. Great point and what I would add to that is is this is Quranic by the way because Allah tells us in the Quran he says he says ponder do you not think do you not see exactly. do you do you exactly. not deliberate over so this is not us this is we are told this by by Allah it says you must think about what it is you do yes and and, so, and how you, yeah so this should be enough for the so to all exactly. the people who think that you're not allowed to question, just ponder over this. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you so ponder much, over the fact that this is in Revelation. Alhamdulillah. Muhammad Daniel. Yeah, thank you. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, thank you so much, right. brother. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. Okay, quick do we take one more and then we'll call it call it a night? Yeah, so I think Mr. Eight has been no, he's gone already. All right, brother Ahmed Qabar. Assalamualaikum. Uh, wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Okay. Uh, I need to ask, I need to ask a question. Can I ask? Where anything? are you joining from, Brother Ahmed? I'm Egypt, Egyptian. From Egypt? Yeah. Okay. Ahlan wa sahlan. I need to ask a question. Can I ask any question or just a Hindu? Uh, go on. You're the last person, so go ahead. Uh, uh, how I treat uh, gay people in work in in life, just like uh, can I get, I get close to him? I uh, can I know him or just uh, ignore them or, or what I do? Sorry, I I didn't catch that quite. Uh, how to, how I treat uh, as a Muslim? How I treat uh, the gay people, LGBT? How, how do you okay. treat them? Yeah. This, yeah. Uh, the... This is a big what has that got to do with this yeah. <laughs> discussion? Yeah. So the bottom line is we treat them just as other human beings. This is what Islam said. Brother, you're like, you're in Egypt, you know, you got mashallah, lots yeah. of scholars, lots of ulama, you know, you're coming yeah. and asking exactly. unqualified people this question. Uh, I like I, Yeah, I, I we, we can't answer that. Yeah. I don't trust uh, Did you not yeah. find a scholar in Egypt, seriously, to ask no, this question? Yeah, my father is a scholar, but I don't trust him. Uh, you don't trust your own father. How will you trust us? No, no, no. no. I watch you guys uh, all the time. I don't watch uh, Egypt, guys. Right? I don't watch uh, Scholar in Egypt. I watch you all the time. Uh, and uh, uh, you can't answer, answer the question? Yeah, I think it's best to ask a scholar. We are not qualified to answer this question. But normally we treat, we, we, we treat, you know, we, we treat everyone good. How do you know? Yeah, as human beings. We, exactly. we are not judges to, you know, hmm put out some punishment for people we don't even know no. so it's not in our jurisdiction oh, no, to do that. no punishment i just uh, how, how i can treat him no you need to treat them just like i mean you need to treat them with what is apparent what you see about them right if they if they're normal human beings you treat them as human beings yeah. and what i like i said we're not qualified to answer this beyond that i suggest you go for get some scholarly opinions on this locally yeah i mean in general 
every people. You need to treat them fairly and justly. So never be unjust or unfair mm -hmm. to anyone. So that should be the principle, guiding principle. Yes. So yes. if people if people make fun of them, what I can do? I defend them. Or I defend them. Or what? Say again. Sorry. If people if make people, fun of them, if people yeah. make fun of them, what should you do? And you tell the people not to make fun of them. Yeah. Okay. So you shouldn't make fun of people just because you know they are of a different understanding, orientation, or yeah, mentality, yeah. or upbringing, whatever. Because what does Islam say about mocking people? What does Islam say about slandering yeah, people? I know. What does I Islam know. say? You know, you should know that. So if someone's mocking, then of course the people who are mocking are at fault. Brother, you know the best thing to do? Give them tawa. What did what did Lut alayhi salam do? Yes, the, yeah. his calm, the calm and Lut were like that. And they were doing it openly. I advised them, yeah. What, advised what them did they do? Give them dawah, brother. That's the best yeah. thing. As a Muslim, yeah. you give dawah to everyone. Alhamdulillah. But, but, but if the people say uh, say you with them, it's bad. No, no, look, giving dawah is not restricted to even the Fir'aun. Yeah, you're in Egypt, you should know this. Yeah, I know, I know. He was I... like the worst enemy of the Muslims, you know, when I say Muslims, those who believed in one God, monotheism. So you should give dawah to everyone and anyone. Bring them to us. You know, there are many people who might be gay, who might be trans. They're yes. Muslim. Maybe they maybe they're doing it out of uh, they don't have knowledge about this, about Islam. Yes. No, and what Islam Muslim, permits and what it prohibits. So give them dawah, inshallah. Right. Okay, good. Alhamdulillah. So if they are already Muslim, then yeah. you we treat them exactly as Brother Mansu said, which is we treat them on the apparent of what they look like, which is we yeah. treat them with, with fairness and, and and, and justice, and we tell other people not to be unjust to them. But if, That's if, it. if other kids with uh, with the man, how I say it, uh, other kids. Look, uh, yeah, I mean, bad. I mean, this. this, this I mean, we're, brother, we're, we're going actually significantly off topic. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, like the advice is, I think you should seek some local advice. As Muslims, we are fair and just to the apparent behavior of whoever yeah, is in front of us. Thank you. Can okay, I ask you any question? Okay, from Brother Ahmed, you take oh. care. We are going to close the stream now. It's okay. quite late okay. and there are people who are waiting for five hours okay. at plus. Thank you. for <laughs> this. Right, right so Sister Swaski, it's been a long stream for you, more than five <laughs> hours. Um, yeah, it must I be very know. exhausting and tiring. So, uh, yeah. we appreciate your patience. Apologize for that long stream. But uh, at the end of the day, it's been beneficial, very beneficial for people like myself personally. And of course, I'm sure those who are listening, not only to hear your you know, amazing story of self discovery and journey to discovering the haq, the truth, but also on the way, how you actually gone through these steps, how you have overcome problems and how you understood the issues and how you actually managed to sift them through so that you can actually go to a point. There might be various obstacles here and there, but you found the truth. And this is something that every one of us should take a note of because if you are sincere, if you love the truth and you ask for that guidance, Allah will certainly guide you. And this is something that people need to have faith in because Allah is not someone so distant, someone so far away that you know you cannot reach him. We just need to directly approach Allah and ask for our guidance. And of course, there are conditions of ourselves to mend ourselves from our evil ways if we were someone, some people who were very bad in terms of our behavior, in terms of our interactions, what we do to people, whether we lie, we cheat, we murder, plunder, we commit genocide, whatever, all these evils, Allah says the condition of being guided is to be away from that. So we should remove all of these you know, obstacles to guidance, then our hearts will be open to receive Allah's guidance. And this is the thing that people need to appreciate that even if you feel that you've done something wrong, if you feel that you have not been a practicing Muslim, for example, or you have not you know, been into Islam, but you've seen the truth, you know, just ask Allah directly to, to forgive your mistakes and to bring to you into this new journey of Islam. And once you become a Muslim, all your previous sins will be forgiven. And this is in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, 
if you are a Muslim and you feel like um, you you felt like, uh, what's this word? That look at Sister Swati. She's gone through all these transitions of finding out the truth, and you were a born Muslim all your life, and you never practiced Islam. In fact, you misbehaved. In fact, you oppressed people. In fact, you judged people wrongly and so on. Take this as an inspiration that you didn't at least have to go through all of this. Mend yourself. Become a better Muslim. You know, be inspired by, you know, start this journey and say, look, perhaps now I can learn something from this and take it forward. Maybe I can help others. So truly and, and, and genuinely, this has been a learning experience, uh, Sister Swati. May Allah continuously guide you and keep you on the true guidance and bless you and bring all your families to Islam. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. Yeah, thanks a lot, Sister Swati. Really appreciate your patience. I know it's quite late in India and... Um, Alhamdulillah, you have always motivated a lot of people, mashallah, to learn and to give da'wah and to just be proud to be a Muslim, alhamdulillah. I think that's that's beautiful message um, in a nutshell, yeah? What are your thoughts? What do you think was the string like? <laughs> I would say that more than, uh, I mean, I just feel concerned that you have, you people have just come from work there and just, you know, bang on, got to the stream uh, more than me. I just feel that, you know, you must be really tired because as Brother Muhammad had said, he's just got back home from work and then immediately just in a minute, similarly, Brother Mansoor had said that he was on the way listening and then he came and then, you know, just joined in like that. So... Uh, I, in fact, I would, I would sort of, you know, would like to appreciate and thank you for for being so courteous, so patient with it, um, and for, and I think maybe that's one of the because the second or the third pillar of Islam is where we we fast, we keep the Rosa of Ramzan, so that's that's where you know you get the control over the nafs, and you sort of uh, have that even with the callers who were coming, so we have that kind of patience when even when we see them going round about the bush, so we are tolerant, we try to you know let them come to the point maybe they can realize about the flawed premises which they are building so this kind of patience which takes place i think that's when you start really following these pillars of islam be it about testifying the for the god who's just one god allah and uh, you know muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam being his nabi or or about you know giving zakat establishing the prayer about the rosa about the hajj that's what I had been constantly asking these brothers who would come with the philosophical Hinduist arguments that how is it actually helping you in your day to day life? And that's what, you know, it pins down to, to Islam that not just it has a very deep philosophical ideas which are there for you to ponder, to meditate, to reflect upon, but also in very simplistic ways, how could you implement them in your real day-to-day -day lives? So that's why I just, you know, when I listen to the, them, I just sometimes feel that the things are so clear, they are so straight-headed. Why are they not getting it? Like the first brother who was saying about, uh, I forgot even the name of the goddess whom he was mentioning, the tribal one. So, I mean, he came with this very heavy idea of, you know, um, pramanas being the, and then it just boiled down to something which was just absurd, not making sense at all and that's where I think you know the way Surah Bakra says that you know he gives wisdom to whom he wills and whoever he has you know whoever has been given this wisdom has certainly been given much good the, the, that good which is there which is in this wisdom to be able to recognize to be able to decipher Huck from Batil that in, in itself is such a good and of course it's said that none will remember except those of understanding which is perhaps the reason that, you know, in spite of all the rational arguments given, you know, the way we ask them to ponder, to reflect, maybe because of that lack of understanding, or maybe once in case if they get the hidayat. Uh, one thing which I really would sort of now that have come into it, see, it's, I think it's very easy when you are there in the other uh, religions like Hinduism. It's very, it's easy to see that, you know, very apparent, uh, very blatant, uh, shirk being practiced in terms of the idol worship but once you are there in Islam once you have accepted that then it becomes even more subtle you know to be able to stay on that path to maintain that because now there is no idol as such but your nafs may take you know may overpower you 
and we make create idol out of the desire sometime hasad sometime competition you know all of these or the or, or whatever you know desires which are uh, not halal in 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 uh, as per the sharia those could sometimes in such subtle way overpower us that we may not even realize it and uh, and we may start getting astray from the path uh, in spite of following the five rich, you know the five pillars of islam so that i just think that that kind of subtle deviation which takes place where we make those as our idols when well, where we are not able to have control over the nafs that also you know is something which needs to be which which one needs to be very cautious about because other things as we were seeing with the callers they are very apparent we can just you know instantly you can say yeah it's it's absolutely false we can we can see how can you not see but those subtle things when we are there within the within islam that needs to also be you know we we need to be very careful about and probably i need to be now that i've taken the path so one has to be very steady with that because lot of times you know things like these especially when with online dawa and things you know the shaitan he would come it's it said in surah fatiha you know uh, that from that straight path will shaitan come and will try to deviate you so you know things mm-hmm. like so so for me probably you know things like this where somebody saying yeah very nice and you're speaking well and so these things should not you know sort of go on to your head to think that now you know everything whereas this is just my first starting step you know I, I, as i told you it's i'm still an infant in this still to learn so much of of this entire ocean which is filled with knowledge so so with whatever little i could get i just think uh that you know imagine with just this much little if people think that yeah you are on path of haq imagine if you just go through the entire quran all the surahs everything seerat of nabi anbiya how much would you learn and once you start implementing that into your life definitely you know the entire personification of the persons reveal that this is from divine this knowledge this guidance is not from just any ordinary human this is coming directly from the source from the god so that's um, that's a kind of hidayat to me and also to the other muslim brothers and sisters who are there that now uh, you know shirk could be in a very subtle form which could take place not in terms of just idol worship so that okay. needs to be kept in mind jazakallah um the last few words from uh, the muhammad and hashim and then we close inshallah so i don't want to take anything away from that i think that was so beautiful so well said um and the struggle is i mean islam is is a is a journey for all of us whether you're born into it whether you come into it the journey constantly is this struggle against your nafs but also against the enemy of islam shaitan right so this is a constant struggle for all of us so and we pray that allah keeps us you know steadfast and and maintains our iman and keeps us at the highest levels of of ibada that we can you know yeah. within our capability of course i mean rabbul i mean for all of us and i ask all of the audience that they do pray that we also are not caught up in this egotistical battle of clicks and and uh, and of it because at the end of the day we do this because i mean like this is what i said you know we 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 are is is sacrifice in many ways we do, we do it because it's the truth you know and 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 if anything else gets in the way then then it takes away from that reward and we don't want that to happen you know and, and i pray that it doesn't happen that way so jazakallah khairan so i'm in love yeah alhamdulillah jazakallah khairan sister swati uh, it was indeed a pleasure listening to you um, um not only the wisdom but the knowledge you have mashallah on hinduism as well and we all learn you know alhamdulillah we learn from each other and that's the beauty of islam we are one umma so whether you in the east or the west we all work together and at the end of the day our goal is the same to please allah that is the main purpose of the dawa it should always be for the sake of allah not for our own pleasure not for our own gains or whatever it is so that should be the main focus and alhamdulillah you know we share this message with our brothers in humanity those people who are christians muslims atheists gnostic whatever it is all of them you know they are all our brothers in humanity because we all come from the same uh father who is adam you know adam alayhi salam so alhamdulillah our message is for everyone to 
come to the creator, you know, the one who created you and created us, you know. And the message is of peace and harmony between the humans. Once we understand each other, then there will be peace and harmony. And the most important thing is the truth. It's not just the message of love and praise for everyone and all that. No, it's the truth. Once you establish the truth, then you love justice. Once you establish justice, then peace and harmony and love are, are going to fall in place automatically. So let's be fair. Let's be true with each other, specifically to ourselves. You know, if you guys are going to keep fooling yourself, then there's no one else you're going to trust. You know, if you don't trust yourself, because that's the thing, if you find the truth, then grab it, you know, like the way Sister Swati did. Alhamdulillah. There is a lot of information out there, you know, Alhamdulillah. I know we have to go through the bad and the good, but I think God Almighty has given us all intellect to sift through that. And when you see something not making sense, yeah, like people saying there's no God or the universe just comes about by itself or, you know, they make up things just to avoid the term God. And I've seen this from many atheists and agnostics. Everything else is, has to be logical except for this one little thing. And that one little thing is not little, it's a huge thing. Your creation, that includes you, the universe is you, including everything, all the galaxies, all those things, they didn't just pop out of nowhere. So please do make sure that you try your best before you breathe your last to seek the truth. And when the truth comes, accept it, embrace it. And Islam is the truth. It's the message of Islam has been there since the time of Adam. Not like some people say it's a 1,400-year-old religion and Hinduism is the oldest religion in the world. Well, if, the, if it's the first man, then Islam is the oldest religion in the world. Okay, Absolutely. And it was there before even the first man. So Alhamdulillah, Islam means submission to one God. And this is the message of Islam, that you submit to the will of God. Okay, Your will has to be in submission. What does that mean? That means if God tells you to do something, you do it. If he, tell, if he prohibits you from something, you, you don't do that. It's a simple message. It's no ifs and buts, no uh, philosophies which are quite complicated. A religion doesn't need to be complicated. It needs to be simple, to the point, because at the end of the day, you know, we all are going to die one day. And what is waiting for us beyond that is something that we really have to internalize. Because if the truth is that there is a God and there is... Uh, a life after that, and there's going to be a day of judgment, and there's going to be a heaven and a hell, then it's quite serious because that's an eternal life. It's not a temporary life like this world where you live for maybe 100 years at max or something, and then you die one day. Yes, but that's going to be an eternal life. So make sure you take it seriously. Don't just play around with it. Don't just play around with your whims and desires because that is exactly what the shaitan wants to do. The shaitan is the one who wants to drag you away to the hellfire. He, he knows he's already going there for certain because his fate is sealed so don't let him seal your fate by following in his footsteps and please make dua for sister swati and all the new muslims and the muslims and everyone else you know people in india who are suffering people in palestine people in other places who are suffering please make dua for them because dua is the the weapon of the believers it's like a shield so make sure you all make dua for everyone. And may Allah keep us all firm on the deen, you know, Amen. and make make our last um, words, the kalima, the shahada, the declaration of faith, inshallah, to, uh, and amen to that. Jazakallah. Amen. Amen. As-salamu alaykum. Brother Mansour, would you like to close out? Inshallah. Wa akhid dawana alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Subhanak Allahumma bihamdik. Ashadu wa la ilaha illa ant. Wa astaghfirka wa tuhu ilayk. as